Hello, <laughs> mortals. Not... I am your myth keeper, aka dungeon master, Riley Silverman, and I am here with a delightful bunch of folks. I have my my cast regulars here. Ashlyn Rose will be joining us a little bit later in the evening. She is scheduling conflict. But first, I want to introduce our special guests to you tonight who are joining us for this very special stream on behalf of the Trevor Project. So let me first go ahead and say to who on the screen is, I guess they're closest, he's the closest, ah, he's in the middle at the bottom. Give it up for my friend Kyle Shire. Kyle, say hello. Hi, everybody. It's really nice to be here. Thank you for having me on, Riley. Yeah, Kyle. yeah we're happy to have you. Thank you for joining yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, do you want to tell us just a little bit about your character? Tell us uh, who he is, what 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 Theros race he is, and maybe what god he serves. Uh, absolutely. Uh, tonight I'm going to be playing uh, Brontes Vidalis. Uh, he is a uh, human. Uh, he's. Um, do you want like the full description, or do you want just like yeah, the that's, bare, that's bare bones? That's fine. We'll, uh, we'll, that's we'll fine. describe him more as we get to him in character. Perfect. Right, yeah. Uh, he's. He is a worshiper of um, uh, Iroan. Uh, is that? Is there a pronunciation uh, uh, precedent that I need to set? Iro. Uh, I, I was saying Iroa, but I have also not Iroan. said it in game. I'm not sure. So if you want to perfect. say Iroa, that's perfectly. That's perfectly. Uh, Iroan sounds a lot better. But yeah, uh, he is uh, a devout worshiper of uh, Iroan. Uh, I think it's Iroas. I think it's an S, and then the I is sorry. It's an Iroa, and, and yeah. the Iroan games. Iroa. You're, you're clearly I mean, super Iroa, into him. Right. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Iroas, yeah. uh, the god of victory. Yes, uh, that is. Uh, that's what I'm rocking. Fantastic. Uh, and then let's go over to our other special friend, uh, Ali. Ali, tell us a little bit about your character Woo, and you. Say hello. Yay! Hi. Um, I'm really excited to be here tonight, and um, I am playing Slater the Sater. Um, I was very relieved that it is not pronounced Satter, which I was told after I named my character. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I believe in Phoenix, but some people say Phoenix. What do you guys say? We say Phoenix. 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 Yeah. Phoenix. Just We're a Phoenix I, family. We say potato. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm excited for you guys to get to know me or whatever version of myself I'm serving up tonight. We'll see. Excellent. And now let's go ahead for the folks who yeah. are not uh, regular audience members who were joining us for the very first time. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh, wow. Dragon 55 just blew open the gift subs. Wow. Thank you so much for oh, that. Geez. That is fantastic. I'm still scrolling. And Shannon yeah, is live. Thank you for was... the huge raid. Oh, thank you for the raid. Yeah, fantastic. welcome, everybody. Thank you. We, we are kicking things off great. Wow. 434 people. We have a massive stream right now. So... We just introduced people who are now mysteries, but we'll find out. But let's go ahead and introduce our actual regular cast members who are here right now. Let's start with Danielle. Danielle, say hello. Hi, I'm Danielle Radford, and I play D. Uh, D is the kind of um, Olympian back in these days that maybe a John Cena would have been. Uh, you're all marks, baby. You're all marks for me. And uh, Perforos is, she would consider him more to be her homeboy. I doubt that he shares that sentiment, but she's definitely like, Give me, give me sugar, Daddy Perforos. So, mm -hmm. fantastic. And now let's go over to uh, Jordan. Say hello, Jordan. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jordan Pridgen, and I am playing Lysandros, who is also a satyr and uh, was may uh, Phoenix was his god, and now it's complicated. So, right. <laughs> who knows how things will go there? But he's a he's a bit of a rogue and a trickster and a gambler, and uh, his his situation has changed a lot recently. So he's probably just gonna figure out uh, what his priorities are. But he'll just kind of keep going through life; it'll all work out. <laughs> all right, and That's last but not least for tonight, let's go ahead and say hello to Ruben. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm the Internet's Mox Ruby, and I am playing Claw. Claw is a I describe him as a shaman. Um, he is mostly a druid, although I did pick up a level in cleric. He is a centaur person, and he is a worshiper of Nylea, the god of the hunt. And when I say worshiper, I do mean that he goes to church and is, like, devout and is all about the Nylea life. Yeah, I would say of all of our characters, Claw is definitely the one that has the most actual like religious relationship with his god, which is really fun to play out. I like that every one of our characters 
has it. So for those of you who are not familiar with the Theros setting, which is a Magic the Gathering setting, was published last year by Wizards as a D&D book called The Mythical Odysseys of Theros. Theros is a realm that instead of being based on medieval fantasy is based in ancient Greece. So there's a lot of gods that are fictionalized versions of the actual ancient Greek gods and they're of the mythology. So there are versions of them. They're not the same. They're not the same names. There's not a Hades. There's not a Zeus. There's Helio, the god of the sun, which is kind of like Zeus. There's Erebus, the god of, of the underworld, who's the god of the dead, and lots of other gods that fill in elsewhere there. Um, and so what's fun about this game, if you're interested in playing this setting, is that you have a much more personal relationship between your characters and their gods than you do in any other D&D setting, because there's actually like built-in mechanics for, for like all the players are kind of meant to be champions of the gods. And so you all have special abilities and things that you're given, supernatural gifts that are kind of like souped up feats that you get as part of the worship that you have for your various gods. And so, and a lot of the locations are based in references to ancient Greece itself. Like for example, the city of Meletus is based on Athens. Um, the city of Akros is based in Sparta and such, so on and so on. And so it's a really fun setting. And so we're gonna begin with that. But first I want to just thank you all for, for my, thank, I'm gonna thank my players and the audience for coming in to support this great cause. I know that I can say personally that like, I, I didn't have a thing like Trevor Project when I was like a young teen and a tween. And I know that it's something that would have been extremely valuable to me at certain points of my life. And, and so I'm extremely grateful that it exists for the people who need it now and that it can help make people feel a little bit less alone in the world. So I'm so, so glad it exists. So I thank you all for helping us to support this cause that I very much believe in. And with that, out of the way, uh, we shall begin tonight's story. The island of Kolakari sits not far off the inner shore of the small gulf to the southeast of the city of Miletus. Nestled in between the Miletian landmass and the greater continent of Theros, Kolakari is able to take advantage of the warm climates of this Mediterranean-like world, enjoy the cool breezes of the sea air, and yet remain relatively shielded from the harsher storms and the occasional rough tides brought on by Thassa, goddess of the sea. Not unlike Melitus, inspired by Athens, the bustling multicultural polis that claims governance over Kolakari, the island boasts a vibrant and exciting cultural hub and offers residents of the nearby city the illusion of distant travel and the hints of adventures while avoiding the realities of actual sea travel. The population of the isle is a full spectrum, the locals tending to be working class, often fishermen, or those involved in the tourist trade or the tourists themselves. Uh, once only a location for modest travelers looking for the budget version of an adventure, a generation of rich kids find themselves delighted at hobnobbing with the common people and have given way to a rise in more expensive nightlife in their, in their wake. When we open on this island, it's nighttime, and the crowds on the beach have long since headed back to their respective inns and tavernas or the beds of strangers that they met under the heat of Heliod's eye, the sun. But standing on the edge of the water is a girl, a young woman, probably in her early 20s at the latest, gazing out to sea, looking beyond the borders of her little island as she releases a trio of birds, each one carrying a small message, as she begins to sing. Here we go. I have a dream, a song to sing. To help me hope through everything. If you see the wonder of a godly prayer, you can hope to wander even if you fail. And then we fade away from her and we fade to, thank you, um, we fade to <laughs> Daytime. A trio, we actually, sorry, sorry, I wanted to begin with a different character because um, we begin at daytime on the island of Kalakari. And one of our characters has already been here for a little bit of time. Slater, the satyr, has heard legend of this bustling gold rush of tourism coming to the island. And like many people with sticky fingers, it's a unresistible temptation. Slater, what have you been up to 
in your couple of weeks on Kolakari? Oh, I've been making tons of friends. Let's start there. Everyone likes me here. Who's that? Oh, he's kind of cute. Um, sorry, I get distracted easily. Ooh, his pockets look full too. Anyway, I have been scoping out the town. I got a hot tip that this place was going to be pretty good for me. I'll leave it at that. But uh, I've been familiarizing myself with who runs the taverns and inns and which fishermen and fisherwomen might have the thicker pockets. I feel like this is going to be a really good time for me. Okay, Slater, I'm going to have you make a charisma check for me. Okay. That is a 21. All right, you have definitely been given the lowdown scoop on which of the tavernas tend to be the places that have the most rich tourists. You know where the pockets are the most rife for the lifting and the people who are so rich, they don't tend to pay attention to where their wallets are to begin with. And so <laughs> you have definitely gotten a few good scores and you've also been given a few juicy bits of information around the city, uh, including a couple of rumors and the most interesting rumor to you is that there is talk that there is something on this island known as the Seeds Melody. And it's, it's, some say it's a gem, some say it's a sapphire, and it is said to contain the prosperity of the island itself. Like, it is that kind of valuable artifact? Or it's something, something that would be a really big score for a budding thief looking to make a name for herself before changing her name and starting a new life with crying elsewhere so um things out to you so that is a thing that has maybe piqued your interest that is very exciting to me um and yes you mentioned slates um slater is a nickname my real name is um marguerite it's not my favorite um Ooh. and uh i go no offense to the marguerites it just didn't suit me um i'm always <laughs> I'm always seeking a clean slate because it's kind of expensive to um, get caught, and I have been caught a couple times. So, just looking for a clean slate, and that's why I'm called Slater. But I think this is the last time I'm going to need it, so I'm I'm feeling really good about this time, and I'm going to okay, get great. that gem. Yeah, and as one you last job. as you yeah, yeah. as you hear <laughs> one last job before all the next jobs. Uh, <laughs> as you as you hear about the gem. You, you get the faint sense of your god Phoenix kind of whispering in your ear. You're not really, like, you don't see him, but you get that sense of him saying, well, that certainly sounds like it would be fun to have. And then, uh, yeah, I just, I always do a little hair toss whenever Phoenix, uh, I call him Phoenix, whenever Phoenix yeah, talks what you to want. me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're really close. That's his nickname. It's weird. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Feeny sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Is your name? Yeah. Uh, my glasses keep fogging up. And I don't know why. All right. Because it's so hot in here. Because mm. of the heat of my singing. All right. Um, <laughs> so let me see if that helps. All right. I opened a window. Let's see. All right. And if it gets, if there's wind, y'all are hearing it, let me know. I'll close it again. But whatever. All right. So here for now. Boom. Um, we cut to a sunny day on a small ferry boat will say there's a lot of there's a lot of money to be made on the the beaches of of Melitus of ferrying people over to some of the nearby islands a quick buck for not a lot of work to do you know it takes maybe about two three hours at the most to get all the way to the island of Kolakari it's not it's not you know it's it's still ancient Greek style it's not like a motorboat ride it's a sailboat you know, or, or in this case probably mostly a rowing boat happening uh, so there are it's not the easiest travel but we find ourselves zooming in on a keel boat, we'll say, uh, and on that boat is a group of adventurers. We have, of course, Dee, Lysandros, and Claw, and off to herself, kind of looking off in the distance, like she's thinking about something important to her and she hasn't quite made a decision yet, uh, we have Callie, a Leonid fighter. Um, what are y'all doing? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't like the ocean. It's not great. I love it. I want a boat. Yeah, uh, Lysandros has no problem with sea legs. He's like running around. He's like, yeah, it's, it's just like being drunk, you know. But like, 
this does it for you. So that little part in your brain that learns how to walk around when you don't have like a center of balance, I've trained mine. People say that I'm wasting my life when I get drunk, but actually I'm just preparing myself for this very specific situation. That is that is a lot of words for this is not the ground. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the boat. Claw, <laughs> I can think of something that we could do to take your hands off of it or your mind off of it. What, what, arm what, wrestle? what, what? I, I don't, I mean, I, I guess so. We can arm wrestle, sure. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. You can't arm wrestle until I have time to at least get people to take bets on yeah, it. Yeah, you could bet on it, sure. That's fine. Why are we going to, is, or, wait, are we going to Kolakari? Are we, yeah. um, okay. I, I hate, I mean, when I used to, this is like such a tourist trap. When I was doing the centaurs, you would like all of the patsies and actual people. And when I say marks, people who had the handprints on their backs so that you knew who the marks were, like they had, you would dip your hand in the sack of flour. And it was, it is, it, it is the worst place and the worst way to get there. And I hate this. I don't know. I don't know why, why we are going here. Well, Mark, so everything you've described about it makes it sound pretty fun. Yeah, I'm ready. All I let's, heard was uh, Mark. Let's 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 flash back quickly to the moment at the end of our season where our characters sat in the home of a sage known as Kia, and they had just done a task for her that involved the god of trickery, Phoenix, <laughs> Phoenix to some <laughs> Phoenix to his closest pals. Um, and she had leaned back in her seat, and she had asked you if you fancied a trip to the islands. And then she looked at Lysandro specifically, but everybody else as well, and she said, sometimes you never know where you might find a lost soul in need of guidance. You have done a good service in helping to end Phoenix's plans for now, but I sense greatness in all of you, and I think you are deserving of a vacation, but maybe if you keep your eyes open, maybe fate has more in store for you. And then we cut back to the boat, and we see everybody on the ship heading to the <laughs> island. Uh, we also see on the ship a human male who is looking around. I'm assuming Bronte's oh, a lot of hesitation. hesitation. A lot of hesitation. Maybe... Why don't you tell us your relationship with Kolakari and why you're heading there? Brontes Vidalis is originally from Kolakari. Uh, he left about a year, about a year and a half ago. Uh, he left for a very specific purpose. Um, he left to participate uh, in the Iroan games. Uh, and traveled all the way to Akros and he got knocked out in the very first round. And he has spent a great deal of time trying to grapple with that loss and has essentially drunk himself into oblivion for probably about the last 365 days. Uh, he's about in his early twenties. Uh, he's very tan. Uh, he looks like an Island person. Uh, someone that grew up in the sun, uh, you know, uh, he looks like someone that was very fit once upon a time, but like I said, spent the last year drinking himself into oblivion. So he's wearing this kind of chain armor that looks almost brand new, uh, but it's like a little too snug around the belly and the chest. Uh, he's got like a cropped beard and the sides of his heads are a little, the sides of his head are a little shaved with like a little mohawk kind of flopped over to the side. It looks like he's, he's put himself together for this. Uh, he has this kind of like dark eye makeup on that's kind of been clumsily smeared on. Uh, and it looks like possibly a combination of sweat and maybe tears uh, have made it look just a little <laughs> bit even more messed up. Um, it's that salt air. Yeah, it's the salt air. It's the salt air. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he's got a whip on his hip as well as two daggers. And there's a velvet satchel uh, that looks like it carries uh, another whip that is on the other side of his hip. Uh, and he looks, he does not look seasick whatsoever, but he looks incredibly anxious. Uh, and he looks like he's trying to eavesdrop on your conversation as a, as a kind of distraction. So uh, I have a question. How, how big a deal was this knockout? Is there like a chance any of us would have 
seen or heard of you from your... Uh... Oh, there's a chance that one of you knows very much about it, and that will be really fun to have play out in a few moments. Uh, see, the thing is about... First of all, before, before we go on real quickly, I forgot to mention something up top of the show. Um, we do have some unlocks that we are doing as donations come in. So right. Dom just reminded me, so I apologize. So every $100 that we get... You may notice, those of you who are regulars on the show, you may notice that Ruben does not have any of his traditional claw makeup on tonight. Uh, for every $100 that we get in donations, uh, claw will apply more of his makeup. And for every $200 that we get, another song will happen. So hmm. we'll see how that plays out over the course of tonight. Uh, however, to go back to... Uh, what was happening. So the story about Brontes and his entrance into the Ireland games, for those not familiar with Theros, it's basically the Olympics. It's the gathering of all the city, the polices together to compete in sports in the honor of Iroa, the god of victory. Um, and Brontes was foretold by a oracle that he would win the whole thing. And he went off in search of being a victor. It was this sort of like propped up hero from a small town coming in. Uh, however, he, he lost in his very first fight in the games. And he lost to a woman who is currently on the boat with him that has not yet caught his attention. And that is a woman by the name of D. So he is absolutely 100% trying to avoid all eye contact, almost making himself look small in like the very mm. back corner of the boat. Um, possibly even he does, he does have like this uh, blue and white kind of scarf around his neck that looks very out of place considering the rest of his outfit. Uh, and he might just kind of be like. <clears throat> so as, um, as, uh, D and Claw are, are sitting up to like do an arm wrestling match to get his mind off of things. Lysandros jumps around and sees this person over in the corner and goes over to his, hey, excuse me, you look like you could be a betting man, right? I don't know, you've, you've got the looks of like a, an athlete or something like that. How would you like to uh, make a little competition over here be a little more interesting? Oh, oh, I, uh, a betting man. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I keep very good track of my coins, sir. I, I couldn't possibly, I just, it, 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 it's, it's an easy bet. She's going to win. All right. Let's listen. Just leveling with you. It's an easy bet. All right. So when you, wait. when you were saying this to Bronte, and you two were talking, another man, another human man, uh, kind of turns and he says, I'll take that bet. I'd like to see this play out. And the man is a man uh, who he's wearing kind of the, like, not the uniform, but like the dress, like the, he's in a Crowan general. Uh, and he kind Ooh. of has that, like, like he has an insignia that implies his rank, but he's out of uniform. He's like on vacation or he's relaxing, but he's, he's still showing off his glory. the travel we about another hour before we get to the island so if there's a little bit of bloodlust that can happen not not to sink the boats of course but if you i would love to see this play out who is you who is your champion my my sator friend ah uh, well uh, i will be betting on claw no questions asked uh, trust me that man the, the in fact i'm gonna give i'm gonna give you uh three to one odds against if you vote uh, if you bet on her because I mean, look, there's no way. Wait, so sorry. So it's 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 sorry. It's claw versus it's 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 your friend so versus your other friend. So the one that looks like a horse, but is a man from the waist up. Okay. A centaur. A centaur. I, I'm a, I'm aware of a centaur. No, I'm, I never I'm know from what the you military. Do we have honestly. centaurs there. Um, but uh, well, I think that he is going to win. The other one, uh, the the uh, that human woman over there, I believe that uh, she's going to lose. Now, my. Uh, Sorry, what what is the competition oh, that's wrestling. happening here? Okay, do they know they're going to be armed? I hang on. Yeah, these are your friends, and you're going to bet. That seem you know that seems fake, right? You you understand that this feels like a like a staged. Sure, it, yeah. it feels like you're rigging a bet. I want to see this gentleman. He looks like he has some muscle. Let me see that arm of yours. And he like holds his arm up and he's trying to get you to show him your arm. And he keeps doing it, even though you're not doing it back. He just keeps like, let me see that arm of yours. Uh, is he saying that to me? Uh, does this... Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
like does a this man look like a left toy? Point, yeah. Um, he might. Um, he looks like he's like definitely pretty high uh, up in the rankings. So Brontes would kind of stare him down, uh, very intensely, and he would say, uh, "I have no business or interest in being involved in a that with someone like you." Now let me continue this here boat ride, and he kind of looks over and he goes, "No, what's wrong with me? I'm just a man on a vacation, going and going to see the sun." Oh, so a, that's why you're going to Kolakari. Why? Why would I not go to Kolakari? It's a beautiful place. People there tend to be uh, a little more laid back. You might not uh, might not like what you uh, might, might not like uh, the clientele. They might not like. People with your level of fervor. And as he's saying this, he kind of catches an eye at uh, D and very quickly diverts away, very noticeably goes and kind of puts his fist in his mouth a little bit. Hmm. Sorry, I'm having, I guess, just an issue with my video feed being very laggy for the chat. So I'm just kind of trying to figure that out real quick. Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, you, why, don't you, why don't you guys go ahead and keep rolling? So, uh, I'll see if I, can figure this out. I mean, Sorry. Claw is pretty perceptive, so I think that he will notice the awkward, shifty eyes off to the side and be uh, seeing the general approach is a little strange. If he is a lactoy, that is an important person to be on our little keel boat. Um, and he'll turn to D and be like, do you, do you two know each other? You know, I thought that dude was staring at me. I know my hair is like really good today, but I thought that he was staring at me. And D uh, turns over in Brontus's directions and gives a little like finger uh, guns. He uh, yeah. gives a very kind of uh, sheepish wave back Wait. of acknowledgement. He sees it. Wait, do, do you guys know each other? <laughs> you said that she was going to win. And that to me makes me think that, that you know who she... What? <laughs> What a coincidence. I mean, how small a boat could we be on, honestly, right? And I, I slap the uh, the general guy on the shoulder and I'm just like, oh, oh man, what a small world, right? Yeah, I suppose so. I, now I'm starting to think this is all a big scam. This is like a, this is like a, well, a you trick the old man into losing his money. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm going to walk away now. He steps away because I have to reboot right. and then y'all can keep playing as your characters while Fabulous. I return. I'll well, right if this back. is, yeah. if this is a, a, if this is going to be a, a, a job, as they say, a bit of a, uh, a fake contest, I certainly wasn't involved. I have every intention of winning this arm wrestling contest. Dude, Claw, let me win. That guy keeps staring at me. I think he likes me. <laughs> oh, am I supposed to wait? Hold on. I need to one, one moment. And I'll like tell Brontes to just a sec. Am I supposed to throw, throw, throw a match? Am I supposed to not win? I thought that the goal was to, you have very successfully taken my mind off of how terrible this boat is. See, the, well, that was the first thing because friendship and stuff, but obviously we're not really going to do an arm wrestling. Oh. We're gonna go a little bit. Okay, here's how it's gonna go. We square up, we start talking mess. I know you're not good at it. I'll walk you through it. You're too sincere. So then we lock up arms. We're going to play it like you're going to win. And I'm going to be like, oh, no, so terrible. Please don't break my arm. Oh, you're so good at this, blah, blah, blah. And right, then right, right. I'm going to come back from behind, put it on the table. We split the winnings. By that, I mean Smart. you don't actually care about money. So it all goes I into the friendship pot of friendship. I have a very good idea of how to, to make this look real, but also so that I don't have to talk. Oh, that's this perfect. going to be great. High five. So should we high five? Wait, can we all agree that when Riley comes back, we talk about how like boat is taking on water or something? Like <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the oh. boat's taking on water. No. <laughs> yeah, I just keep on bailing. <laughs> yeah. I'll just try and like, if we can right. stop the boat from going down, I think that- A horsey that we paddle. Do it. Yeah. So, I yeah. Know. I don't, I don't, I don't know if Riley can hear us yet. I, think she, I yeah. can now, I just got back in. How, how's, that, how's that working for a chat? Dom, well, looking good? The boat's going down. 
Yeah, yep, I yep. stabbed I stabbed the boat. I saw them from very yep. far away. Yep. I was getting jealous that I wasn't a part and I stabbed the boat okay. and it has since gone. Was, they're okay. they're all drowning. So but everybody is dead except for Allie. Was. So you can yeah. all leave because the game is everyone <laughs> yeah. else is dead. We had a we had a, we had a total we had the total boat was race. very surprised. Um, yeah. Um, so what, what did I, I, I know it's weird. We just had this happen. Right. Did anything major no, happen? We don't need to react the entire no. scene again, but yeah. No, uh, we were just Claude setting up. Oh no, me and Claw were just deciding how the game was going to work since obviously we don't want to do a real arm wrestling match. Uh, so I was just explaining how a fake arm wrestling match might No, work. I would actually like it if Danielle would drive over to Ruben's house and if yeah. you guys would arm wrestle <laughs> and we'll see who wins and that'll be, why don't the two of you, so did you make, uh, sorry, did D and Claw make up a fake arm wrestling rule? Yes. Or, okay, what's, what's, what D how is going to work D and Claw out? are going to arm wrestle and make it look real. Okay, why don't you both roll for me a performance check? So, I have a thing I want to do before the arm wrestling contest starts. Okay. Um, which is, as I'm squaring up, I put my elbow down on the table, and as it thunks onto the barrel, I use one of my wild shapes to turn into a gorilla. Okay, we just lost Allie, right? I'm not, I'm not weird about Correct, that. Yeah. Not okay, okay. So I turn into an ape, and I go... <sighs> And I have okay. a big gorilla okay. grin on my face. Okay. Uh, the the general guy looks a little bit interested again. He's like, all right, this seems like it could be very interesting. Um, all right. Um, and then when he says that, uh, another young man uh, who looks like someone who might be like a militian politician of sorts, um, he walks over and he says, yes, I am. Uh, I also think I would like to look into the. I, I'm not good at accents. This is gonna be really fun. Um, yes, I, like to, I would like to also. He speaks. The, the previous guy. If you were to pick an actor to play him, you might say it was Stellan Skarsgård. This guy, if you were to pick an actor to play him, you might say it's Colin Firth. Just, okay. just a thought. Sure. So he walks up and he's like, "Yes, I guess I would uh, like to watch. I would like to. I would quite like to watch this bit of sport." All right. And another guy walks up uh, <laughs> who has more of a Satessan garb. He has a bit more of a, he actually, not unlike Claw, looks like someone who is, who is a fan of the travel, the adventure. Uh, he's a Satessan adventurer. Now, in this world, Satessa, for the audience who doesn't know about uh, Theros settings, Satessa is sort of kind of based on Themyscira. It's, it, it's meant to be like, the, like where the, the fear, like where the Amazons live. It's kind of like a more natural type of place. However, the, the young men of Satessa are often known to go out and explore the world because it's a very matriarchal society. And so this man is a young man who has done that quite. He's an, he's an older man now. He's a middle-aged man. Uh, and he walks up. You might say he appears like maybe a certain James Bond actor. Let's just say Pierce Brosnan. Let's just say that. I, um, I get it. I get yeah. what's happening now. Yeah, and uh, he walks up and he's like, he's like, well, I, I would actually quite like to watch this, uh, this arm wrestling quite as well. This would, be, this would be quite entertaining, I think. Oh my God. I but just see, well, you know, I, am a, I am a garbage singer in case that comes up at any point in time. <laughs> <laughs> The the gorilla that you was claw before he changed into a gorilla sort of goes eh? like a little confused grunt before turning back and shrugging his shoulders and putting his big meaty paw back up. All right, uh, they all put money down, and uh, everybody can. So Danielle and Ruben, I'm going to have you both roll a performance check. Unless you're going to do a real arm wrestle as a gorilla, and then I'm going to make you roll strength checks. Yeah, well. See, the thing is, Claw had a plan before he turned into an ape, but the ape has an intelligence of six. So I don't know if I'm going to follow through with this plan, but we'll see. I, wait, are you using wild order? shape or are you using polymorph? Yeah, oh, wild shape. Oh, I still have my same intelligence. Never okay. mind. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. I'll do performance as my ape, which is not great. Okay. <laughs> uh, I rolled a 14. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do we have any? Do we have any? Do we have any rerolls? No, nope, no rerolls this game, guys. You're all on your okay. own this time. So what I did was I rolled a two on my dice. Nice. Now, okay. An ape has a minus two penalty to charisma. <laughs> okay. So what I, what I did was I rolled a zero. Okay. That's okay. Here's what I think happened. 
I think that y'all walked up and you put your hands down on the table and D started to move her hand in like she was going to grasp your hand to do an arm wrestle. And then Claw, not knowing yet the game, just went, ah, oh! and like threw his arm down before D even touched you as if you had lost the combat. However, you had not been touched yet. Yeah. And then all three gentlemen go, oh, oh. So I see what's happening here, and they all take their money and they put it back in their pockets, and they go, "Well, it was at least a, a, a bit, a bit of entertainment." I thank you very much for that. Wait, wait, but, but, but look, you're, you're person one. I, like, why, why, why would I have rigged it against you, right? Well, Come then I would guys. like the money. We, we would all like the money that you owe us. Yeah, yes, I quite would like that money if that would be good. Of course, yes. Uh, happy to help, and I flipped them each one of the IOUs. And then I suddenly, and then Lysandra that he carries on his horns and then goes, you know what? I didn't really think this through. I forgot that the reason I don't like to go on boats that often is there's nowhere particularly good to run to. Hmm. I will tell you this, that uh, if you were in my, this is, this, this is, uh, this is Stellinicus. That's the Stellan Skarsgård looking gentleman. Uh, if he were, he says, if I were, um, if this was back in, Across, I would throw you into a pit, and that's where you would live. But uh, this has been a good spot of entertainment and a very long boat ride. So I will let you have. I will let. You, I will let you live for this insult to me. Uh, Riley, while this is going on, <laughs> after uh, this gorilla has been thrown, uh, Brontis is going to actually stand up. Uh, he's going to take a swig off of a bottle uh, that he's been keeping uh, in his bag. Uh, and he kind of like clumsily wipes away some of the wine off of his lips. And he walks over to the table uh, and he makes eye contact with Danielle. And he looks over to the other men that have been uh, betting. And he says, uh, all right, how about you double up your bets? How about you say you and I have a rematch, D? What do you mean rematch? I don't know you. You're hot, but I have no <laughs> idea who you are. Oh, you don't remember me? No. I won games first round. I had the whip. Oh, I do remember a whip. Yep. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, now, you D, destroyed me. D, you have a memory. You, as we've established in previous episodes of the show, for those who are not regular watchers, D is a, a bit of a pit fighter. She's a bit of like kind of a professional wrestler slash gladiator. Uh, D, you know that there is a common scam amongst performance fighters where Fake oracles are given prophecies to say that someone is going to win it all as a way of driving up the bets against them, or driving up the bets against their Smart. opponents. And that is, a, that is a way that a heel turn can be used to make quite a bit of money in games. And there are a lot of games around the Iroan games that are not actually official games within the, the like sacred games of the events. And a lot of rubes from outside areas are often brought in to, <laughs> to fight in those competitions. People bet on them and then they lose those fights and they look embarrassed. As you, do. you have done this, you have fought in these scams hundreds of times. Uh, so it is a thing where you vaguely remember this guy, whereas you have haunted his nightmares as the person who defeated him when he needed yeah. it the least. Oh, most. You're, you're that jobber, right? <laughs> I don't know what that means, but what do you say you and I have a, another go at it, huh? How about it, gentlemen? How about you pony up some more, uh, some more coinage? Ooh, you look very dangerous. I bet that you could beat me handily. And then she gives the largest wink you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> I tell you what, after you beat me in the first round, I was totally fine. I, I totally handled it really well, but I've just been thinking about a rematch and its destiny that has brought us on this boat today. And we are going to... Heed Destiny's call. That's right, it. ladies and gentlemen. Go around and grab a chair, but you're only going to need the edge because we are going to fight this arm wrestling. Rematch. Rematch. I'm going okay. to I'm going to drag a crate over and sit my gorilla butt down on it. 
All right, so uh, D raises her arm so that she can lock up with Brontes. Brontes raises an arm uh, and he holds on, uh, grasps your hand and gives you a knowing look, looks around to the other men. Uh, do they look interested? Have they been, are they like- Yeah, they're into oh. it. Sorry, we had another okay. tech issue that I'm following up on, well, but yeah, they good. look interested. They are, they're, they're putting money down. Look I think they're all betting on, around. They're, they're all, yeah. Collecting Take, well, and hyping you... people up. He also, yeah. he'll, he'll do, he'll keep throwing little illusions around that'll be like, I heard she killed six men. That guy's right. strong as an ox. And he like throws those into people's ears to like get people interested in watching. Love it. All right. Sorry. I'm saying this one. Cool. So go oh. ahead. And now both, uh, this, this is my agent. It's fine. No, um, <laughs> both of you, I need you to make strength checks for me. Um, and you're gonna. I'm just gonna see which of you has the highest roll, basically. All right. I rolled a thirteen. I rolled okay. a thirteen. Oh wait, never mind. I rolled a. Did it I would be kind of amazing if you did both roll the exact same thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, seventeen, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, uh, Brontes, you actually you actually do pretty well. Like you actually are able to to push D's hand down, and that can make sense because D <laughs> is really more of a stage fighter than anyway. Uh, you just were in a rigged fight against her before, so there you go. Is this uh, is this best two out of best two out of three? It, yeah, it's best two out of three, and get it right this time. You know the sequence. I I really don't. <laughs> oh, that's because you only have the one job. Well, that's fine. We'll make it up here. <laughs> oh, Ow! Okay. oh my God, my arm hurts so much. Oh, why me, mom? Why? Ow. All right. All right. We're going to do this one more time. This is this is for the big guy. I realize victory is coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so I clasp his hand, get ready to start arm wrestling again. Clasp your hand and blop. I wrote, Do you want uh, us to roll? I got it. it. Yeah, go ahead and both roll strength checks again. I got an eight. Ooh, that's exciting. I got. I got a six. Are you kidding? <laughs> okay, so so once again, uh, D does actually a worse job this time around, oh, no. and uh, and and Brontes actually does not do very well himself but somehow manages to still overplay. Those, like, you're both kind of like, it's almost like you're not pushing each other, but like you're pulling each other. And then somehow, yeah, you end up knocking her down again. Oh. And you see Brontes stand up and go, yes, I knew it. <laughs> all right, all right. Pleasure, pleasure uh, on wrestling with you, D. Gentlemen, uh, pony up, who bet on me? I was curious, who bet on me? Anybody? Did anybody? Bet and on literally, you? no one. No one had bet on you. You you find out that that everybody, yeah, everybody, no, everybody had bets that you would lose. Well, I hope you enjoy the money that you've lost, or something. I don't know how did you, how how you enjoy money that you lose. I'm all right. Uh, this might be the first so, time that Lysandros is happy that he won a bet. Yeah, uh, uh, Lysandros actually feels super strange uh, about that. Because, you know, he's gone around for years, like, actively trying to lose bets. And it's still his instinct whenever he, like, tries to do bets to try and drive his debt up. But it's occurred to him over the last couple of days that suddenly having lots of debt with lots of strangers is a tremendously um, dangerous position to be in all the time. Uh, so he, try he tried to win this one. And, and look how that turned out. So uh, time passes. <laughs> the, the guys on the boat um, are... Or they see they seem bored of any more fighting. They feel like this this like this this arm wrestling wasn't as interesting as they wanted it to be. In fact, the second round especially seemed a little bit lackluster. So they've kind of like gone off and they're talking more amongst themselves. Um, just for sake of time, you do you do hear that they are they've all been invited to a party for a former paramour of theirs, um, and they all they actually all realize one by one that they actually. They actually know her. They're, they all know the same person, which is very strange. Uh, then we get, eventually, time passes, and we get to the island, and the, the ship docks, and Slater, 
you are currently at the docks. You you know that when ships come in, there is a good amount of money to be had because people are people are 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 not good at hiding their money as soon as they get off the boat because they're all kind of like looking through their wallets, like thinking about like they're they're getting their papers out and they're also like looking at there. There's lots of scam artists that are right there by the dock playing like various games. There's there's a person right now with a a a, a board game set up, not unlike checkers or chess. Uh, and they have a, a, a game running where there is a chicken that is playing with people. So people are, are paying to play against the chicken. Uh, so that's one thing that's happening. Uh, there's a couple of almost like carnival style games that are happening. And yeah, that is uh, that is what's going on. And as the boat docks and as a plank is put down and people begin to get off the boat, suddenly there is a stirring in the water and bursting out of the water are creatures that the champions of this game have seen before. Uh, these are not Nyxborn like the last ones you saw, uh, but they are they are women-like creatures. However, they have been corrupted with with bird-like parts to their body. Uh, I believe that in D and D terms, they would be called harpies. However, in the more Greek Therosian style. On an island, they would probably be known far more by the common term sirens. And they begin to attack, and everybody roll initiative. Okay. Okay. Initiative! All right. 10 and for go ahead. Slater. Thank you. I will give you one second. Let me uh, get set up here. I'm going I'm to make a little sure initiative thing. chart. Let me just clear that. Okay. Riley, are we using our roll twenty or not? We will be using roll twenty just for like a occasional visual reference and to <laughs> just track initiative. Track initiative. But I also do not want to. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to see it on screen this show or not because I didn't tell Dom yep. to have it set up. So um, let's just not worry about that. For just, some I was moment. just curious. Yeah, for, no, no, for I appreciate you asking. Question. Yeah. Yep, and let me just get Bronte's in there. Great. Okay, and then let me just go ahead and give myself the. Uh, this is not what they look like, but whatever. All right, all right. Now, so Slater, you said you had a ten. Correct. Okay, um, Callie is not here right now. Okay, let me start from the beginning. Claw, what'd you get? I also got a ten. Ten. I have a Great. zero bonus to my dexterity. Okay, uh, Lysandros. I got a, a uh, sixteen. 16. All right, D? Dirty 20. Ooh, nice. thank you. All right, Slater, you got a 10. Uh, Brontes, what did you get? I got a 22. 22, Oof. and then nice. our harpies are going to have... Eight. Cool. All right, now let's go ahead and get that started. And I don't know why this did that. Okay, hang on, sorry. 22, 10... All right, and then as the harpies begin to attack, uh, they begin to let out this siren. There's, I said harpies again, they're sirens. They let out a siren wail, and they begin to put those wails into words, and they begin to sing, give us, give us, give us your flesh after twilight. Won't you come and join us in your watery grave? And then they continue to sing that kind of haunting melody as they attack. <laughs> and so the first, so first uh, they, they start moving towards you, uh, but Brontes, it is your turn. I would say that there are definitely at least two uh, harpies within, within five, 10 feet of you. Okay. Uh, I would like to uh, very, this is my first time playing a fighter and I'm really yeah, excited, uh, but uh, he's going to pull out the uh, whip that is on his, uh, uh, on his hip, uh, not the one that's in the satchel. Uh, he's going to yeah, pull out that with one hand uh, in his main hand uh, and he's going to draw a dagger in his off hand. Uh, and first things first, um, let's, uh, let's, I'm going to hit with a menacing strike. Um, okay. What does that do uh, for us? So I, I think first I have to actually roll to see if I hit it first. And then, uh, then I think I do the menacing strike, right? Okay. When you hit describe yes. before you yeah, go ahead and make your roll, mm -hmm. but also describe what you're doing Absolutely. like physically. Like what is this uh, looking like? He flourishes out with this whip and he kind of like brings it over his head with like two revolutions. And uh he's got his uh offhand dagger kind of like 
sticking out this side. Uh, and the one that's kind of like uh, about 10 feet away from him uh, with like the third revolution, he just like brings it down uh, and you hear this like thunderous crack uh, and he's aiming for the harpy's face. Uh, and uh, yeah. Okay, to go ahead and make your face. roll. All right, here we go. What do I get? Uh, I got a uh, 24. Come on. Yeah, that, that definitely hits. It would be awful if it didn't. It definitely uh, it hits. Would, yeah. It would. Uh, so uh, I'm going to uh, expend a superiority die uh, and do uh, menacing strike uh, against it. So I add a D8 to my damage. Uh, so the superiority die is going to be a four. Uh, damage dice from the whip is eight, uh, so that is 12 damage, and I need it to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay, nice. wait, how much damage did you, did you, say you, gave, you gave it? 12. Yeah, it's not going to make that saving throw because it's already dead. So <gasps> oh. it is, so you ripped it apart, mm -hmm. uh, and there are four more of these coming at you right now. Okay. Um, okay, Claw, it's your turn. Uh, I had a 10. Is it my turn? Um, oh, sorry, I had you as 12. But yeah, you, I mean, sorry, you would still be next because, uh, well, you and Slater, I mean, actually, Allie, why don't you go ahead and go because you had to sit out for a while. So Slater gets to go next and then we'll have Claw go. Um, okay, am I able to be five feet away from any of these sirens and another player? Is Brontus? Um, Brontus just killed one, but I'll, I'll say for the purposes of the fun of having sneak attack damage, I'll say that you're able to get a sneak attack damage on one of them. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to do a very sneaky move. They, they're so caught up in their singing that they're not even really paying attention to the threat that is Slater. So, yeah, uh, that's what, that's I, why you're going to get sneak attack because they don't see you. You are, right. you are like a stealth attack. That's why you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. They also are kind of like, you know, they have internal misogyny. And so these women like don't see the fellow women as threats. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a serious so, problem in the siren community. I know, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I pull out, uh, oh, I have my rapier, and I'm going to get them right in the music maker. I'm going to go right into the throat. So I do a quick little stab. All right. And I got a natural 20. Yeah. 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 So the, way we do, the, way, the way we do natural 20s on this show is you automatically do max damage instead of making you roll the dice for it. Exactly. So, what is your rapier's damage? Uh, 1d8. So you do the 8 three. plus your seat, your, your, okay, so 1d8 plus 3, so that's 11. That is their AC, that is, that, that is their hit points have been obliterated, so you have killed her, but and because have... you get three sneak attack dice, I'm gonna go ahead and let you just, you, you do that, and then you kind of like, I'm gonna say you get your rapier, you swing it out, you like slash right through one's throat until it falls down and you're able to flourish so well that one next to it is also taken out. So now there are only going to be uh, two more of these left. So wow. uh, y'all are y'all are doing pretty good. This was not a high level fight. This was just a fun right. little diversionary <laughs> combat. Uh, and because uh, you know what's not fun? Watch me roll dice for four hours straight. All right. <laughs> and so we're going to do a lot of like, dull rolling dice, don't worry. Um, and so, yeah, now it is Claw's turn, and they continue to sing there. Give me, give me, give me your flesh after twilight. Won't Claw. someone join us in a watery grave? <laughs> I, ho I hate this place so already. It's the worst. I hate this tourist trap. Um, <laughs> Claw, who is a centaur, the only thing that I hate more than boats is ramps off of boats. So Claw <laughs> is going to gingerly hoof his way down this ramp at full yeah. speed, which is about <laughs> 10 feet. And then he's going to be like, I can't, I can't listen to you anymore. And he's going to uh, pull out a little bit of sand and some rose petals, and he's going to cast Sleep. Okay. For the first time, because I am I'm yeah. a Twilight Cleric. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. So I will cast sleep in the area where we all are. Uh, and they look weaker than us. So this sounds good to me. Six plus seven, 13. Uh, 26 total hit points. Okay. Yeah. Both, uh, both hags. I mean, both those, both sirens just drip down. They both just drop off to sleep. And I just like, I can't listen to them anymore. And I keep just <laughs> hoofing it down the ramp. All right. Uh, so 
I mean, like you're. I guess you're technically out of combat until they wake up again. So yeah. Uh, do you all do you all have a way that you want to subdue them while they are while they are sleeping or? I. Uh, it's funny how it's like a moment ago we're like yes kill all of them and now they're sleeping we're like we can't they're, kill they're them so when cute they're while they're sleeping. sleeping. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, if you guys have any hesitation about killing them, uh, Brontes is, is has fully intent. Uh, he's fully intent on walking over and doing a coup de gras with his dagger. But yes. sorry, dude. perfect. <laughs> well, well, we'll go through the uh, the combat order first. So, Lysandros, yeah. it is your turn. Okay. Uh, so, uh, assuming that they're, I guess they're asleep, but are they like lying on the ground asleep? Yeah, that's the, yeah. They kind of they All feel right. like they kind of like they, they like. Oh, I guess they're kind of like more like almost like perched. Like like birds would be like they kind of have that like they kind of like both just kind of like <laughs> felt really groggy and they kind of like got on their claws and they kind of just they kind of just dozed off and it's got, it's got I have a nice I have little a question. siesta. Mm-hmm. Remember the uh, the sling I found? Yes, or, you do. Uh, I do remember that sling you found. I've had enough time to like actually know what that does now, right? Yes. So for those, which is literally everybody, but oh, thank you to welcome in for the raid. Yes, uh, only for everybody who knows what this sling does. Everybody who is not Jordan. Uh, two episodes ago, they they picked an eye patch off of a dead body, and Jordan decided to actually take it with him. And what he learned yeah. is that it is a magical item called the Two Bird Sling that is from the Theros book. Jordan, do you want to tell the audience and your party members what this magical item you found does? Yes, it is a rare sling, and when I have, uh, and it gives me a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls made with the weapon. And when I make a ranged attack with this sling and hit a target, I can cause the ammunition to ricochet toward a second target within 10 feet of the first and then make a rage attack against the second target. Uh, proficiency nice. with the sling work makes it do that stuff. So I can hit two birds. It's called the two bird sling and I can hit yep. two birds with one stone. Nice. And, uh, I've got two birds here, right? <laughs> Go for it. You literally have two birds. Yeah. 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 Okay. So Lysandros pulls the sling out. Now, uh, presumably, he's been sort of prepping this as the rest of the stuff was going on. So he doesn't wait for them to be asleep and then just yeah. wreck them. <laughs> Although that would not be out of character for Lysandros, to be fair. But no. yeah. But as the birds, as uh, harpies have like fallen out of the sky, it's like, ah, well, let's give this thing a bit of a test. And I will. Uh, Flip a sling stone at right. one of them. Which, uh, whew, not very good. Okay, so I just rolled a, uh, I rolled a seven on that. Oof. Okay, that's total. Oh, actually, or... it's an eight with the two bird <laughs> sling. So will that okay. hit them since they are like asleep? Nope, because their AC, like they're they're, <laughs> they're still their their natural protections are still there. Um, but I will. Because it's your first time using a magic item and it's fun, I will let you roll that with an advantage because they are asleep, so they don't have the ability to dodge. I'll so take that. go ahead and tell me what your second roll is. And if you miss this one, we're all going to make fun of you. Okay, well, my second one is a 13, so not a ton better, but... But it does hit, so what's your damage? Okay, so damage on a... Uh... Sorry, let me get it real quick. I think damage. Yeah, I still wanted to make fun of you. I'm mad that I can't now. <laughs> <laughs> I think damage on a sling is 1d4 plus uh, 3 for my range. Yes, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, so actually, should I make the second attack first? Is that how this works? Uh, you... what's the da- what, so the first damage you did was what now? I, uh, it. I haven't rolled damage yet. It's 1d4. Go ahead and roll the six. first damage first. Yeah, go, go ahead and roll the first damage, so we'll see how the first one's doing okay. after that. And they're asleep, so this gets a uh, sneak attack damage. Okay. Um, which is now 3d6. Yeah. It almost feels way severe time to make you roll this, but I'm going to let you do it anyway. <laughs> uh, I can roll bad. I often roll bad. Um, that is 14. Okay, yeah, so you kill one of them. Uh, and now go ahead and make your attack. So then this is the other one bouncing off and hitting you as well. Hitting the other, uh, hitting you, hitting the other, other uh, siren. That one's much better. That is a, a 22. Yeah, that one definitely hits. Okay. So that's 18 damage on that one. 
Yeah, kills it. So you have just now successfully killed. So I think everybody but D got a turn, which is a little bit unfair to D, but everybody else <laughs> got to kill a, a siren. So, so, or two so sirens. So Lysander uh, flips so, up his thing and he launches at him and it bounces off the first one and kills it and hits the other right in the head and the head like pops like a melon. And he's like, oh, ah, oh, gee. Uh, good job, Sling. Yep. So you uh, you have now gotten to use your two bird sling for the first time, which is uh, a very delightful thing to have had happen. Um, so now the the sirens are dead, and everybody is kind of like relieved, and everybody is kind of like relaxed, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, thank you so much." And then the uh, the the three men that were on the boats are like, "Oh, this was very nice of you. Thank you very much for helping us." Um, and one's like, "Yes, it was quite uh, it was quite heroic. I, I've seen quite a bit of adventures in my day, but it was a." Uh, it's good to see somebody else for once do it, so. Would you like to tip us for your gratitude? I, I did not know that you were doing this for pay, but uh, sure. And he gives each, he like awkwardly like finds uh, a gold piece in his pocket and gives it to Slater. Just one gold piece? I, like I mean, it, it didn't seem like it was, I mean, we, I probably could have defeated it myself. I just didn't get Why, a chance to before women? it was, what's that? Why, because they're women? Uh, no, because they, uh, um, oh, um, I, and he gives you like two more, he gives you like two more gold and then kind of like fumbles and walks away and, and, and tries <laughs> to sing a song about how he survived, but he's very bad at singing. It doesn't come out very well. Uh, so with that, I, uh, introduce myself to the group by saying, hey, I'm Slater. Uh, Who are you guys and gals? I, I gotta say, I like your style. Hey, it's Slater. Nice to meet you. Oh, well, it's certainly nice to, nice to meet you as well. I mean, we we don't see enough of our uh, our brethren out around here. Am I right? We kind of do like a little elbow nudge. We have a little say. We do. We actually. Well, we have our own little Seder like ram. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, like a. Kind of, so. <laughs> and it's just something that comes natural to us. Everyone else is like, huh? Mm -hmm. We've never seen them do that before. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, made a friend. Uh, Didn't know that that was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. What is your name? I'm still Slater. What's your name? <laughs> I, I, my, oh, sorry. I was not paying attention. My name is... I was still coming off of the boat. It was very difficult. My name is Claw. It is very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Claw. I like the uh, the markings on your face. Very well, cool. thank you. They are they are from my band. And so I... Uh, I, I an instrument? No. No. Um, no, they, not that type of band. It is from my my centaur band of group of. I can play an instrument though, I suppose, but it is not what I, what I was referencing. That's cool. Who's this strong lady over here? <laughs> oh, hi. My name is D. I like your negotiating skills. Hey, thanks. I like a fellow strong woman. I'm actually I'm pretty weak. Like I'm really like I don't really have a lot of muscles. But thank you for seeing my inner strength. It's all about inner strength here, she says, and then kisses her own uh, elbow. <laughs> if, you, yeah, if you like strong Danielle, women, you will like our group. <laughs> Danielle, give yourself a point of inspiration. Okay. <laughs> if you like strong women, you are going to like our group. Um, we, speaking of which, uh, should we fetch our last compatriot from the boat or let, let uh, her finish doing whatever it is she is doing? I think oh, yeah, that... Callie, Callie should be here before too long, but for now, she's kind of like, I'm, I'm just kind of sure. working on something. So I'm talking, just, just give me like a little bit of time, guys. Callie needs me time. Yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. And uh, big, big guy in the back with a scarf. Uh, you're with this crew? Oh, I uh, I just met them on the uh, uh, ferry ride over. I'm uh... hey, hey, what do you mean? You're with us. You've already like participated in one of our like little scam things. That's that's basically as much as holds the rest of us together. Uh, what do you mean I scam? <laughs> what do you mean scam? Well, we we had a no. arm we arm wrestled. Oh, uh, this one is so you adorable. I don't you arm wrestled uh, with D. D. D's not a legitimate fighter of any sort. Hey, I mean you're right, but hey. Wait. <laughs> what? He's in what do you it. mean she's not a legitimate fighter? She beat me. She beat me in the first round. What? Oh. Ooh. Mm. I'm confused. Yes, perhaps we should go somewhere and this you should sit down when we explain to you what has happened, I think. 
I've been dealing with a lot. I've been dreading coming here for probably it's going to be a, great. Sort of a, a, a they, they sell over a year. they sell they sell beverages that are a meter long over there. Yes, and I am aware. I grew those. up here. I've been drinking meter long beverages since I was a child. <laughs> that is <laughs> depressing. I think. Well, I know, us, a, I know a discreet, I know a discreet little pub we could probably pop by. Uh, I would like so to Bronte's, like to, to get to the bottom me, of this. Brontes, tell me a little bit about your family and what your life on the island, like your family's life on the island. What do they do? What is the who who is still like who's alive in your family? Who are your family? Uh, Brontes Vidalis is from the Vidalis family. Um, his mother and father, Vitalia and Brigo, uh, they're sort of like the uh, they are like show fighters of this of this town. Uh, they take advantage of the tourism business by, uh, I imagine it kind of being like, um, you know, at like Renaissance fairs, how they have those people that, you know, have the rapiers and they shoot the bow and arrow and it like, you know, the William Tell yep. hits the apple on your head. Mm -hmm. uh, it's that kind of thing. And they also do uh, show matches uh, that are probably a little bit more skill-based than they are pre-planned, uh, but they're always, you know, in very good faith. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's done, it's not rigged, uh, but it is not as like uh, intense as other show matches. You know, it's kind of more like uh, wrestling or uh, I mean like uh, Greco-Roman wrestling, yeah. not like WWE wrestling. Uh, but uh, yeah, they there is an element of performance to it, uh, but it's always in very good faith and very good fun. Um, and, uh, he has, uh, essentially when this prophecy was given to him, uh, his family was like over the moon because this was, this was going to mean, this was going to mean legitimacy. This was going to be so good for the business. It was going to be so good for the family. They gave him nearly all of their like life savings, uh, to basically buy the armor, uh, and as well as, uh, his mother back in her old adventuring days, uh, she actually has a whip that was enchanted uh, by Iroas uh, himself uh, mm -hmm. after she absolutely humiliated a servant of Morgus. Uh, the god of victory blessed the whip that she used to essentially disrobe him and then kick him on a boat nice. uh, naked and cowering in absolute uh, shame uh, off into the yeah, uh, off into the ocean without a pat, without a paddle, without an oar, uh, completely humiliating him. So she has this enchanted weapon. She gave it to him so that he could use in the games. And it and that was, was your mother. That was my mother. Okay, uh, what's her name? Uh, Vitalia. Vitalia. Vitalia Vidalia. All right. Um, Vitalia Vidalis. Yeah. Okay, Vitalia. And then what's your father's name? Brico. Okay. And then for the chat, for everybody who doesn't know, so uh, Iroa, Iroas and Morgus are twin brother gods in this world. They are both gods of war, but it's sort of like the honor of war is Iroas and like the brutality of war is Morgus. And they kind of hate each other and they're always kind of fighting against each other. And they're kind of like always, they're always like this like knives to throats level of competition between them. So for her to have defeated a servant of the other god is a very big deal. Uh, so yeah, she gave him that whip for the purposes of using it in the games, and it was not enough to best D. And so that's kind of like another added layer of like why this uh, why this one particular whip is in this velvet satchel. And he's not touching it. He's not using it. He feels a great deal of shame, and he's dreading going to this family and giving it back in shame because he can't wield it. It's not his anymore. So based on that, I'm assuming he has not told his family he's coming back. He has not written no. them like, hey, I'm coming home. Okay. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Mm. Okay. Um, make a perception check for me. Copy that. Oh, dear. That's probably good, right? Yeah, that's probably fine. <laughs> that's fine, you guys. Uh, all right. I'm a little good at perception. Let's see what we got. Uh, it's a 22. Okay. That okay. Pretty you, good. Yeah. You. you <laughs> You, Brontes, and I'm going to say Claw based on Claw's natural passive perception that he has. You definitely notice that you are are getting um, um, recognized. Like people know, people remember Brontes uh, Vidali from from before, but like they're not approaching you because probably possibly rumors have come about your loss or people have heard about your defeat mm. and you haven't been holding here. So you see people going like, "That's Bron 
Oh my God, is that Bronze Age Vitaly? Oh my God, he's back. No, nope, no, nope, it's. I didn't it's think he would show not, his face around here again. It's not me. I mean, he just said me. Mm. He just said it's not me. Slinking <laughs> back. <laughs> you think if it wasn't him, he would say I'm a different guy, but he said it's not me. <laughs> hey, hey, hey uh, can we go somewhere? Can we go somewhere? Yeah, maybe? we can go. We can follow you to whatever shady pub it is that you were uh, were pointing towards. Perfect. I know a great shady pub. If you guys like shady pubs, I, I know a shady Fantastic. pub. I do like great. shady pubs. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to get out of here right now. Fabulous. Uh, <laughs> Takes his All scarf, right, yeah. kind of like does a little hiding from the paparazzi. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, you you find your way into a shady pub that is it's like a you know it's it's like a tavern. It's a little bit open air because a lot of the locations for drinking and stuff are very much in ancient Greece, very open air. Not a lot of doorknobs in ancient Greece, as we've established in previous episodes. Um, it's like a lot of like silk curtains blocking out a little bit of the sun, um, and there, it's the kind of place where there's just like a big clay terracotta pot full of wine, and people can just dip their like their their glasses right like they're, they're basically given a glass for a fee from the bartender and then like there's kind of like a like the bartender's kind of there making sure you're not like filling it up over and over again but basically letting you just like dip your own it is very unsanitary uh we should definitely write a letter to the uh, health and social <laughs> for now it is, it is it's what we got so they're kind of like dipping glasses in and mm -hmm. yeah oh you'll be fine <laughs> don't worry about it trust me it's fine it's, it might look unsanitary but it's not trust me the name of the pub is called dynamos why not? So, uh, based on my time uh, that I spent here, what do I know about dynamos and the people in it and how easy it is to uh, catch something with my sticky fingers? You know that it's pretty... E I'm going to make, make a history check for me. This will be like what you've picked up while you've been here. Oh, and, and I have keen mind. So, okay, that gives me that. Like yeah, So, perfect. I'm not going to make you roll. Um, with a keen mind, you know that this is a little bit it's kind of an honor among thieves thing where everyone here is probably someone that if you rob them, like you're kind of running afoul of someone who is, is somewhat important or somewhat like, or, or like somebody else who's also working. And if you steal from them, it's like, Hey, Hey, come on. I just, I work all day to steal this and now you're taking it from me. Come on. So it's, it's <laughs> not necessarily, not necessarily hard, but it might be like kind of a dick move. Let's just put it that way. I see. Yeah. I, I keep my hands in my pockets for now. Yeah. I mean, normally stealing things is kind of a dick move, but <laughs> but this is well, a different level, right? Yeah. <laughs> Honor um, amongst this is like, this is like professional oh. courtesy, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I certainly uh, am going to fill my uh, my cup. I'm going to have a little drink. I'm a little stressed from those sirens. I thought that they were welcoming welcoming us in, and that it was going to be a good time. And then I was very much uh, bummed out. So. A drink for me. Who else wants a drink on me? Uh, Brontes is filling his empty bottle uh, as well as taking a chalice and putting it in. He's double fisting right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I like the way. Yeah, I have. Lysandros will join in and just grab a, a thing of uh, a group wine. <laughs> yep, group wine exactly. Uh, uh, I I have a, a tankard and I also have a boda bag, and I will uh, I'll dunk in as well and have have some uh, have some wine. When I taste it, does it taste? I'm not casting any spells, okay. but does it taste like it will make me sick? No. Well, make it do. Go ahead and make a Constitution saving throw for me. Oh, brother. I mean, enough of any good wine will make you sick. <laughs> Is this against being poisoned? No. Okay, because I have advantage from con against being poisoned. Uh, Ten is my save. Okay. Um, you're not going to get sick off of it, but it definitely feels like it's watered down. And like, oh, okay. if you if you have a feeling if you drink too much of it, like you won't be sick. Like it's not going to poison you. It's not like sure. it's not bad wine, but you're also going to get that like Bleh! feeling that you get. Right. You make a lot of it also like, it occurs to me that this is a locals bar, so they're probably not going to make this bad. Now that I think about it, yeah, it's not it's not low quality. It's just clearly like the cheap stuff, and they're saving the good stuff for the people who were actually going to pay the money for it. Right, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I drink my swill and uh, I stand off to the side and lean yeah, on well, a bar. 
Yeah, what you're mostly paying for an establishment like this is for people not to tell people that they saw you in an establishment like this. It is that kind of thing. Great. So we are here. Uh, nice place, Brontes. Yeah, uh, Dynamos. Uh, real lovely, lovely uh, uh, establishment. Let's drink my first wine here. We uh, we, we scam. We, we gotta we gotta we gotta break that down a bit. Uh, scam. So what Hi. happened was, um, <laughs> you know, in these games, people like a story. And so it's not abnormal. <clears throat> Dia's having trouble with this. Uh, this is one of the first times she's ever tried to <laughs> level with someone and be like sincere. Uh, and she doesn't know how to do it at all. Wait, Dee, really quick. While you're like finding the words, I, I go over to Lysandros and I'm just like, what do you bet that this is not going to go well? Hmm. Okay, well, this is exactly the right question to ask me. Mm -hmm. uh, I would put something like, I, I think it's definitely not going to go to well, but I would say that there's like a one in five chance that it goes okay, and that'll have to do with D basically talking him like in a different direction than the question that he's asking. Trust me, she's pretty good at that sort of thing. But uh, he seems like really caught Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Lysandros pulls out uh, some of his IOU coins and goes, ah, I'm going to level with you. I don't have any real money on me right now because for a long time I've been actively building up debt. <laughs> and, oh my but, um, God, me too. But don't tell anyone. Okay. Seems good. So we have a little bonding moment uh, like the while, you think. <laughs> while D was about to lead up to this. Nice. Love While it. the satyrs are conspiring, <laughs> um, I will like try to listen into the Brontes D conversation and and uh, you know put my my uh, hand on Brontes' hand and say, "Are you familiar with the concept of the kayfabe?" And uh, tr <laughs> it's sort of like a bit of a, a veil behind which the audience and I'm going to cast guidance on Brontes. Um, so it's that maybe like the, he will take this slightly better. It's kind of like the the boomer lady doing math meme right now. Like, right. Uh. <laughs> so these these everyone has a dream, right? You had a dream when you were younger. What what was your dream, Brontes? To compete in the Ironian games and, and see, to win. And no matter what happens, no one can take that first part from you. <laughs> you played in the games and now you get to come back as a no as a no um you get to come back as someone a person and that's just great right brontes no it's not you don't understand it was prophesized the woman, she 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 came up to me after the, one of our show matches, and she said that she had a dream, and she she was an oracle. I know she was, and 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 she 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 told me that she saw me winning. Yeah. Why why would the gods grant this oracle a vision of me winning, if if I wasn't meant to? Have you know that sometimes there are oracles that tell you their dreams, and then those happen, and then sometimes there are the oracles that you meet on the side of a road who will tell you anything um, for the right amount of coin. So, ooh, sometimes they are paid to tell people that they're gonna win the games and then they don't, not that face. Oh, not that face. Oh, I don't like that face. Oh God. Oh no, 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 no. Here, drink some more of your hand wine. And I like <laughs> Uh, Bronte stands up and he looks nauseous. Uh, he looks like he's about to vomit actually. Uh, and he's just like kind of standing up and he looks like he's trying to find like a pot or a, a, a vase, something that could put his vomit in. Uh, and he kind of like stumbles a little bit forward. Uh, and unfortunately the only thing that is uh, in his closest vicinity before this vomit comes up is the giant pot where the wine is. Oh, no. No. <laughs> you do that. Ooh, that is then... right into the wine. 
<laughs> you do that, and a bartender looks at you, and he is just like, "No, I didn't. I didn't do. I didn't do that. I did it. I did it." Right. Bra Brontes, Brontes, look at me. Look at me right now. Yeah, I'm looking. You already cost me a lot of money when I <laughs> bet against you. Or when I bet for you. I bet I bet a lot of money that you were going to win that match. And then you know what happened. And now you come into my establishment and you ruin my merchandise. Look, I serve I serve some pretty vile wine in this place, but this is, this, I can't serve this. You know what? I need so... you and your, your motley crew here to pay for this. I tell you what, tell you what, I'll help you. I'm gonna help you. I'll help should you get I rid of this the, Should I, I'll should help I you contact get rid of your it. parents and tell your parents that they You will me? not say a word to ooh, them. Ooh, that Whoa, touched bro. a nerve is what that was. Uh, like Taylor's yeah. not thinking, dunks another cup into the wine. Oh, <laughs> oh God. What are you doing what um, now? He ducks sorry, up sorry. into the wine and just watches what's going on. Brontes. <laughs> I look, Kyle, I love you, but are you really gonna make me watch you watch you? okay, okay, uh Good. Kyle? So as need... as I see Lysandra, because I can't actually let this happen. I see Lysandra's yeah, I mean, dunking in his cup. Um about how many gallons of liquid is this? Um I'll say about at this probably about five to six. I don't okay. think they're like all I will use in there. I will use create or destroy water to destroy ten gallons in an open container within range because okay. I can't I can't I can't watch Lysandros drink puke okay. wine. Um, what what happens then is yeah the all the the hydration goes away and then the, a just disgusting mess is yep. left at the bottom of of this and it is it is not and the guy is just the the the, the bartender his name is sky and he's just like i all right all right um i will I still I need will... to be paid for, I, I i didn't want you to drink that just to just to be clear i was asking you to pay for what was i what is happening right now i right, understand I'll you, don't I'll you, don't I'll worry you what's tell you what's happening and he takes off his scarf uh and he starts like pulling up this almost brand new chain uh mail shirt that he's been wearing uh the one that's like kind of ill-fitting he's like just clumsily takes it off and like his like undershirt is like being pulled up by it and he's just very undignifiedly taking it and just kind of throws it on the oh, counter and oh, he goes okay that that should cover it. That should cover it. And you're not going to say a word to my family. My family doesn't know I'm here. Uh, first of all, Devil's Luck Gaming, thank you for the raid. Thank you for coming hey, in. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And also, Danielle, you got recognized as someone who loves you on Twitter. So we have a oh, great little group coming in. So there we go. Thanks, Twitter. Um, yeah. Um, all right. So you are you are using your scarf to pay for the wine? No, I'm using no, my the, chain shirts, yeah. my armor that I'm wearing. I'm pulling I'm it off and throwing it on the ground. Yeah, Rogers, no. this is probably like ten I, gold. Yeah, no, max, like I, 10 I don't. I don't have. Uh, I, I. I'm not a arms dealer. I don't know what yeah, you yeah, think yeah. I'm going to do wait, with, wait, wait, a, yeah. with a. Yeah, with a. Brontes, I, I. I've got this. I've got this, and I will reach <laughs> Slater in particular. will see that when I open the saddlebags, they appear to be uh, a bags of holding, and I will pull out some handful of coins and hold them in front of Sky and say, "Just take whatever it costs, and we'll call it even." Yeah. Lysandra's eyes go wide and he goes into danger mode. And it's just like, uh, Claw, what, what? what did we say about opening our, our the money stash when we're in some of the seedier places that we well, go? He has to, he asked for money. Is the, is this a, what I don't understand? Uh, I, uh, I start licking my lips. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm just drooling at the sight of money. Right, he so, takes the money that you offer him. He's like, yeah, thank you. I, I didn't want, Losing armor, I can't really sell that. So, thank you for giving me money. That's like losing actually like armor. that yeah, the word know. losing you could see it visibly hit Brontes like a punch. Yeah. Hey, hey, Brontes, um, I know this is a really hard moment for you, but maybe you want to put the armor back on. It just seems like you without armor isn't something that works well for you. So, <laughs> you just see him like sheepishly look, take the armor and look down at his little pot belly. Uh, and he goes. Okay. Slide starts putting it back on. <laughs> uh, 
You gonna be okay there, buddy? No, no, I'm not. Okay. I was. Uh, do you have any idea what this is? How much money? Hey, uh, Sky. How much money? That, that that's fine. I... No, how much money did you lose betting on me? That's what I want to know. Oh, oh, Brontes. Oh, a lot. How much? Fifty-five. Plat, plat, platinum. Platinum. Yeah. I'm gonna need another pick. I'm gonna... He was going to win. What did you expect me? It seemed like a pretty good bet. I gave the Gorgon fifty-five platinum. Okay, Sky. Sky. We're gonna need some type of hard liquor shots for everybody. On me. Let's do a quick round of shots here. Let's okay. let's forget about our troubles, and then we'll we'll take our shots, and we'll maybe go somewhere else. We we don't we're not here to cause trouble. Uh, somebody at a nearby table is like, you know, I lost, I lost some money as well on that match. And you look over, and there's a table of of a group of people that are all kind of like glaring at Brontes, and they're all like, you can tell like you're not popular in this room, but they're like. We challenge you to a drinking competition. How many of you, if you, if you have any honor left and you want to have any sort of, of reputation back on Kolakari, you will, you will drink us under the table. Uh, Brontes looks around at his new compatriots. And he says, you got yourself a match. All right. Kind of... All right. Uh, we do have somebody coming in soon. Uh, as she's, she's setting up her camera. So uh, I, will, I will bring Callie in once uh, Ashlyn pops back in. But uh, everybody else, what I'm going to have you do is everybody can mark uh, I have I have rules for a drinking match that I'm very excited about. So basically, <laughs> Sky uh, and he charges you for all of this, but he sets sure. up goblets, uh, not, not, whatever, whatever the Greeks are using. He sets up like like little wine things in front of all of you, and everyone's going to have five lives. And I'm going to have you roll to see how well you are able to keep yourself up as as rounds go on. So let me go ahead and mark down my team so there are how many of okay. you there are five of you there's going to be six so i'm going to have six people on my end too uh, so fast. who is who is actually going to do this competition are you all going to drink or are you are you going to pick people what do you want to do uh, i'm do i'm going to yeah. do this competition is it based on constitution or what is it going to yes, be yes it on? is it's going to be based no. on constitution. okay well i have a plus zero but i'm still going to do it okay. because i'm trying okay. to impress my new friends I am also going to be continually casting uh, guidance on myself during this competition, okay. so okay. I will add and then add a D four to my to my rolls. Okay, oh, if that's okay. Yeah. Been doing yeah. Yeah. Why not? It's a fun game. Can walk. Yeah. Um, do you also, need to drink? Uh, hey, Sky. I know that we're like paying for the drinks, but the winner obviously gets their drinks for free, right? Like at the end of it, like if whoever wins gets their drinks for free. That seems fair. Because we're getting like a lot of business, you know? You know what seems fair? You know what seems really fair? 55 platinum that I lost on your friend here before we're going to talk about what money is owed to You know what, Sky? I'm not even really Brontus' friend, and I'm only really here because I heard that your bar is so good, and I really just want to have a good time here. And if I get, you know, if the winner, it might not be me. (laughs) But um, I'm definitely going to tell everyone, um, and I travel a lot, so I'm definitely going to let every, like, literally, like, everyone know that this is, like, the bar, like, the dive bar, like, the shady, kind of gross, the... Like kind of not what? No, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, sorry. No. What did you say about my bar? This is a I have a nice bar. bar. I have a nice bar. But come on, the winner gets. Look, it's not touristy enough for you because there's not fancy gilded carvings around the side of things and and outlines no, no. of all the gods. Look. I just have a nice chill establishment. You're going to see you're gonna see the value she's presenting here because when you go, to the tourist, she just said my bar was shady right, and gross. She's, she's, she's like, in. That's what you want. That's what you want from right. the dive bar. Sky. She's in. Right, she Allie, is an make, influencer. Allie, make a, <laughs> Allie, make a charisma check for me. Wait, can I do a um a persuasion check? Yes. Because I have a plus nine. Um, no. 24. No, yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah. <laughs> 24. Like, all, right, all right. Yeah, I get it. We're not the touristy. It's fine. So, yeah, go ahead and give me. Yeah, okay. I'll give you. 
Wow. Yes, the winner, the winner gets their drinks for free. I won't charge that's, the winner for the drinks they drank. I just want to say that's like so cool. That I am very cool. Yes, thank you. I run a cool, cool, cool bar. Um, okay. And your name uh, is cool. What's that? And your name is cool. Thank you. Th th thank you for <laughs> thank you. No one's ever told me I was cool before. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So everybody, go ahead and roll for me a charisma check. So just make a, a just to make a charisma. Yeah, go ahead and roll for it. Charisma. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Charisma. Not, not charisma. Constitution. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, that's I, was I was like, that's a five. <laughs> uh, 15 for Slater. Okay. I also got a 15. Okay. 14. Is this, is this a uh, saving throw or just a check? Just a check. Okay, copy. Oh, no, it is saving throw. Sorry. Yeah, saving throw. Sorry. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Because oh. I got proficiency yeah. in those. So, uh, oh, 22. Okay. Nice. Did anybody go is... under a 10? No. Hmm. Okay. Everybody is still in the first round. So everybody has made it through and everybody is good. All right. So now uh, everyone drinks it out. Everyone's fine because it's all people in bars are having a good time. Now I want everyone to make a second constitution save for me. Um, Sky, I forget. What are what are we actually drinking? Is this is uh, the... it's wine. Okay. okay. It's better wine. He's he's brought out he's brought right. out a new He's brought, it's still it's still the watered down wine you were all drinking earlier, but it is no it's barf. A new batch. It's right, not the no barf, barf wine. It's not the barf wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great um, combination of words. <laughs> barf wine. Uh, uh, I got eleven. Okay, 18. you just passed. Did anybody get under eleven? I got a thirteen. I got a twenty-three. Okay. Cool. I'm starting to feel a little woozy, but I'm yeah. like convincing myself that I'm fine. So wait, uh, I want to do something real quick before for it. the next round comes up, which is okay. I want to uh, gesture to Slater and just kind of give a knowing look. And then I want to cast like a quick illusion that just makes a glass of wine like appear and kind of like hand it to her. And then with the other hand, just act like miming drinking. Okay, Slater, do you, are you picking up what he's putting down? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, so from now on, Slater, you no longer have to make these checks. You are now good. I'm gonna I'm gonna make uh, Lysandros. Yeah, I'm gonna say just for the sake of time and, and fun and, and letting the flow go on. I think that 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 vision sells. Um, and so you are now all good. Um, I, uh, so I give him um, a little. Not I. I realize. Uh, I'm assuming that I also the character realize what's going on. So I give a little like. I give him a little, uh, not quite the full on like uh, Ram yeah. touch. That'd be too obvious, but I kind right. of do the gesture. Cool. You see, Brontes, I mean, this is what he's called to fix a match. <laughs> yeah, I think since you're both skaters and you specifically are, are a worshiper of Phoenix, I think or Phoenix. Oh, I think that you, I think that you pick it up. Wait, are you also are, are you a rogue? I am. Then we have thieves can. Yeah, perfect. So we have the language, of so course. So we just express that, we hey, just I can help get you it. if you want to say <laughs> that money. And I'm Here like, oh my god, dynamo, I love... My assumption I love is cheating. everyone speaks thieves can't, but... <laughs> that's yeah. a good point. That's, that's, that's actually a pretty good point, but I... <laughs> yeah, I think, I think enough is conveyed. I will say that the entire table you are competing with did not do as well with that round, and they all Ooh. kind of... Like they all, they all kind of like, that's where they realize like, this is definitely the cheap wine. And they're all kind of like, <laughs> and so they, uh, they're still in it, but they definitely are, are not doing as well. Uh, so now we are going to go again, everyone go ahead and roll your con saves and let me know if anyone got under a 12. Oh man, I killed it this time. My me Sanders too. keeps drinking though. He doesn't care about winning. 22. <laughs> I got a 12. Did you get under a 12? I got a 12, exactly. <gasps> Ooh. Okay. Oh, cool. Everyone, everyone who hit a twelve is fine. Anyone under a twelve, let's say you had okay. five points to begin with, you've all lost a point. So anyone who anyone under twelve now only has four points. I got a two, so uh, I'm down. Okay, um, you're down. You're down a point. Uh, luckily for all of you, the the other table again really struggling with this wine. They are not for the people who are talking tough and making a freaking thing happen. They are not doing well with it. So let's see how uh, this goes. Brontes is going to lean over to them, seeing them kind of like hiccup and uh, to be slightly inebriated. And he's going to go, oh, what's the matter? Oh, no. Are you not holding your liquor well? 
Well, it just so happens that for the last year, I've been drinking myself into oblivion out of shame. So you picked the wrong game. <laughs> yes. He is he is he is proficient in drinking games. Yeah. yeah. Take inspiration, please. <laughs> Thank you. But when you say, "Are you not holding your liquor well?" One of goes, "What's the matter? You don't hold your whip well." <gasps> Ooh, that, that is some sick burn damage that you just took. Sky. Sky. Hey, Sky. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is there an, are there any bottles behind the bar? Like, is there like a uh, is there like a, an accoutrement uh, of of there are bottles there are behind some bottles? They're 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 like uh, they're not bottles per se, but they're like nice terracotta pots, like very like those are the more high end mm -hmm. stuff. They're like clay, but they're they're definitely the stuff that like costs a little bit more. Those okay. are super in right now. I just want to say, cool. really <laughs> chic. Uh, yeah, I like want the mason jars of ancient Greece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to be like, all right, Lys Lysandra, you, you guys, you guys, you guys got money, right? You guys got a little. I, I got money. I think. No, I don't. You guys got, I've money, got no though. money, but it tends to work out. <laughs> Slater, somewhat. I want, I want to use the good stuff. I want them to use the good stuff. I want these people to hurt. All right. Yeah. I'll invest. Yeah, get some of the stuff they keep the combs in at the barber shop. Um, <laughs> I also take a, I, I take a quick moment to. Uh, I'm not far from D, right? So I'm able to talk to D no, really quick. Yeah. So I say to D, just like, girl, whatever you did to him, I'm impressed. <laughs> He's like drinking, even though it's not <laughs> around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm All like. Right. Wow. Like, I thought that I've heard the men in my life, like, wow, <laughs> this is amazing. I didn't uh, mean Claw to hurt is going to reach. Job. Sorry, go ahead. No, just it didn't mean to hurt him and ruin his entire life and make all of his friends abandon him in front of perfect strangers. <laughs> it just kind of happened. And that's why you're amazing. <laughs> oh. Claw is going to pull or out not? of the bag. Uh, <laughs> an opaque orange and red brown gemstone worth 75 gold pieces that we picked up a little while ago called a carnelian okay. yeah. and slide it across the table to sky and say that is probably worth something right uh, yeah he gives you like he takes the he thing as much booze as that will buy he gives you three new like containers of of wine that look like they're in very nice uh pots and anybody who wants to can make a make a insight check right now okay i want to <laughs> i changed my mind i don't want to <laughs> <laughs> oh i got a nine that's no a, good, no good I'm for very me. drunk oh actually yeah i got a nine too i'm very, uh, I'm very I got drunk. A 13. <laughs> okay yeah, yeah i got, a, I got an 11. one so Ooh. anyone who didn't beat a natural, anyone who could beat a natural one, which is all of you, he's right. definitely giving you stuff that's not worth nearly as much as that gemstone is worth, but he's giving you good wine, but it's probably worth about like 10 gold versus the, sure. 60, was it 65 gold? You said? 75. 75 gold, yeah. He's giving you, so you're still being shorted about 75 gold based on, on what, uh, on what's it's happening fine. here. Ooh. Maybe it'll maybe it'll make up for the for some of the platinum that he lost. Like I'm yeah. I claws over it. The brilliant businessman Sky. Yeah, he definitely knows exchange rates and stuff. Thanks for the swill. <laughs> anyway, you guys, we got some better stuff. I hope you guys like the better stuff. This one's not watered down. This is not watered down. You're gonna feel it. Tomorrow you're gonna hate yourself. All right. Whoa, dark. <laughs> very dark. Brontus, you're really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Right, and you kind of see like a single tear roll down his cheek. Like, <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm going to have everybody go ahead and make one more con save. This is the next round of drinks. Let me know if you don't beat a, I'm going to say a 14 because of okay. the higher quality booze and i'm still okay because of you're the... good yeah you you, yeah. you can do it if you want the, I'm, you, you don't have to cheat i'll do it for, hey it's wine. the fancy stuff i'm gonna have the fancy stuff <laughs> that's right. what i was thinking yeah. like <laughs> why yeah, not as long as you don't, let me know if you don't beat a 14. i, I did not beat a 14. 15. okay danielle you lose one of your five points Boo. i got an 18. oh my god yeah, who is win? this beautiful creature that just 
<laughs> so at this at this point, uh, Callie, who has been with you the whole time, but has kind of been like off in her own little fog. She's been like noticed. She's been like thinking a lot about like a, a bargain that she once made with Erebos and like how how she would respond to him. And perhaps at some point in this time period, she's had a conversation with him that y'all weren't privy to because she was pulled in kind of like a Nixian uh, alternate timeline. Uh, so she was she spent a lot of time on the boat staring off into space. She didn't get involved when the heartbeat, when the sirens attacked because it was over so fast. Uh, Callie, you suddenly kind of like come to attention a little bit, like your, your brain fog is cleared a little bit and you find yourself in a, a very shady taverna in on an island named Kolakari. And you suddenly realize that your your normal party that you're normally part of is has been joined by two new faces, uh, another satyr, uh, not unlike Lysandros, named Slater, and that is Allie's <laughs> character, and also a gentleman named uh, Brontes, um, who you, you probably haven't heard his name yet, but you will in a moment, uh, who's played by Kyle, and you realize that everybody else but you has been participating in a very intense drinking game. Oh, lovely. <laughs> it's high stakes. High stakes. <laughs> All righty. Hello. Uh, 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 hey, everyone. Whoa. What, what's up? What's going on? What are you oh. doing here? Callie finally decided to join us, and uh, I'll just hand her a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> and as you, as you notice this, Callie, you notice about a tree of about uh, five people, six people at another table who are getting their butts kicked in this drinking competition, and they all kind of like at once are like, oh, they were given like a much higher quality of wine than they had been drinking, and they are very much just like, oh. So that is where we are now. Um, and there is another round that is, that is ready to go. Uh, what do y'all do next? I mean, Claw is, is having a good time. I mean, centaurs are kind of unfair in drinking contests. I weigh 636 pounds. I can hold my liquor pretty well. <laughs> um, and so I'm just, I'm just going to keep on sipping until something weird happens, I guess. Okay. Um, everybody go ahead and do another round. Oh, and Callie, you do have like a vague, like, did we fight sirens? Did we just fight some sirens earlier? What happened? Like, you're kind of like realizing like you've been really off in space. Uh, yeah. Do we, do we have a bet going on for this drinking game, by the way? Lysandros. How much money do you have? Uh, ooh. Claw's going to know that one. Yeah, cool. th this is. <laughs> Do you didn't bet our has... money, did you? You got like a, a, a little less than a hundred no. gold. Well, Kelly bought some supplies. So you have yeah. like a little less than a hundred gold on your total right now. We're good. If, if, if by the way, um, I know you weren't paying much attention. Slater and Lysandros are like uh, they're like uh, two two peas in a pod. They're like the same. Ca Callie, I, I would just say like, and I'm like really <laughs> slurring and like, I'm really like playing up how drunk I am. I'm just like, oh, woman to woman, just don't vote on me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, I'm not going to win. That's for sure. Would you like to take a bet on me? Uh, would you perhaps like to take a chance on me? Take a chance. Take a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have been way too spaced out to place any bets right. Did we fight sirens? Did that happen? Was that like a like <laughs> lucid dreaming thing? No. Was that? We definitely Ooh. did. Um, everyone kicked ass. I, I kicked the most that. ass, uh, if I remember correctly. I believe you that did. I. Yeah, yeah, it was all me. Um, I. Wait, I think D didn't even fight. Shh. Hey, best friend. Hi. I'm glad that you're feeling better. <laughs> Girls, get it done. <laughs> oh, well, I, I I feel like I need to catch up. And so Callie's just going to slam hers. Well, yeah, so Callie, if you change her that, mind, Callie, uh, she can hold her yeah. wine. <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, Jordan, take an inspiration oh. point. Uh, and Ashlyn, make a, make a constitution saving throw. Let me know if you beat a 16. Okay, did we, did we get a long rest anywhere? Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a couple of days. And so basically, uh, just real quick, Callie, the uh, reason why you came to this island, like Kia had said, like, let's maybe go to the island. She kind of said something along the lines of, like, maybe lost souls are found wherever you look for them. And uh, it's essentially like a little bit of a touristy. Think of, like, Catalina or, like, Ibiza. Like, it's, it's like a very, a very touristy. Like party island, it's like about it's about, it's like about three hours of a boat ride to get there. 
Right. And it was like the next day or two. Cool. I got an 18. Okay, so you are good. You were able to down yeah. your wine. Uh, however, you all noticed that the uh, the other the other team. Let me go ahead and roll for them real quick. I, I think I, I don't know if I did or not. So I'm just gonna re-roll for them. Why not? All right. So they are gonna roll, and they they did not beat this round again. Uh, oh no, no, they just did. So they actually did. Yeah, they actually. So they're good. They're good to go. Um, and so like they're like, we got it. We got that. We 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 got that. We got this. Hey, you may have got it this round, but you know what you don't got? The money you spent oh. betting on me. <laughs> oh. you, you, you'll never get that so, back. Good one. You'll never get that back. <laughs> You're never going to yeah. get this lose back or something. <laughs> we killed some sirens. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah, I probably should have bet on the sirens because it's weird to think that you might have won a fight, so... Hey, I, Ooh, I, I whipped one in the face and her head exploded while she was singing something. I miss yeah. the singing. I miss the singing. Oh, that's nice. This feels like home. Yeah, yeah Brontes, later, buddy. Brontes, you realize that as you've grown up on this island, that it is very common for people to break into song mm. when they feel like an overwhelming emotion yeah. or or like if there's some sort of like exposition that needs to happen, a song will break out. And it's weird because you are used to that. But then you left the island and you went to the mainland. People didn't really do that. But you also were like once you left, it didn't seem weird to you that yeah. people didn't do it. And now that you're back, it also doesn't seem weird to you that the sirens were singing. Like now that you're back, you're starting to be like, yeah, yeah people sing when I when I introduced my mom to my first boyfriend, it was like a six minute aria and there were backflips and stuff. It was crazy. Yeah. That wow. sounds very weird. No, I mean it's just cool. it's just the way it happens. I mean, you what do you what do centaurs do when they have big emotions? Do they gallop? Yeah. We get we winny. Sometimes. Do they re rear up on the on the? We on rear, the up, rear up on our hind legs. Yes, mm -hmm, show, mm -hmm. show the haunches. Yeah, show the haunches. The, sure, yeah. people, people in Calicos, we sing, we sing. That's what's no, gotta that's happen. That's fair enough. It's a it's a cultural difference. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, these these people, I'm about to uh, 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 ruin them. Uh, you you guys you guys are so screwed. <laughs> Gesturing towards the people that we're drinking towards that we're drinking uh, against. All right, so they all they all line up and they get ready to take their their next say their next drinks. So everyone make a, another saving throw and let me know if you beat a, if you don't beat a sixteen this time. Now this time I rolled badly. Uh, this doesn't happen to be against being poisoned, does it? No, nope, just constitution saves. <laughs> well, I, I I fail this time. I got a seven. Okay, alcohol so poisoned. You lose one of your one of your five points. Um, sure. And then they, but they are looking rough. They they are they are close to the end, and they're like they're they're like you, your backflips are subpar. Um, oh, are they? Mythkeeper, while they're so uh, inebriated, do you think it would be a decent time to maybe try and pickpocket or do you think it would still have negative ramica ramifications because of their status still um uh, mickey you know what i will let you decide in character if you think slater would go ahead and try to pick their pockets or not um but i will let you make a slight of hand check if you with advantage because they are pretty drunk if you do decide okay. to rob them i'm going to try and go for the the tiniest uh, person there, because I'm assuming that they're having the hardest time carrying their liquor. And I'm going to try and just very sneakily while we're doing our next round or in between the drink setups. Okay, go ahead and make yeah, go ahead and make that check for me. I'm going to roll them with disadvantage because they are pretty drunk. Okay, okay so I'm going to roll again because I have a five. And I got a four. Okay, they just nice. oh, they, with, sorry with disadvantage they they lose to it so they 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 don't notice it so I'll say you get about uh, about like ten gold total. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a thought that counts. Yeah, um, yeah. They each they, they probably each have like one or two on them, and when it added all together, you guys they have like loose pouches, and they probably they probably kind of the type that runs a tab in a place like this and mm -hmm. settles up like once in a while, so they don't like necessarily have their money ready to pay for their drinks or not. Right. Uh, and then they're they're not even in a pair of that, and they're like, listen. <laughs> 
And then what? they don't say anything for quite a while. <laughs> Bro, um, just, just listens, then, doesn't notice. And then one of them just, the, what, it goes, listen, and then doesn't say anything, and like stares at you for a moment, and then he laughs, and then just goes, ah! And then takes another swig of his wine, and that's that's initiating the next round of the drinking. That was a good uh, one. So everyone make a con save. If you don't beat a 16, let me know. Oh, I didn't beat a 16 last time. Okay. Oh, no, last time you're fine. Oh, okay. Um, did you beat a 15 last time? No, I got a 12. Okay, so basically give yourself like five points to start with, and you lost a point for that. Okay. So you have four points now. Yeah. Cute. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they actually did manage to beat this, so they're like, ah, ah. That looks great. I'm face. <laughs> Ooh, I got a 16. I love, I love that. Yeah. You got a 16? Um, what? Would it be cheating if, so I just got this, I'm very generous with the money I steal, so I wanted to just get like a, a couple of baskets of bread for the table. Um, would that be cheating to give everybody some just bread? Unlimited soup uh, salad and breadstick. I'm gonna have you make a, a sleight of hand check to see if you're able to pass bread around without people noticing. Nice. So go ahead and make that. I'm yeah. gonna roll. Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna roll. Yeah, roll yeah, don't fill up on the like breadsticks you. before you. You you discreetly like walk over towards to... the kitchen and be like, here, give us a, an order of the. And Allie, I'm gonna give you a point of inspiration because that's just a ridiculous thing, <laughs> I and love I love that. it. So I'm gonna let you have it. Um, well, I am an expert in sleight of hand, so I got a 14 plus nine, oh, so yeah. I got a 23. Yeah, they rolled a four, so <laughs> you know, so I'm just like... like they don't even know bread is on the table somehow. Like that is how that's how drunk they are and how much they didn't notice it. So yeah. what I'm gonna say is everybody gets a plus one to their rolls now. Nice. Is what cool. save. To um, their rolls from the rolls. From the rolls. Yes. I, I can't keep giving inspiration, but I want to give you more for puns, but I'm gonna hold off for now. Um and so they everyone's gonna roll again and they they are like they're like ready to go and then they roll and uh honestly it doesn't matter what y'all got because none of you were close to losing and they just right. did terrible on that roll they rolled a <laughs> six on their roll Perfect. and it was supposed to be a 17 at this point and so mm -hmm. they all do it and then like almost comedically they all just kind of fall back at once on the floor <laughs> and and that is the end of this drinking competition yay and uh, I think with that, we're getting close to 9 p.m. So why don't we take a like a five, 10 minute break? Uh, Don, how okay. long should the break be, do you think? Probably just like however long you want it to be. Let's just take like a five minute break. If anyone needs to use the restroom or get a, a fresh drink uh, or whatever, uh, and anyone watching wants to take a real quick uh, bathroom or drink break, go ahead and do that. And we'll be back. We'll, we'll get back at 9 p.m. our time. That way we can get back to this. Fabulous. Perfect. Sounds All good. Right. And we're back! <laughs> That's the dumbest joke in the world, but I do it every time. It's that Wayne's World 2 reference. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Y'all, uh, we are $100 away from Ruben painting another glyph on his face, but also another song. Now, I have some songs that I'm going to sing no matter what because they're part of my story, but I have forced my players here to have songs ready or to be on notice to sing. And I would love if y'all could actually enjoy some singing tonight instead of what I'm doing, <laughs> which is not the opposite of that. So if y'all could push that extra $100, $100 for us for the Trevor Project, it's for a great cause and also for the Trevor Project. So it's for the great cause of hearing somebody else sing and also yep. for a fantastic Riley. cause the Trevor Project. Uh, Amazing. But our, Riley, you our are next... a fantastic singer. Don't oh, do that. You. But oh. I will say, without tipping the hand of who it is that's going to sing, <laughs> you guys need to donate soon because I will forget the melody that I wrote. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not saying who it is. Yeah. <laughs> mm, anyway, I want the chat to make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, right. Wisdom check. Um, oh, thank you, saving throw show. Um, they're saying stop talking about my friend Riley like that. I will stop because Riley is cool. Yeah. All right. Um, yes. Riley's Rock. cool, and your voice is oh, legit. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Thank I think you. it's very pretty. Thank you. Everybody else can leave. I just want. I and just I want hate to hear it. Because <laughs> Allie's like a legit singer. Allie like is like a singer, and so right? hearing, yeah. Uh, so there we go. Thank you. Thank you very much, Allie. You're very kind. All right. So y'all are are in this bar. Um, y'all, I, I, you're kind of 
maybe staggering out of the bar a little bit. It's kind of it's kind of like getting to be dusk or twilight uh, because that's what the, the the sirens were singing about is chewing your bones after twilight. Um, and you're approached by a young woman, and in fact, the audience will recognize her as the woman who sang the song in the very beginning of the thing. Uh, if just let's just say if I had to give an actress to play this NPC. <laughs> It might be like Amanda Seyfried. Like it might be Amanda mm. Seyfried. Like it oh. might. It might be. I, let's just say that's an a, Amanda Seyfried type. That's up. that's yeah. a poll. That's a poll, Riley. I wasn't expecting yeah, that. I, yeah. In fact, Montez, you recognize her because she's very known on the island. Uh, her name is Celipso, uh. and she is the daughter of Dion, who. Um, like a Meryl Streep type, we might say, oh who God. runs a very popular <laughs> inn on the island. And you might not know her personally, but let me ask you about this. Do you know Salipso personally, or do you oh, just know of her? I know Salipso personally. Okay. Oh. She's very, yeah. Okay, that oh, seemed a little bit, ooh. Um, was there a thing that happened with her her best friend's dead body? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so she walks up to you, and she's like, she's excited to see you. She doesn't. She's not everybody else who's like, talking about you whispering and like because she's a nice she's a very lovely young lady and and she is just like Bronte oh my god Bronte how long have you been back uh i uh um sorry oh all right uh oh, skies I, yeah yeah I'm telling him he's got to stop serving that cheap stuff to people for drinking i get it i know i know it tastes like vomit it's crazy uh so anyway i've been back for probably like you know a few hours uh these these are my new friends um everyone this is this is uh salipso uh Hi. she Hi. Her, Hi, her, mom, her mom runs the inn uh and uh yeah we uh we 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 we're, we're all friends. We're all friends. We get a yeah. There's nothing weird. We're good friends. We yeah, actually I, do need to find an inn to stay at. So this is very fortunate. Well, that's great because I, actually I was coming down to the docks because I had heard that there was a siren attack and that some heroes fought the sirens. Was that was that you? Oh, Brontes, it had to be you. Brontes, that you're was such all a good Brontes. Fighter. No, no, it was it was it was it was all them. It was all them. I mean, I I totally totally made one's head explode with my whip but you know it's mostly mostly the other people uh this is d by the way d you should meet salipso she's she's real nice uh, salipso uh this is this is the reason why i uh uh live in shame anyway <laughs> i don't know why, why do you live in shame i don't understand because he you know we decided to just move in together too quickly and he's afraid that that's brought shame to his family Wait, Dee, I thought... don't lie. Embrace your bad self. Come on. Wait, Bronte, you're living with. I thought you were happy with who you were, and everyone knew who you were. And yeah, I don't know what's yeah, happening. Uh, I don't know what that's about. Hey, wait, wait. Wait, uh, you're just living. Don't tell her the truth. Dee, when did she you already... have someone move in? Like, I mean, I, I know he's he... gay. He's like one of my best friends. I don't know why you're trying to like hide. Like, that seems weird. Okay, Every, fine. Uh, I beat like, the crap out of your best friend in front of a bunch of people, and now nobody likes him, and I feel terrible for the first time in my entire life, and I don't know how to channel it. This is very so cool, Dee. You so cool, though. You Just beat him. him up? Yeah, like a whole bunch. I yeah, think I'm right. What do you, what do you, I didn't cry. What do you mean she beat you up? Like, like just now? Because if you beat... I was going to give you a room in my inn, but if you just beat up my friend, I don't think that I should. No, 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 no. So, so it was it was a fair and square fight. D beat me. Well, actually, I, I, okay, all right. D, I fought. I was. I I gave it my all, and I believe that D gave it her all as well. Uh, some other stuff went out uh, happened that I did not know about. But I think D, D, you, 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 you were fighting like legitimately, right? You weren't pulling your punches or nothing. That's the only fighting I know how to do. Is the legit? Look at this gun. Does was someone with these guns pretend to, yeah, to got... fight someone, and then it turns out that other people made it so that that person lost, and now they've brought shame to their entire family and their island, and they never wanted to go back. Oh my God, is this what guilt feels like? I don't like it. It feels heavy. Wow, D, I, it's honestly so badass. Like, just enjoy it. It's like, it's fucking cool. Like, just have fun. 
You made someone feel bad, and that's awesome. I did, didn't I? Phoenix is all about this stuff. And, like, honestly, it's just, like, I don't know. Just be proud, okay? I'm proud that I ruined your life. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. Yeah. This, this, I, I don't this. understand. I, she... Brontes, you 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 know her well enough to know that she has a strange look on her face. Like she doesn't remember, like she's she's having a hard time piecing together details right now. Like you're explaining something to her about you leaving and getting into a fight, and it's like like something is occluded in her mind. It's like something is is like not clicking, yeah. and she's like, "But you you never really left." Yeah, like to just I don't understand. I don't. What do you mean? I never really. You've been gone for. Oh. A D Claw realizes what has happened and is just going to keep to himself in the back until something else happens. Wait, Silip, so what do you mean? I never really. Did you say I never really left? Wait, did you leave? You've been here. I, I mean, I know you've been here my whole life. I don't know what. I've. I was. I haven't been here for like a year and a half. I gained 40 pounds. Yeah, I was wondering if you got stung by a bee or something. No, I got stung by about 600 <laughs> bottles of wine. Oh, well, I hope you're taking care of yourself. And then she kind of just like looks off in the distance and you hear like some music start to play and you're kind of all like not sure, except for Bronte, who this seems fine for. And, and she just kind of goes, I can't quite recall my last summer. I should see it all. Walks along the bay, laughing in the rain. <laughs> My last summer, those memories don't remain. And then she kind of like shakes her head and is like, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's just a confusion. It's whatever it is. Um, I want everybody except for Brontes to make a wisdom saving throw for me. This is not good. Mm. Let me know if you. 15 for okay. Slater. Oh. Okay. 19. Okay. I got a solid three. Okay. Yeah, I got a, <laughs> I got a, I got a two. Okay. Everybody but Slater and Callie. Her <laughs> singing seems fine. You're like, yeah, of course people start singing randomly. Slater and Callie, it's still really weird to you that people just break into song. Everybody else is kind of just like, yeah, this, this makes sense. People people get strong yeah, emotions and they sing. And that's how it goes. You guys see as Bronte like starts to like do like a little snap, you know, like he's just like unconsciously going along with it and like supporting her melody as best he can. Uh, also, like kind of spreading out, almost as if he's trying to balance a frame <laughs> with his body. <laughs> <laughs> Callie's gonna lean over to Slater and be like, "So, how long has this been going on?" Like, Ugh, this wasn't... I don't even like to think about it. What what is this? Just ignore it. It's better off that way. Uh huh. Uh, okay. This is weird. It's very weird. Huh. So do you want to go? Do you want to go to my mom's inn and get a room? Or I mean, I don't. I don't mean get a room. I'm engaged. But I meant like. Do you oh, want to? what that happened, <gasps> girl? Yeah, actually, to Sky, the owner of the bar you were just at. Oh, he, you can do better, girl. What are you doing with that guy? Um, marrying him? Prontis, we're together. I mean, like, did you lose a bet? Why are you going with that guy? Prontis. I mean, there's not a whole lot of people on the island who live here who are, like, my age. Who? Do you have any leave. idea how many hot guys are just off of Melitus? Right, but they're not here, and they don't they don't stay here. Yeah, you just... I mean, I, I want to leave, but I haven't yet, really. I just kind of... Are you, okay. like, chained to this island or something? No, no. It's. I mean, I could leave anytime I want. And I want to leave sometimes, but I just... You know, every time I think about leaving and I, like, go to leave, I just, like, think of my mom and I want to leave her behind. And I just, like, just feel really, like, you know, bound. I just, like, love this place, so... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. We're going to go uh, talk to your... See your mom. I haven't seen her in forever. I'm oh, sure she's speaking lovely. Of which, speaking of which. Oh, what, what? So, you know how I don't know who my dad is, right? Oh, yeah. 
Oh. Like, I think I know <laughs> one of three guys that he might be. I don't know which one. And I invited them all here. And my mom doesn't know they're here. And I'm going to find out which one of them is my dad. This sounds so plan, familiar. Right? There's nothing wrong with that plan, right? It is a perfectly foolproof plan. That's uh, okay. Sounds perfect. Like my mom, you know, was so excited. Three men she slept with 20 years ago showed up, right? So I so found her diary I... text journal, and I found out what guys she slept with, and I invited them all here. Can I just say one reaction to this? Uh, sure, sure. Can I be like completely honest with you? I would love it. Mama Mia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Here we go again. It's an expression like when something's really crazy. Okay. Um, it's an old Malaysian. <laughs> just, if you got off this island, you would have heard it by now. Trust me. It's a, oh, it's a Seder okay. thing. Okay. Sorry. Well, you're, and she's like, so she motions you towards the, the hotel, the book inn. And she goes, well, here we go again. And then leads you towards the. the can, can we just have one second? D, can I borrow you for yeah. one second? Can we, I, just, oh, I forgot something yeah. that I forgot something in the bar the Dynamos. Okay. I, um, and I need you to come with me for a second just to make sure we find it. Yeah, let's and go. You, He's not a good liar, and he's drunk. But yeah, <laughs> he's pulling you in, and he's just like, "All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tell Sky that if he hurts my friend, we're gonna break him in half." Okay, thanks. Oh, Come on, you're coming with me. You're making decisions while very drunk. Okay, mm -hmm. you put that you put that chainmail <laughs> on, right? Oh, it's back on. It's not fitting well. Hey, Sky. <laughs> oh, hi, Sky. Hi. <laughs> Hey, buddy, how's it going? That was a fun little thing we just did, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to. Yeah, you guys actually, I made a lot of money off you guys being here, which not as much as I lost on. Yeah, on see, here's Bronte's, the thing. I don't really good. give a crap about you uh, oh, uh, no. trying to shame me about uh, losing. I just want you to know uh, I just found out that you're marrying uh, my good friend over there. That's really nice. Congratulations. Okay. Uh, by the way, just so you know, Sky is actually, he looks like, if I had to name an actor, oh, no. playing <laughs> Sky, it would be Dominic, Dominic Cooper. Dominic sure. Cooper is the guy who Sky is being played by. And I didn't just look that up mm -hmm. now, because uh -huh, I forgot uh -huh. that Dominic Cooper was in that movie. Uh -huh, and both uh -huh. of, I've watched both those movies a lot of times. Right, so much. I, 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 like, I may have watched both those movies like a significant <laughs> amount of times before I realized just now that Howard Stark is also Sky. I mean, sure, just now sure. picked that up. But this, sure. like, it's 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 amazing how much that mustache will change things. Um, all right. Um, <laughs> I'm really able like, to visualize oh, yeah, this. I, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. He's like, I'm not. I'm not planning on hurting her. I'm planning on, on marrying her. You know, I wasn't jealous until I met her, and now I every time I see a guy, it's like a threat. Yeah. You know? See, here's see, something. here's the thing. She's like my oldest friend. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Too. That's why I'm marrying her. Yeah, I've known her longer. Okay. So here's what's gonna happen. Okay. If yeah. if I find out that there's anything crazy, okay, it it doesn't matter that I lost in the IR in the IRO in games, okay? Because I'm gonna make an IRO in games out of your face. Oh, right? don't say that. That's a right? bad thing to say. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> I, and you know I, I will. Know. Okay. Does that I... mean you'll lose? <laughs> D, I mean, gonna... you're here to back me up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean, you oh so God. strong. Yeah, yeah, you so Daniel, strong. I just caught what you were doing. That's so funny. Um, oh God. Um, <laughs> I, he's like, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. I just, I just serve drinks, and I am in love with that girl. So I'm just gonna like. That's right. That you just thing. serve drinks. That's all you do, and that's all you might ever be. Oh. Well, that seems unfair. I, I have a pretty good business making weird unbreakable shields, so I don't know why it's like a thing that you would say about. All right. That's, that's, that's <laughs> I like Kelly being like, oh, what? Well, uh, unbreakable <laughs> shield. Oh, I think I left something right. at the bar. Hello. Hi. Yes. Unbreakable <laughs> shields. Mm. Apparently, he makes unbreakable shields and apparently also piss poor wine. So, mm. <laughs> hey, 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 you you get what you pay for. You want to pay more? Like you paid more, you got better wine. You paid you pay for the cheap stuff, you get the cheap stuff. I don't know. That's business, man. And how might one he's a business, procure man. a unbreakable shield? Um, I don't know. You pay for it, and I'll give it to you. Oh, how much are they? Things aren't normally this easy. <laughs> Yeah, Kelly, make a um, make a. I was just making a joke about unbreakable shield. But you can call it, uh, just, just I carry shield. Captain America's shield. Um, 
Um, but yeah, go ahead and make a. Uh, I'm gonna have you. We're gonna use our new mechanic that we that Dom suggested for uh, transactions. Um, so Callie, roll for me a charisma. Say, just we'll make a, a charisma check, um, and I will let okay. you know if you roll high enough to. Or I, I have a DC in my head. Okay. And if you beat it, then then he will. You have enough money to pay for the shield. A DC in your head. Yeah. I rolled a five. Okay. Probably I'm not. I'm gonna let you know that that's not that wasn't it. It wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> Yeah, it. I don't think that's so enough. It wasn't five. You I think what happens is just like, I'm imagining Callie pulls her like coin purse out and like yeah. opens it up and like a butterfly flies out of it. Yep. And, yep. and he's like, Well, I mean, I'm here if you do come back with amount of money and and come with it i will <laughs> i will maybe like be willing to make it for you but right now that's i look I, I make good stuff i'm not gonna just do it for that cheap so noted thank you yes let's let's move on okay great thank you all right now now that, we're, now that we're square remember i'm watching you okay watching you <laughs> at your beautiful ceremony that he's gonna go to right oh yeah i'm gonna be there in a tux yeah. Oh, yeah, and I'll all the way out on the on that. Totally. Like, for some reason, we're gonna make everybody walk up all those stairs to come to our wedding. So it's gonna be nice. S Ugh, stairs. God, Ugh. God, you suck. Why well, are you I making people you. walk up stairs? I don't know stairs. why you would be coming to my wedding anyway. You're like a, a stranger. You're just... Can I yeah. come to the wedding? Uh, I, I, yeah. we're all back at the bar apparently. Well, you know, they wait <laughs> that way. We kind of waited. Yeah, we're leaving. Day. We're leaving. I just had to have a final word with Sky. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you for telling me that I shouldn't be mean to my wife. I mean, my fiance, who's going to be my wife, but thank you. All right, so you head back out, and and, and, and uh, Salipso has has been just kind of like waiting patiently and very confused because everybody walked away from her. And then, <laughs> except, except for, I think, Slater. I think Slater's the only one who didn't go into the... So Slater, what's your conversation with Salipso been like while this was all happening? <laughs> So, um, you know, would you consider yourself like a wealthy person? <laughs> Maybe like a working class? She says the like, thing. What's your pocket situation like? She says the thing that wealthy people say, which is, you know, I don't really think about money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really think about I money. I say know? that and like my eyes immediately mm -hmm. like yeah. <laughs> go towards like her pocket. She's like, you know, my mom runs an inn, and so I just like to meet people, and I never really think about money. It's fine. So cool. And apparently, I'm turning her into I love that. Alexa Schmidt at this point, but our shit. I know. I was thinking about that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Right. Um, that's cool. Um, do I, what do I gauge of her intelligence and wherewithal? Of like, is she someone that strikes me as um, paying attention to where her money is? Um, I think she strikes you. Make a make a insight check for me. Okay, one second. Uh, I got a ten. Okay, I think that you. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot that I'm an expert. Uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. uh still only fourteen. Okay, still. with a fourteen, I'll say that you kind of get the idea that like she probably doesn't carry a lot of money on her because her mom probably fits the bill for stuff or mm. or she probably has things covered for her for the most part anyway like she's not she knows I mean, better she, than to carry cash or coin. yeah she's I she's see. not she's a little bit naive but she's also like not stupid like she's she's smart she's a smart girl who is also not world wise like that makes mm. sense that, that kind of gives you an idea of what she's like as a person totally um, yeah um then i just say like that's cool me too like you might think that she might per se believe in the wonder of a fairy tale <laughs> as the kind of person that she is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Um, so are you excited to marry Sky or whatever? Yeah. I mean, you know, he he seems like someone who's up to traveling and I'm excited to like maybe like go off the island and, and go somewhere and I definitely am gonna leave this island. I'm definitely gonna do that. So that'll that's a thing that'll happen and he'll that's... help you do that. So cool. Um, have you ever heard of this thing called the C's Melody? She doesn't react when you say it. She It's almost like you say it and she has like a vacant stare for a moment. And then she's like, so yeah, anyway, so he and I are going to go off together. And we're gonna go <laughs> <laughs> mm. he, I think he's going to buy a boat with the money he makes from selling uh, under under the table weapons. And then we'll uh, 
yeah, we'll go exploring. That's so cool. If I had a bunch of money, I would definitely spend it on a gigantic gem. It goes by many names, and one of them is the C's Melody. Are you familiar with this? So the best <laughs> way I can describe her reaction every time you do this is basically, <laughs> um, you know when Bernard in Westworld, when someone showed him a photo mm -hmm. and he said it doesn't look like anything to me? Right. That is what's happening. Every time you mention this gem <laughs> to her, it's like she doesn't <laughs> register that you're speaking. It's like, it's like her brain is occluding the information. Um, and Lysandros, when that happens, let's say you guys are arriving again when this is going on, it feels familiar to you. Because one thing I'm going to say is that since the since the um, ending of last season, so that was Monday, but in, in game, it's been like a day or two, you've started to have these memories of your own brother. And it almost feels weird to you that you forgot your brother. Like you, you remember, you remember a moment where you stood in front of, of your God Phoenix. And he was like, do you know about your brother? And you'd be like, no, that's weird. But now you're like starting to have these like memories pour back in. And you don't know if it's a, uh, a combination of um, the dice that you had that are no longer being infused with Phoenix's power or whatever he was doing to your mind that was then undone by Kia. But it's almost like you had your own memory occluded to very important details of your life, and now suddenly you're remembering them. And you kind of catch that vibe on her face. I might even make you roll for it because you're currently thinking about it right now, and you just got a feat that makes you inscrutable. So you're aware of when somebody else is doing it to you. So you mm -hmm. just you vaguely get that sense to, about her as well. Hey, uh, Slater, that thing you keep asking her about, have you noticed her eyes just kind of go blank for a moment every time? Oh my god, I thought she was just like really weird. Yes, I did <laughs> notice that. Yeah, I, I think there's something more to it than that. I, I mean, I, I can't say it for sure, but it feels like it's almost like she stops being herself for a moment. I bet there's something on her or on this island that's like stopping people from being able to even think about whatever that thing you mentioned mm -hmm. is. God, that's so weird. Well, you know what? Maybe you and I can both kind of like go in on this search of mine. I don't know if you could even split whatever it is I'm looking for. You didn't hear what it was that I was looking for, just in case I don't want to split it. Did Look, you? Let me just put this out on the table. I've picked up that you like to pick things up from other people that they own. I've got no problem with that, but it's not my style. I'm not really the sort who like likes any, like I, I, I sort of feel like having a lot of money and having material stuff that, that sort of like ties me down. And for a long time, it was also keeping me from dying. Uh, now huh. things have changed, but honestly, if there's some big score, I'm fine with letting you have it. It's just not something I'm really interested in. Lysandros, as you're speaking, suddenly, you get a sensation that you've had previously where the world goes black and white oh, and no. everybody else seems to fade oh, boy. and kind of pause and you kind of have your own little moments and you see again a face that you have seen recently uh, a masked golden face of the god that up until now you worshipped the only other person who sees this is Slater, who is also a worshiper of Phoenix. And so for her, the fact that her god is appearing is enough for her to stay present and be aware of it. And so Slater, you've occasionally had the, uh, the chat here and there with Phoenix. It tends to, not unlike when he whispered in your ear earlier, and maybe when something's a little bit bigger of a score, um, he'll appear. But this is what's happening right now. So you are aware of this as well. But he's definitely talking to Lysandros. And he's like, Lysandros, hello, God. my friend. Phoenix! I'm, I, hi! I, I, that was, I have to say, you pulled a fast one on me. You, you did a thing. You told me you would make a bet, and if you won the bet, if you won the fight, that my I could let you go. And you didn't tell me, you did not tell me that your friend was going to be supercharged by Nylea. That was a dirty trick you pulled, you have to admit, right? Yeah, but you can't. Fault me for that, right? I mean, you're Phoenix. No, no, I, I don't fault you for it. I find it very impressive. It is very hard to pull a fast one by the god of deception. 
you did it. I am, I am amazed. I see you've met a friend of mine. This is my friend Slater. Slater Lysandros. Lysandros, you probably have already met. I'm fine. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm overstepping. I'm, I'm, I'm God-splaining to you. I apologize. <laughs> oh, Phoenix, we go way back. We met this morning. Oh, I saw. And you have worked so well together already. Now, Lysandros, are you, are you sure you want to, like give up all the friendship we've i know that i like made you think your white life was valuable and it wasn't and i like used you in a pawn and like a long i kind of forgot about you for a long time i'm not gonna lie uh because once your brother did his thing it was kind of like i didn't need you anymore but then that mask showed up and i was like oh lysandros this is a toy that i forgot about it's kind of delightful to find him again so but now you're so fascinating I, I forgot how cool isn't he, he is very much. Isn't he what? amazing? I I met him and I have to be honest, I liked him right away. I just really think he's so fun. Like we should just all hang I out. Agree. You know, it's almost like, and then music starts to play. <laughs> and Phoenix starts to sing to you. Okay. <laughs> and he sings, I wasn't jealous before you left. Now every god I see is a potential threat. <laughs> now I'm possessive, it isn't nice. I've given you so much as you indulge your vice. Don't go wasting your devotion. Lay all your prayers on me. And then he continues to say, and then that's long as we can go, I think before we go, he's coming to play. So uh, he's like, look, I'm not going to force your hand on anything, but I just, I just think that, you know, we had a good thing go. I know, I know Clothis' friend is talking to you about destiny and, oh, you could be important, but do you, I know you, Lysandros, and you don't want to be important. I mean, you had a chance to be important and you ran away and I know that's who you are. And so I'm just saying, if you decide that you still, I'm not gonna hurt your friends. I promised you I wouldn't. They don't. Like, it's kind of you've already like foiled that fun plan of. You're mine. certainly not so, gonna hurt me. Um, of course not, Slater. I would never hurt you like I did Lysandros. Um, but you know, I just <laughs> wanted to let you know that that I'm I'm not gonna let you. I mean, I let I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hurt you. So if you want if you want to come hang out with me again, just know that those dice are always ready to be charged whenever you want them. So, like no I'm, crush, but like we're gonna be hanging out. Like Phoenix and I are gonna be hanging out all the time. I feel like you and I should be hanging out all the time. It just makes idea. sense that like we would all like just hang out like forever. I mean, and uh, Slater, you suddenly have a, a vague memory of in your childhood there was a kind of like a folklore around uh, Scola Vale, where the satyrs mm -hmm. tend to come from before you went out into the world. There was talk of a, of a satyr by the name of Lysandros, who was prophesized to become the richest and most influential satyr in the world, who would die the richest satyr in the world, who was prophesied to be a leader. Whoever, however, he ran away from that and disappeared and nobody at the skull of Vale ever saw him again there was rumors of him popping from time to time but that is that is about two or three generations ago and it's just kind of like a tall tale now like a paul bunyan type it's like it's like the lackluster king is kind of what they talk about with him and you're kind of like oh weird a lot of what phoenix is saying to lysandros is reminding me of this legend and then that godly vision fades and we come back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. And we just <laughs> got a, a donation that put us over the 200 mark. So Ruben, I'm gonna Ooh. need you to start drawing your face again. And yeah. Allie, go ahead and sing that melody that you Yay. remember. And thank okay. you guys so much for donations. Yes, yes, yes thank yeah. you. Thank you for donating. Thank you donations uh, so much. <laughs> um, so this is just, uh, obviously I don't have a little guitar on me. Um, interesting a lot. Interesting enough. Um, my character Slater plays a liar and I am a liar. So that's just a cute little, <laughs> a cute little thing. Okay. I'm Slater the Seder, but folks call me, but some, sorry, I'm Slater the Seder, but some folks say sadder. I crush all my haters cause none of them matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm friends with Lysandros, cause we're both in debt. 
So thanks for donations. You all are the best. Hey! Oh, that was so good! Oh my gosh! Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. What a cute little thing. <laughs> Amazing. And now, Would anyone like to give me some money for the song that I sang, <laughs> my friends? <laughs> Phoenix, I know you've got fat pockets. I, I have an idea for a parody <laughs> song at some point if, if people want to give more money. It's a little half-baked, but I've been writing down potential <laughs> lyrics just in case. Ooh, so, um, out here. All right. So, uh, Celipso is like, well, I can't give you money for your song, but if you want, I, since you sang for your supper, I can give you dinner when we get to my mom's hotel. Yeah, does everyone else have to starve? I can eat. I'm, I'm no, famished. I mean, I'll, I mean, I'll feed people. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, well, yeah, let's, let's all eat. <laughs> oh, I see what you were asking. <laughs> so chat, we are ninety dollars away from letter face paint from Ruben, and we are one ninety away from maybe maybe we yeah. might sing. Maybe Ruben will have while to sing painting while my own face. Time. Maybe oh, Jordan boy. will have to sing. Yeah, maybe that'll happen. Uh, maybe maybe something will happen with Kyle having this. We don't know. Somebody but me will have to sing if we get another hundred ninety dollars. So let's do that. That'd be fantastic. Um, I'm going to sing no matter what because I like attention. All right, so we will. Uh, they they, they <laughs> take you to her mother's inn, and um, there are a couple like tourists that are checking in like there's like a cool thing happening there's like you actually kind of like feel like you might have just like walked in at the end of a musical number about the value of money in the world and how important it is okay. and how like that kind of stuff <laughs> um that's over now and then that like there so then like the 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 servants who are always forced to participate in dion's dances like are now like moving off to do their own things again and you see a a woman who looks like a like a Meryl Streep type, we might say, named uh, Dion. And uh, she sees you and she does like this and she's like, so. I get it. And then I got the she reference. approaches you. Um, <laughs> thank you. Nice. Um, and then um, she like comes up and she's wearing like, like, not overalls because it's, it's sterile, but it's like a, like a, like a toga that looks like it's hanging like a Yeah, toga Like she has like a toga <laughs> Yeah. I, I I want fan artists now that. to please make a concept art of what Togarol look like. I'm putting it out to the fan art community of Saving Throw Show because they are delightful and want to see your to your Togarols look. And I'm going to give Ashlyn inspiration <laughs> for Togarols. Hello, uh, hi. Um, I can't do a good Meryl Street impersonation. Um, that's all. I, that's all I had. She's like. Oh, are, are 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 you guests? Are you are you here for the are you here for the party? Are you, are you friends of, of of my daughters or what? Hi. Yeah, hey, Dion, so good to see you. Oh my god, oh, hi, Bronte. What's the chilly reception? Well, um, some some no, it's fine. I'm sorry. I just the town. It, don't, don't worry about it. Oh, is this about the 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 Iron Games and stuff? You think it probably is, right? I mean, yeah, I'm pretty good idea. Okay. Probably. I was thinking maybe it was because your daughter was marrying a loser, but whatever. Whoa. Wow. I mean, he seems like a nice kid. I don't know what the problem with I him. mean, you know, he runs a, runs a terrible runs, bar. He, I mean, he owns his own business. He didn't go off and lose in a fight, but all right. That's cool. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. And now, yeah, let's talk about people's life choices. All right. Cool. I, I mean, you know, I thought you and I were cool. Okay, fine. All right. Uh, brought you some business. Anyway. I mean, you just insulted my daughter. Yeah, daughter. you don't know him nice anything, guy. so what? He's really okay. nice. We all this love him. Um, right Bron Brontus is just like, he's just got like a really weird sense of humor. Um, and like, honestly, it's like so funny, but only a few people get it. Um, but he's just joking. He's also drank a lot. Yeah. Yeah, the, that. That, that, that happened. Maybe you should maybe you should talk to Sky about taking out that chainmail a little bit. Excuse me. I just meant like you know it, it would look better if it fit, oh, if it fit you. Uh, um, okay. Anyway, Brontis, um, I just want you to know that um, the this mom here, um, I know you know her and I don't, but like that's just her sense of humor, and like <laughs> honestly, like it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think everyone here is, is sure. quite funny, and we don't need to uh, to fight each other, right? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm not trying to be mean. I apologize. I'm just trying. I'm, I'm stressed out. Uh, I don't know if you heard, but I was just singing a song about the, how hard it is to find money to fix my hotel up. So that's cool. well. I just brought um, you paying customers, so uh, you're welcome. Well, 
<laughs> and see, Silipso's like, well, I did actually tell them they could stay for free because oh. they saved the town. But and if you have money to pay, I'm sure my mom would love it. But I will let you stay for free if you. We'll give you like a room or two for you all. Wow. And then the mom looks at Silipso and was like, I can't, I can't say no to you. And she's like, Yeah, I have a room if you want it. It's actually more of a barn, but I'll let you stay in it. Ooh, barn is perfect. I will take that. Oh, great. I like people who, who, who negotiate. That's perfect. Okay, oh, that went. For me, I mean, well, if you don't want room at the inn then and not stay at the barn, um, that is going to be some other de deal. But I'm happy in the barn, personally. I think then, I'd like uh, a room. Say Lipso is kind of like going Calypso is like going like this to Brontes about the barn. No barn. No, no. Don't don't stay in the barn. Don't stay in the barn. Oh, okay. No barn. Right. That's what you wanted. Ugh. And she like whispers. She whispers to like Brontes, and she's like, "My kids oh, are in the barn." Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. You no, no to the barn. No to the barn. See, I kind of feel like the barn would be a good choice though, because otherwise we have to have a centaur in our room, which. And Claw, you know I don't mean this offensively, but you take up a lot of space. Well, yeah, and also I assume the rooms are upstairs, which you know I do not like stairs. Well, well we actually oh, have perfect. lots of rooms on the down on the, the floor. We we do have centaur customers. No, I, yes, stairs, I understand, so but they, I imagine yeah, island I mean, resort. We're on the leash. Right, island effect. resort though. Centaurs yeah. don't really like being on the high seas. So I, I listen. That's my fault for well, assuming. I making assumptions that is my people. fault for assuming. I guess you have some. In, I guess you have some internalized. You know what? That, that is my right. own bias, um, and I apologize. You're a. You're. A, I got it. I got. I'm sorry to assume, but you're a fair as van. Yes, centaur, I mean, aren't you? I am. Is it, it's the. It's because I'm a country boy. We mostly get. We get a lot of Lagonis bar band yeah, centaurs yeah, yeah. here, and they tend to be like, "Yeah, you're right." Fairies people do like. We've actually had people pay extra for the barn, which yeah. is weird, but we'll take it because you know right. money, money. Money. If I had a little money in the rich man's world, I'd be fine. So. So, Clara, you I can don't. Stay in the I mean, barn. I can. I will. This is like a very long conversation about me staying in the barn. I think that we can. I'll take whatever room is available. <laughs> Brontes doesn't want me to go it, to so. the barn though, so I guess I'll take a regular room. Whoa, yeah, weird. you definitely don't want to go to the barn. It's uh, it smells. Can we also get some dinner, perhaps? Uh, I could uh, use a snack. Ooh, I get a free dinner. Oh, yeah. Okay, I guess you get a free dinner. Everybody else, yeah. I mean, like we'll send some up. Our our chef Jake has actually made a very delightful spread of of Greek of of, of, right. of uh, not Greek, but yeah, a very nice, <laughs> of, a very popular Therosian accoutrement. Fabulous. So uh, yeah, I'll have him send that up. That's fine, or send it over because we're on the ground. Lovely. No. Mm. Thanks, Dion. Delish. Thank you, Dion. Thank you, Dion. You're welcome. Yeah. Brontis, oh, are you okay? My... I'm I'm great. I'm great. I'm just you know. I'm uh do wasn't expecting be, that. Do you need to be in like a better headspace right now? Are you okay? Yeah. Hey, what do you hey, mean? Buddy. What do you got something? Well, what do you yeah, got? I do can got, uh do you do want you me to stuff? I can do, do a thing. Got... You want me to do a thing? Do you do a thing? What's the thing? Boop, and I'll cast lesser restoration after I tap him on the nose. Oh, oh wow. This is a lot of sobriety coming at me real fast. Yeah, sorry about that. It's kind uh, of like whiplash. <laughs> When hey, I've got a hangover cure for you if you want it, and I hand him a little more wine. That's that's the thing. I'm not hungover at all. <laughs> I'm not hungover at all, oh, and I wine. wish I was. Brontus. Oh, hair, the mental when when me and my sister used to get in arguments, the best way we dealt with all the pent up frustration and unspoken words is we'd just spar it out. Hmm. Did you then later kill your sister? <laughs> Well, Lysandro, one, thank Claw's you. Claw's going to leave. Claw okay. is going to the room. Really? That I slide up to Callie and I say, if that's true, you are my goddamn hero. There is more to that story that is not of anyone else's business. Thank you, Lysandros. I'm sorry. Callie, Callie, while that happens. Wait, no, sorry. You haven't, never mind. You have not yet. Uh, <laughs> you Okay. Yeah, you you suddenly feel your attention. When Lysandros brings up the death of your sister, you kind of like oh, find great. your mind drifting. And oh, you kind of imagine in the distance a figure you recognize. 
and it, this is like a fantasy musical number um, where you suddenly picture first you see your sister and then you re- you remember yourself attacking her and killing her and you know why that happened but you don't see that right now you just see the moment where you kill her and then standing over her walking up having seen this attack happen is Seza who we have met in previous episodes she is she was the betrothed of your sister who witnessed you murder her and has since vowed mm-hmm. vengeance on you and she looks you in the eye this is like a fantasy sequence mm-hmm. of her and she says my love was murdered by you unforgivable sin so i swore on her grave i bring you to an end look at me now i've been brought so low i don't know how but i've totally lost control there's a fire within my soul just one look and i can feel all this pain one more look and i relive everything whoa whoa cali cali here i go again my my how do i forgive you cali cali does it show again my my just how much you broke me and then it fades away and here's the thing Everybody else also saw that vision. Lovely. Because it's a musical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That was. Oh, brother. And then it fades away again. And nobody else besides the party thinks it's weird that happened. Everybody, including Brontes. Brontes is like, yeah, it was actually everybody but Slater at this point thinks it's fine and it makes total sense. And mm. it's, it's weird to you, Callie, that they all saw it. It's weird that it happened. But it happened. And I still haven't fully like come on board to what's happening yet, right? Yeah, in fact, I want both Callie and Slater to make a yeah. wisdom saving throw for me now. And uh, Callie, you can I do it. I gotta pick one. <laughs> okay. All right, so. Okay, Callie, suddenly it makes total sense to you because you're you're so shocked oh. that that happened that suddenly like your brain, whatever whatever was like fighting this in your brain is now. I got a seventeen. Passed. Oh, sorry, Slater. You I got, got a critical one. one. Sorry, I the, my my vis, my video was was lagged and I didn't know who said what. So Slater, you now are like that thing that just happened. Like you're now because I was such a good singer. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I mean, I'm bored with this. Callie, it made you so angry that you still are like, what is happening? And you can be very Callie. About oh, for it. sure. Okay, that was great. Sure, open up my life to everyone here. Hi. Hello, I'm Callie. I killed my sister, in case you were wondering, and you know, needed to know, that's what that was like. So yeah, that happened. Any questions? Cool, I didn't think so. No. Great. If you want to get out anything, sparring is the great way to do it, and I'd love to spar right now. Let's do it, girl. And he stands up and like... (laughs) <laughs> probably knocks the table a little bit, but he's getting ready. He's inspired. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's do it. Right and Dion far? keep it yeah, in. I mean, yeah, Kelly. All right. Yeah. Um, I think that I think that Dion's like, I have a I have a, a fighting pit. Do you want to I mean, people we have guests that fight in pits. Do you want to just use that instead of right here in front of everybody? I don't know. I kinda wanna do it in front of everybody, but fine, fighting pit. Fine. It's, it's your place. I mean everybody. I respect your place. Do it in front of everybody. Yeah, let's do it in front of everybody. Dion, I mean, we're gonna clear this. Yes, clear this. Fine. And he just, starts just pushing. Do it. Can you just go outside? Do it pushing in front the tables. Of the building and not no, you got that live entertainment, Dion. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm pushing the tables. I start out of trying the way. to charge the the people right. around them for for tickets to see the show. Well, Sandra, do you want okay, to know this? Okay, Anyone wait. else want to in on this? Okay. Well, Sandra and I are taking both the opposite sides of each other, trying to hustle. All right, are we doing this? Uh, how are we how are we doing this? Barehanded, or are we doing weapon of choice? What are we doing? Uh, barehanded, I'm assuming. All right, all right, fine, all right, fine. We I'm can do weapons. It, we can do weapons. <laughs> no, let's do it. Let's I do was it. just trying to spare you, so. I mean, I feel like I can't watch. Right, right. I, I was just going to say the <laughs> <laughs> claws are going to be a problem. <laughs> no. My money's yeah. on Cali. Brontes has a magical weapon, <laughs> like. All right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let you guys. I'm gonna. I'm gonna why don't you both of you roll initiative? Um, let me make a new, a new thing. Uh, let me just put. Uh, I have to put Callie in here now, 
and I did not expect to have a PvP fight breakout, and I love it. Well, I did, but not between these two P. I thought it was right. going to be D versus Bronze's. I did not expect it to be these P's versus P's. So let me uh, add you in there. And it, does anybody else going to no, get into this? Uh, or I'm going to look. Uh, I'm, hopefully, I found some popcorn, um, and I'll oh, be yeah. off to the side. Yeah, I'll let you, you know what? For the fun of it, it's a musical. Oh, yeah, yeah. Popcorn. Popcorn. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm just going to get uh, mending prepared. And just like just stand there at the ready for when a bar thing breaks oh, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah, I'm gonna give you inspiration. And that's I'm, a yeah. that's a can trip of mine. Thank you. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna give you inspiration. Oh, we're rolling for that. initiative. That's right. Woo! Natural twenty. <laughs> I'm I ready. A, I I got one too. I got a twenty-four. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, you, you have higher decks than me. Okay. Okay. Which one are you? Which one you have, have a higher decks. Uh, decks? I have a uh, plus four to decks. I'm a dex fighter. Wow. Nice. Okay. I am not. So, I, I'm just gonna. Flip, I'm not gonna let a putting numbers in. Two I'll natural twenties for one. a PVP. Um, <laughs> Let's <love> go. <laughs> this is great. All right. Uh, so now, uh, yeah, Brontes, uh, make your first all right, attack. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. This is unarmed. Shield? No unarmed, shield. No shield. Unarmed strike, I guess. Right. We're doing this unarmed. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Uh, Fifteen to hit. Nope. All right. <laughs> Miss. <laughs> It's all right. We're just warming up. You just got done drinking. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, unarmed. So, uh, nineteen. That 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 hits. That all right. Hits. <laughs> so I'll scratch. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see. That is one d four. Um, one d four plus um. 1d4 plus 4, so 6 damage. Oh. And right. okay. I'm a slasher, so since it's slashing damage, um, you are slowed until the end of ne your next round. That's all right. We're up close. All right. Yeah. We're up close. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to let you all decide when this fight is over. So if you're going to fight to zero, that's your call. Oh, I don't want to. We're just blowing off the team. Yeah, we're just yeah. blowing off the okay. team. But I'm going to roll again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 17 to hit? Uh, 16. 16? Oh, yes. Yeah, so you hit, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, I'm gonna expend a superiority die, nice. uh, and uh, I'm going to do a. Uh, what am I gonna do here? I think I'm gonna do um, uh, a tripping attack on you. Uh, so I'm gonna roll a d8 uh, as well for my damage. Uh, that's gonna be uh, all right. So I got eight uh, plus two from the unarmed strike, so that's ten. Uh, and I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, I don't have any dex. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. <laughs> Let's see. That's an eight. That's an eight? You are tripped. Yep. You are not prone. <laughs> Oof. All right. I am on the ground. Come on. Okay, come you, on, Kat. Are you yielding or are you, are you still fighting? I'm going to still fight. Okay. While everyone's distracted, I'm going to try and pickpocket uh, whoever seems the most into the fight. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll Perfect. say there's like a random tourist. I'll let you roll for like a tourist. I, I don't think Dion would have money on her for you to pickpocket. She's can... actually like, she's more focused on like yes. grabbing yeah. things that are that are coming like towards where the action is and pulling it away. You could probably mm -hmm. find somebody who made like. Okay, I got a four. Go ahead. Fourteen. Okay. Yeah, I'll say you get about. I'll say you get that? about five gold from your work because uh, it's a rich person and you got to pick. Swipe them. So sixteen is the number to beat for me. Sixteen. Okay. okay cool. Yeah. Um. Let me check what else I have. Uh. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I have that. I don't know why I'm like pretending. <laughs> I'm just like really into this. Yeah. <laughs> hell awesome. yeah. No, this is great. Yeah. All right. I love it. So you're not uh, like you just tripped me. You're not like trying to grapple or anything like no, that. No. No. Just a trip. All right. Uh, I'm gonna hop back up then, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm gonna swing back at you. And I just realized I have two attacks now. I oh, I have two attacks too. Oh my god. I forgot to. Nice. We're warming up. We're warming up. The first time right. I've played a We're fighter. Level six, thanks to our generous chat. And our generous chat should definitely donate more money to the cover fight. Yeah, it's my first time playing a fighter too. So. Yeah. yeah, I'm like still getting used to it. I want to play Warlock, so I'm like, I don't know what to do. All right, let's see. First attack. Uh, 15 plus 7, so that's like 20 something. So that hits. And mm -hmm. then second attack will be uh, 10 plus 7, so 17. So both hit. Yeah. Cheapers. Boom. Uh, plus four, so that's five. Plus four, seven. So five plus seven, twelve. So twelve damage. But just like, oh, so stupid. Why does everyone see my life right now? What is happening? 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to uh, first attack. Uh, let's see this. Why, why are my actions going up? Okay, cool. And it's uh, just like little, little like scratch, like just okay. like, you know, little hooks and stuff. Oof. All right, the first one is a critical fail. Uh, complete <laughs> <laughs> miss. But the second one is a 22, so I do get you on the other uh, on the upswing. Uh, and um, I'm going to try expending another superiority. No, I don't know. We're probably going to fight some other stuff going up. I don't know. It's uh, late. I'll just, we're, we're here. You know. who, the, who knows? Uh, I'll, just, I'll just do it. Um, that's just going to be, uh, uh, yeah, just two bludgeoning damage then. Yeah. All right. While mm -hmm. while this fight is happening, whenever I don't have to fix anything, I'm going to use thaumaturgy to make uh, comic book bang pow womp noises, <laughs> like it. the yeah, the right. snicked sound effect from the Wolverine <laughs> comments. Whenever whenever Callie gets a hit, I'm going to do that. Spice <laughs> spice it up a little. How much damage? Oh, we have a kid. We have a we have a kitty appearance. Oh, Aww. kitty! Yay! Oh, this is uh, for the for the listeners and the viewers. This is Faraday, a very very Whoa, big great orange cat. cat. Faraday um, is a good <laughs> Thank you. I'm a big Lost fan, but yeah, if I'm trying to I was going to ask if it was I was going to ask if, I was going to ask if Faraday had a constant. Right. I'm glad that yes. you said it was. You know it's funny. I well, so Faraday is a redhead and so I thought I didn't realize that most redhead cats are boys and I thought I assumed yeah I assumed Faraday was a girl and so she was originally named Charlotte after Lost uh, um, because she was one of my favorite characters and then when I realized that it was a boy I immediately went to Faraday that's right um and so here here right. he is no our usual, our our usual cat guest it. oh nice <laughs> because slightly oh, because of I said I was I just gonna say one of my last RPG characters Sawyer because uh Oh, mm. I used to have. Um, I sorry, I'm not nice. trying to make this like a lost podcast. Um, unless you guys want. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a, a lost viewing party for the finale, and um, and I like hand wrote. I faked a bunch of props, and one of them was Sawyer's letter, nice. and I still have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to yeah. back to reality. <laughs> so then a random polar bear. Right. <laughs> oh. Where did it come from? <laughs> uh, we'll never know. <laughs> How much damage did you do on that first trip? Um, it turns out you're all. Oh, uh, that was um, ten, ten damage, damage uh, with because I expended the superiority die. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. So as you miss on that fr um, that with that round of attacks, I'm gonna be like, "Come on, Brontes, let it out. Be serious. Come on." And then I'm gonna. Attack you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if, I, if Brontes I like can Cali. lose again. Twenty. And yep. uh, 17. That was both hit. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Boy, uh, we got to get this guy a win. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say. I walk over to Bronte and, and I say there's... Oh. How much? Sorry, real, real quick. Uh, eight and six, 14 damage. 14, cool. All right. Yeah. Do you, do you, uh, no, do you I was just going to walk over to Bronte and say, you know, there's no shame in stopping if you want to stop. I could. Is there is there such a thing as bardic disinspiration? <laughs> I could do this all day. <laughs> just cutting. Are you doing cutting words on podcasts? Yeah. Uh, I didn't hear no bell. Yeah. I didn't hear no bell. Uh, and we're gonna do. And at this point, Dion is like, "Can I? Can I just advise, maybe just go to your room and sleep it off and to take a rest? Like a, maybe like rest." Make a short rest, maybe. Hold on, hold on, Dion. I got two twenty threes. I won't expend another superiority die, but uh, I will uh, uh, do two, do, do four damage to you, uh, and then I'll be like, okay, all right. I'm gonna, hold on, one sec. Oh wait, I'm not drunk anymore. Sorry, I forgot. I've been drunk for literally a whole You're year, Dion. You're, yeah, punch drunk. There you go. I have been drunk for a whole year. Uh, anyway, uh, this is uh, this is a very very nice uh, uh, glass you got here. Go 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 go! go. And I throw it on the floor. Oh look, I broke something. Whoops. Mending. Okay. Thank, thank you. That's yes, kind of rude. <laughs> Guess I'll help clean. <laughs> she so was now rude. there's a there's a fixed bottle on the ground in a puddle of liquid. Anyway, so then like yeah, so like so Lipso like helps like mop it up a little bit, and then she's just kind of like, all right, I mean, I'll take you to your room now. But like, hey, if you're if like after an hour that you've had a chance to rest for a short time, um, we are having like a small 
like bachelorette party, bachelor party thing for me outside in the courtyard. So if you want to join that, you can. Yeah. Um, I was going to like, I was going to like get you all involved in hijinks with me, figuring out which one of my dads is my dad. But I feel like you want to punch each other a lot and sleep it off. So I'm going to go do all that while you're resting. And that'll be hilarious and fun and, and antiquey. But, you know, we can meet me at the party later. I would be a part of the dad shenanigans if you want, if you like, if you wanted someone there. No pressure if you don't, but like, I'm like super interested in that type of thing. I also um, heard if you want to come. Sounds fun. Yeah. Um, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you, you like, as players decide friends? at this point because I have, we only have an hour left in the show. Mm -hmm, do you want to do social role play with dads or do you want to go to the party later? What do you, what do you want to do as players? I don't want to split the party at this point. So I will let you as players decide where you want your characters to go next. I'm not going to railroad you into a short rest if you don't think you need one. I, I'll, I'll follow y'all. I'm a, I'm a guest in this house. You guys pick. <laughs> I, well, I'm, Same I, here. as Ruben, would like to le go towards whatever this sapphire is, but I don't know which direction that is. Claw has no idea. Claw could give a crap. Um, so I'm happy to do to do whichever. Callie is unsure okay. why we're here, really, because she was very spaced out for like half of this. <laughs> so she's just mm -hmm. letting off some steam right yeah, now. She's like, Slater's what? trying to find a magic gem. So and thinking yeah, back, is Phoenix appearing to me at all, helping me? I'm getting so caught up in like the social drama and the fun. I haven't really socialized in a while. I tend to, um, most of my socialization tends to be based purely in manipulation. And this is kind of the first time in a while that I've actually like found camaraderie and like enjoying the company that I'm keeping um, for no gain other than pleasure. Um, so I'm, I keep getting distracted from my target. Um, which maybe is growth, but also I would love to have a gem. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you for the raid, Tippy Tippy. Yay, Tippy, Tippy. Tippy. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, um, I think, okay, so does anybody but, I don't think I told anybody but Slater about the gem, did I? I think nope. that only Slater had heard about. I told okay. Lysandros kind yeah. of that there was something. Okay, so. And now that he's revealed to me that he isn't going to, steal it from me and he's totally 100 percent cool with me keeping it um i probably let him know while the fight was okay. going on all right um so yeah i think i think out of character no one but those two know about it unless they decide to share it with the group um and yeah so i'm just gonna like, just for the sake of fun and game i'll say that y'all get a short rest so those who were in the fight, if you want to roll your hit die, you can. Um, and Paul uh, and as... me both have ways of giving you extra benefit. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. So if you expend hit dice to regain hit points, because I'm a chef, you get an extra D8 of hit points. Oh, yeah. That's like my favorite feat from Tasha's. <laughs> or yeah, yeah. So I good. And D. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have an ability during short rest as well. I think it's like a I D6. Do. Lesson. It and might I be a D8 now that you've leveled up. Yeah, that's it's, what it's I'm under Song of Rest. looking for. It'll be under Class Features. It'll be called Song of Rest. Class Features, thank you. You're welcome. Still something right. you've done a whole lot. I think, I think last time we did it, you were actually weren't here, and we just gave them yeah. the of it anyway. But. So 1D10 plus 4. And then you said we get another D8, or we just get 8? You get a D8. Uh, another D8. With Ruben, and if you think... expend a hit die, you get an extra D8. Yeah. Cool beans. Per hit die or just in general? Just in general. Just one. Just in general. And Danielle, what's yours? I think it's um, 1D6. My... Yeah, it's 1D6. Yeah, 1D6 still. Okay, I wasn't sure okay. when the bard one kicks up again at level up. Um, actually, does Song of Rest go up or only Bardic Inspiration? I, I can't remember. I should know. I usually play Bardic Song of Rest goes up at ninth level. Thank you. There you go. $130 away from another song unlock. We are $30 away from Ruben face unlock. So, That's well, right. painting his face because his face right. is already there. But, it's already unlocked. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. just for the fun, I'll say that y'all y'all have your rest and rather than go to the barn for dad shenanigans, the dads are at the party and you can have dad shenanigans at the party. So, Perfect. Yeah. Um, Yay. Ooh. But yeah, you go down. Bad party. You go down to the party, party and there's like, you just walk in after another song has, uh, uh, has done and all the all the bachelors in the bachelor party have like jumped in in like weird costumes and joined the party. It's an it's one big party instead of two separate parties. And yeah, everybody's having a good time. You're dancing, and and yeah, all three of the dads, which you now realize are the three men that you met on the boat coming in. Mm -hmm. Spoiler, sure. Um, and everyone's hanging out. So and uh, 
Don, Dion is there. Dion actually has two friends of her own that are at the party. Uh, one of them, uh, one of them looks like uh, like Christine Baranski, and Perfect. the other one She's looks a lot. Yeah, one looks like Julie Walters uh, or Julie Waters. Oh no, Walters. Walters okay. is right. So yeah. So nice. yeah. Uh, as we go down, I assume it's relatively dark, even if there are like fairy lights and things like that. So I'm going to use, um, what is it called? Eyes of Night, which is one of my new Twilight uh, cleric abilities. And I'll choose three creatures, myself and the two humans, uh, Brontes okay. and D. Uh, you have dark vision out to a range of 300 feet for the next hour. Ooh. Yeah. And... Callie, I'm going to give you my Vigilant Blessing, which is as an action, I give one creature that I touch advantage on the next initiative roll that the creature makes. There's no time limit. Sweet. That's it. That's what I'm doing. Great. All right. Uh, so, yeah, you go out and uh, there is like this kind of like rhythmic dancing happening. It's very like you've seen the way like traditional dancing happens like in the militia. Like it's like it's like very much like it's not just like twerking. It's like there's actually like you know, it, it has like tradition to it. There's like a yeah. vibe that you recognize. It's like very cult. It's like folk, folky dancing and stuff like that. So there's like a lot of like like steps that everyone seems to know, except for everyone but Brontes does not know the steps, and Brontes is like able to cut a rug if he wants to. Can, can I ask a quick question? Cool. Going a little bit back to something we were talking about earlier. Do I also realize that the singing thing is weird? Did you? How, what did you roll for your uh, wisdom save? I don't remember. I don't know if I rolled because we, go ahead and I, roll I'm for me and roll. Go ahead and roll. Ah. I'll, right. I'll let you roll with advantage because you're inscrutable. Okay. I forgot about the inscrutable. Yeah. Uh. I, I, I think I misspoke when I said inscrutable last time and said like people couldn't. I think I think it gives you an advantage on your brain being red and like sure. I'm going to give you advantage on being charmed because that's the thing I said out loud, but like. So you got an 11, and what else? Uh, 11. The 11 was the higher of the two. Okay, yeah, it doesn't seem weird to you at all. Okay. The only one that seems weird to now is Callie. Very weird. We don't do this back in Orozco's. <laughs> it's great. Everyone gets their feelings out, their emotions out. It's lovely. I love it. But do you also break into cutscenes revealing like your innermost moments that like you regret for the rest of your life? Well, I guess I don't really regret it. I'd still do it again if I had the choice, but it's still very like personal. I kind of hope it doesn't happen here, but it might. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Callie, like no one really listens to lyrics anyway. It's more about like the melody and the beats and like how easy is it to dance to. So like don't even worry. No one even heard the lyrics about like all the awful stuff you did. Like, don't even worry about it. Thanks, Slater. <laughs> real, real welcome. Slater is so shady. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even trying to be. That's just how my yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so great. No, it's great. Slater like walks away going like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> You're like, yes. Social skill unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, because it came up in chat, I just want to point out that I wasn't saying I, I, I misspoke. Twerking, of course, is not a non-traditional dance. It's just more popular in, in Akros than it is in Melitus. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Claws shaking his rump shaker. Um, mm -hmm. the whole the, t tapping his hoof and uh, you know, just getting into it. That's all that's all he's doing. Everyone's uh, everyone's kind of so that, yeah you're able to dance around and people are having a good time. Uh, if you if you go speak to anybody else, like what what are you all doing? What's the party? There is there is good wine that is flowing. It is easy to get a glass of it. There's not no one's requiring you because it's an engagement party. Everyone's excited. It's a wedding party. Everyone's right. very into it. Uh, Bronte is sipping uh, some of the nice wine and giving a mean mug to uh, the guy from <laughs> Acros. He like looks at he like doesn't quite understand why you're giving him mean mug, so he's just kinda like just, he's like a, just a dude on vacation. He's like, I don't know what's going on here, so um, Is there is there a problem? Nope, 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 nope. Probably I don't know, is there? Sip. I you're you're the one who is looking at me, I don't know. I look I can look wherever I want. Terrible stuff. I can look wherever I want. I I didn't say you couldn't, I just was curious if there was a problem. I'm fine. <laughs> if there's not a problem, then fine. We're good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're good. 
turn around uh, and like I kind of want to like make a beeline for D and just be like, I hate that guy. <laughs> Why do you hate that guy? Uh, she's like, I'm pretty sure he's a Lek toy. Lek toys can all get thrown to Morgus as far as I'm concerned. Uh, could you pass me some of that wine? And, you know, <laughs> this is a party. Let's try to just chill and hang out. Let go of everything that's happened to you in the past two hours or a year or before you left here and just have fun at this party with everyone who knows you. And I am sure we'll like you again soon. Yeah. For those who are not familiar with the Theros setting, I just want to put like Lek toys are like the warrior class of of Ekros. So there it's think about like this think of like Leonidas and the Spartans, right? Like, people who went off to fight. No, that's who that is. Sorry. I feel like I, I realized I didn't explain that earlier when you asked it, so I should probably make that clear at this point for people who don't know. Yeah, Thank you're you. right. You're right. Maybe I should go cook up some shenanigans with Slater. That, that that'd be a good way to do it. Yeah. And he kind I, of wait, but I, I didn't that. that's not what I said. Okay. <laughs> Hey, Brontis, how's it going? Want to get up to see uh, you? Yeah, so I just found, so here's here's the thing. Uh, Sky, who's who my girl's marrying? Yeah. You know, not like my girl, but like my girl. Uh -huh. She's like, she's yeah. one of my all-time best friends. A she's girl. like one of my all-time best friends. Uh, yeah. Even though her mom's kind of a Love jerk. Her. But anyway, uh, did you know that he sells illegal weapons on the down low? What? He sells That's illegal so cool. weapons on the down low. No, it's not cool. I love, oh, <laughs> I hate. That. I know. I hate it. It's so bad. I think. Gross. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be unfortunate if some people around here, found, if some people found out about that? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Who should I tell first? Who's the biggest gossip here? One of the dads? Should I tell all of the dads? <laughs> Maybe. And then I'm, also, I'm go, and then also tell Dion. I'm gonna go tell Dion and the. I'm gonna tell everyone who started the D, whether they are Dion or the three dads. Yeah, let's do that. And D, you're gonna tell D as well. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go tell D last. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's Dion, D. dads, and D. Yeah. In that order. <laughs> Forever D. Yes. <laughs> okay. In what order are you gonna do this? this is I'm gonna start with the dads, but first I'm gonna do a perception check because I'm trying to figure out. Like I'm, I really want to figure out this gem situation, but I also want to know who's the real dad. So I'm going to do a perception <laughs> check to see if I get any insight as to who the real father is. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> fortunately, I have a slightly good thing to add to this, but not great. One sec. Oh, wait. What am I adding? Am I doing insight? Uh, you you want perception. You want perception. Perception. <laughs> you don't have like, a specific thing you're looking for. You're kind of looking for like, a vague idea of a few things. So I'm just going to yeah. let you roll. And I'll tell you what you pick up while you're like reading the room. Well, my perception on who the dad would be is just genetic, like who looks the most like they could be the dad who has the most mannerisms. So, Keep in mind, I have keen of my or keen mind, so yeah. I'm pretty good at like picture okay. perfect. Like, see if Pierce Brosnan looks like Amanda Seyfried. <laughs> Here's my question for you: Are you specifically honing in on who you think the dad is, or are you looking for information about the gym? That's why I'm asking you which one you're gonna uh. look at. Um, I am looking more about the gym. Okay. So if you're like reading the room, yeah. I'll, I'll include what you're saying about the dad's insight into your perception check, but it's going to be a general perception check. Okay, I I only got an eight. I've been well, drinking mind, a lot have, at the party. I have advantage. Keep in mind, you do have inspiration because I gave you inspiration earlier, so you can roll advantage on this if you want to. Great, I will. Okay, uh, I got 22 this time. Okay, nice. great. Nice. Uh, for 22, um, if you had to pick one of the dads that looks the most like Celipso, it probably would be Pierce the Cetestan adventurer. Um, <laughs> but you don't necessarily, you kind of go like, I can see why they thought that was his dad, but you're like, it doesn't awesome. Like, mm. you don't really know. Like, they never, like, you never really get a definitive answer on who the dad is, maybe, per yeah. se. But what you do mm -hmm. notice at that 22 is that not only is the dance very traditional and, like, following a pattern, it looks like ritualistic dancing. And it looks like everyone is dancing specifically in a pattern around a kind of like, a, like a mosaic on the ground in the middle that when you look at it more with your high roll you just had, I'm gonna give this to you. It, maybe it's some sort of rune. Maybe it's some sort of magical image and everyone is dancing around it. 
and possibly casting like a group spell or doing some sort of ritual. And that is what you're picking up on now. Interesting. Well, I'm a, a woman of my word, so I do tell uh, Pierce that um that that there's been some shady stuff going on with Sky and the weapons. Um, I don't know how much he is listening to me, but I do okay. tell him. And on, and on the way, I go towards the middle of the mosaic pattern to investigate um, if if this looks like it could be a gem or what the deal is with this mosaic. Okay, um, when, you, okay when you go over the pattern, you kind of feel like I'm gonna have you make make a wisdom saving throw for me before you get close to the pattern. Mm, I got a three. <laughs> okay, you just instinctually like you go up to it, but you just feel instinctually like I don't want to cross over that, and you kind of just like walk around mm. and give it a wide berth. Uh, okay. When you go up to Pierce Fontes um, and you tell him about the arms dealing, um, he just kind of goes, "Well, I, I suppose everyone's got to make a living uh, somehow, so." Uh, that's quite a quite a lucrative opportunity, I suppose. But I'm from uh, I'm, fr I'm I'm not doing it. I was doing a great Pierce Brosnan earlier. Um, <laughs> very, 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 very Remington Steel. Um, I'm not really from this town, and I, I, I of course I'm from Satessa, and I I care more about the laws of Satessa than I do about the laws of of Melitus on some random vacation island. So I'm happy, but uh, it's not my. Thank you for the information. Narc, but it's not something that I really know. <laughs> 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 I enjoy a party. Um, I'm oblivious uh, to the insult that I've just been given, yeah. and I see this as an opportunity for a fair trade, and I say, well, now that I've given you this amazing intel, how about you help me understand what's going on with that mosaic in the middle of the room and your dance surrounding it? Make a persuasion check for me. That is a twenty-two. Okay. He's like, well, you know, I'm not. I'm, again, I'm not. I'm not from here, so I don't really know what the local rituals are. But I have heard that there is a something here called the the Seas Melody, and it's bound to the island. And I have heard that if it ever leaves the island, then Thassa herself, the goddess of the sea, will consume the island with her waters. I don't know if that's true. I've heard speculation about that, but that's what I've heard. So. And being consumed by waters, would that be good or bad? How would you feel if someone described you as being consumed by water? I don't really know. I just like try to always have fun. And I love to swim. Well, you'll be doing a lot of swimming. And this is kind of like an mass, island. Yeah, if the landmass is consumed by water, you'll do a lot of swimming. So you actually might quite enjoy it. Cool. I'm talking about a Well, flood. thank you. Yeah. What? I'm talking about like the island sinking into the ocean and and facets taking it, reclaiming it. That's what I've not unlike. And then like you, Al, I don't know. There's there's there was a land called uh, Atlantan, which was yeah. a town that was swallowed by the ocean. <laughs> so you're like not unlike the ruins of Atlantan, that sort of. I I bet you can bet what it's based on. Um, but yeah, he's like it would be like yeah. I think I think it would be quite <laughs> similar to that. So, um, oh, I found the voice again. I think it'd be quite similar. And now he's done. So that voice came back. <laughs> Uh, and then you, I think, <laughs> I think, so I think after you see him, then like, yeah, next, the next up is uh, Colinus, the uh, Miletian politician. Do you ask any questions about, uh, about uh, Celipso of him while you're still talking to him before you leave him completely? Before I go, speaking of floods, do you, <laughs> I'm not going to continue with that, but I make a wink. <laughs> I wink a little bit. I'm not going to uh, make you re-roll your persuasion so. because your, your, your persuasion was so high. I'm going to let you just keep what you had. Um, what about, what about Salipso? She seems like a nice girl. How nice and how bad. Sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll, okay. I'll see okay. you later. <laughs> I gathered what I need to know and I yep. walk away. <laughs> I, I don't I don't I say, why don't you have a drink on me? And he says, they're free. And I say, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um and then yeah, the next thing you come along to is yeah. uh Colinus and uh he says he's he's like, Oh, hello. Um what, what? and he's very like like I think I'm doing more Hugh Grant than Colin Firth, or whatever. He's like, oh, um, hello. Are you having a good time? Hi. The best time. 
I was just wondering, what is the deal with that cool um, mosaic? Can I like go and like grab the thing that's in the center of the floor? Oh, I've never been to a wedding party before, like an engagement party, and I'm not sure. Like, is that custom? Is it like throwing the bouquet over the, you know, you know what I mean? Oh, like, I, am I supposed to grab the gem? Oh, I hope not. I, I would hope you wouldn't take the gem. I don't know where the the seas melody is, but I have heard, as a, as a Malaysian politician that I am, I, I have heard that um, if if that was taken, then then Karanos would would no longer be appeased, and he would destroy yeah, the island. Yeah, yeah, it everyone drowns. I no, no, a storm. It. I get storm it. Would come and, and destroy the. I don't know what you're talking about drowning. He's not the god. Of yes, I get it. We all die, <laughs> but also, like, have you ever had a nice ring that you really love? Um, you're a man. Have you ever? <laughs> Have you ever had like a really cool beer <laughs> or like a football? Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not really a football. I'm not really a I'm football saying? fan. Um, I, have you, I'm a fan of footballers, if you know what I mean. Okay, not... have you have you fucked Salipso or what? <laughs> uh, no. Why would I? Why would I? First of all, she's a child to me, and I'm 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 like twice her age. And right, right, and, right. And I also right, right, right. I, I'm drunk. I don't tend to. Have you fucked her mom or not? Oh, um, <laughs> well, her mother and I. We almost did, but I'm actually not of that persuasion. If you know what I mean, I actually tend to. Oh, okay. To, I'm more interested in your it. friend that you came with. It. If you know what I mean. Which I was, friend? I, the, the loser, the fighter. I mean, the I'm the loser. Loser. <laughs> 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 you say the yeah. loser, Riley. Oh, I love the type so much. You caught me on it. I was hoping it would go go it by on her. Did not. Uh, I myself left. Uh, I'm a big fan of a, of a strapping. Yeah. Big fan of a strapping. Oh, a shade man. fan. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, just so you know, he's a winner in my eyes, and you should go hang out with him. He's like really cool, and like he's like really like he's he's cool. Just give him a chance. I want to give Kyle another inspiration point, only for absentmindedly <laughs> and for for invoking Velma Sweet all of a sudden. In yeah, this game. Um, inside joke. You for the, know I did. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think Kyle knew what he was doing. So, uh, yeah, I think maybe, yeah, Colinus uh, goes over and maybe talks to Frontes. And Kyle, you can decide in your head how that plays out. I will. What your Colin Firth feelings right. are. Um, and then, yeah, and then you move on to uh, to Stellanikas, the Acroan general. I just want you to know that if you heard any rumors that I've been asking people if they – had relations with a child that I that was a mistake and that's not what I meant and I just got the names wrong so please don't come at me that was a mistake mm -hmm. do you want um, to replay your your conversation with Pierce uh Pierce Defentis in a moment too oh, yes, I, I was do. wondering that's why I was like why is she okay now I get it all right well because I He's take like, notes um, and I forgot to put the the name down of the mom mm -hmm. so I just circled Fair. to lips Dion, Oops, I apologize I would never like ask Donna, that but it was Dion. Um, yeah. yeah I would um, never Never in my life would I ask that question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, um, I basically am trying to get a sense of the uh, the closeness that he has. Um, okay. And well, to first of all, he that. also when you ask him about the mosaic in the thing, mm -hmm. he says basically the same thing that everybody else said, except for he says, uh, "I have heard that if the island, if the, the the gem is stolen, that it turns out this island is a dormant volcano, and if the gem is taken, okay. then Perforos will need to be sated, and he will erupt the island if the gem is taken." So you've heard three different rumors about what will yeah. happen to the island if the gym is removed from it. Um, and then he says to you, well, I, I did visit the island uh, about 20 years ago, and I did have an affair with a young woman named Lily, but I don't think I had any relations with Dion. Um, Lily! He, like, starts doing math on his, like, he's, like, na like he's, like, thinking about people in his head, and he's, like, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe, I don't know. It's been a, I, I'm a general, I conquest, so. Hmm. <laughs> Nice. Interesting. So in addition to like the world going up into a volcano and all these bad things happening, there's no real downside to me taking this gem, right? I mean, like just in addition like, to, like the canyon, like the entire island it's too. called compartmentalization. Um, it's called, it's called putting things in a box. Now, if I put that gem in a box labeled my stuff, That'd be fine. I, I, That'd be I, fine, I just, you have a moral right? compass that I don't think that I would would ascribe to. So I don't think I can give you the advice that you're looking for. 
I see. I see. Dion is so pretty, right? Yes. Um, yes, very much so. Like, do you want me to like set you guys up in some way or um, been there? I mean, I I can probably do this myself. I'm very, I'm very swathy. So interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very swathy. <laughs> Okay, bye. Thank you. Uh, okay, very nice to meet you. Um, More people just need to go around declaring themselves pretty swarthy. Yeah, yeah. He's actually not that swarthy. And, and oh, know, by the way, out. I have sex. Like, is like of all the of all the swarthy that guy is people very here, powerful. I think, Pierce, I, I think Pierce Afontes is probably the most swarthy of the group here. But yeah, um, <laughs> I think I meant to say suave, and I said swarthy, and just ran. We're gonna roll up it. It's happening. Hey, yeah, I ran with okay. worse things. <laughs> Okay. Slater, do you give any of that information to Lysandros or anybody else in the party, what you've learned about the rumors on the island? Yeah, I immediately go to Lysandros just because uh, I I have a bond with Lysandros and I let him know, like, hey, so here's everything I learned. Um, I might have made some bad reputations because I said some wrong things earlier, but here's the deal with the gem. And honestly, I don't know what that means. It seems like there are a lot of, like, gods involved i don't really understand it's weird like, that they've got like a different like, story for each of them as to what's gonna happen if it goes away i mean to me it makes it seem like the whole thing's something of a farce or something like that unless all the gods are working together to punish this island if they lose a a you know single gym which i've never seen the gods work together on anything so a couple of things are happening right, now. Right. Ruben, I've been say the claws passive perception. You have started to also notice the ritualized dancing, and that's something okay. that's like kind of hitting your attention. And I also, also I also real I also wanted to cast fairy fire on the dance floor so that everybody glows purple. Sorry, I keep okay. going. You I'll let you do that. Um on the floor itself, not on a particular person. No, on the people. Twenty foot radius, everybody okay. like is an outline of a of a Vegas show for a okay. second. What is your? Oh, I'll make my room more. Light what is your? Nice. Right. What is your my... spell save DC for that? Uh, for fairy fires, fourteen deck save. Okay. And I will choose to fail my own deck deck save so that I'm outlined okay. in purple. That's fine. I just wanted to see where's the saving throw on that. Um... Am I still hairless? Why is this not working? Uh, you no. Know, uh, twenty four hours has passed. So you're oh, starting to grow back. Okay, great. It's not it's yeah. not back, but it's like growing back. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm in the wrong window. Hey, your hair looks nice, hey, Callie. Why do my rolls not well, thank you. Okay. It's a it's a new coat actually. So I've been like infusing it with oils and everything to really make sure it grows out nice and uh, shiny and everything. It's really soft. Okay, Claw. Paul, Paul what you notice is that most of the dancers take on the spell. But the general, who like would be aware of a spell being cast, okay. and also Eon and her two friends, who look like Christine Van Ansky and Julie Waters, also oh, resist okay. that spell, and they are no, also not party not people. Okay, it. that's fine. And I'll just keep dancing. So I've noticed some weird behavior, yes? Yes. And you also notice what I was going to say with your passive perception. And everybody else, who have, everybody who wants to be perceiving the party can go ahead and make a perception check for me right now. And just let me know if you beat a 15. I did. Okay. Basically, anybody who beats a 15, just because we're getting, it's already 1030. Anyone who beats a 15, you notice that as Slater is asking questions and like taking a look at the dance floor and everyone's noticing it, that Dion, Christia, and Jultera, the three women are starting to clue in that you're asking questions and, and like you can you can tell that they're starting to watch you as you oh. move, all of you as you move around the room and looking suspicious all right Got a 19. Case, gonna... okay so yeah all of anyone who anyone over 15 i would like that. to dance over off the dance floor prance trot over towards the conspiring satyrs hopefully catching Bronte's D and Callie's attention as well, and like trying to get everybody into a like a one of the high tops. I assume there's like a high top table um, or or something somewhere we can gather together away from the from the dancing. Be like, so we are being looked at weirdly now. What is happening? Uh, Bronte's is uh, 
at, right before he notices you, he is saying to, uh, um, I do not recall his name, uh, but the politician uh, from it, Melitus. It, uh, it is uh, it is Colinas. Colinas. Yeah. Uh, that is an absolutely lovely name. Let me tell you. Do you know what I love more than anything? Justice. And do you know what happens? Do you know what's going on right here? Can you believe that the man who is marrying this lovely lady, uh, I'm She's supposed to be my best friend, and I keep blanking on her name. It starts with an S. Sissa. Uh, Salipso. Cilip- Cilip- uh, can you believe that the man marrying Salipso is selling illegal weapons on the black market? I mean. Oh, that's. That is quite disturbing. I shall it look is, into that. It is quite disturbing. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to find some evidence to prove that, but I, I will look into there it. I have multiple witnesses in my party that have seen it and have offered, uh, and have, they, they did not partake, but they were offered. <laughs> okay. I believe that the dynamo is a hotbed of criminal activity and it should be investigated. Oh, well, I will I will definitely when I get back from my vacation, I will look into that. I will send a a garrison over to take a look and find out. Can't Thank you, you do it sooner know. though? Can't you just do it a little bit? So- oh shoot. Oh sorry. Brontes, uh, just no, I mean, I can't figure that out. I have to, I have the to dynamo. All right, give me give me what I I, I there, there's a centaur that is uh, a, 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 trying to catch my attention. I'll be right back. Uh, and I saunter over uh, spilling wine on my chain shirt. Oh, crud. Oh, it's going to be hard to get that out. Okay. Mm-hmm. Thaumaturgy. He feels like his, like, his, like his little bit of like his like vibe of like kind of flirting with you is now like weirded out because yeah, you're telling him. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> So great, we are we are we are all here now. Hello, hello, hi everybody. Um, hi. So I am being looked at weirdly, and it is not for the usual reasons. Um, has anyone else noticed? Yeah, I've I've been a little caught up in trying to discover what's going on with this this gym thing. I mean, nothing. Gym thing. Oh no, hey, it's, it's an inside joke. Oh <laughs> well, everyone looks at me weird because literally everyone on this island hates me. Hey, <laughs> hold on. I think that that is harsh, and you can change the way that people look at you, you know, by your actions and your deeds. Who cares if they hate you? My entire pride hates me. I'm still living my life to the fullest. They can hate me all they want. I'm me, and I can still live my life. Who cares what they think? This is so true. This is exactly why I just want to ruin the wedding. Look, Bronte, buddy, I get where you're coming <laughs> from here, Okay. And it's really funny to see you, like, you know, spread this information around and try and make all this stuff happen. But if you want to try and, like, prepare your re- repair your relationship, you know, with your family and your island, you maybe shouldn't just antagonize everybody all the time. Sky was a jerk. Sky was a jerk. Sure. But, I mean, we're all jerks sometimes, right? Yeah. What? And, and perhaps um, that is water under the I'm bridge. Evil. <laughs> it's also true. Yeah, it's all mm. puke in a wine bucket from here, buddy. Mm. I mean, the guy ended up not charging us for all that wine because we brought him the business in. And that was a pretty cool move. I mean, if he had tried, I would have charmed him and we would have run. But you know, what I'm saying <laughs> is maybe there's more room for forgiveness on this island than you think. No, also, I still kind of want to ruin his wedding. What about your friend? Does does he make her happy? I think there's something off with my friend. Oh. Yeah, actually, I can back that one up. I mean, there's something off with the whole island, but that's a whole nother thing. No, there's nothing wrong with the island, but I think there's something off with her because that guy is trash, and she should know that that guy is trash. Do you think there is something magically wrong with her or just something wrong in general? I just think she has really bad taste in men. She kind of always has... Okay, well, magic no. can't fix that. I've tried. Sometimes you just got to let people make their own mistakes. And sometimes you have to help your friends find a gem called the C Melody. <laughs> oh, we, we are. So that is not a funny joke. Yeah, that is a that thing. Are, that our inspiration back. That's the one that you already spent. You get to have one back. That is a thing Thank we are. You. That is a thing we are looking for. We want ah. to find whatever that is. You know what? I have gained a lot of trust in all of us, and I'd like us to do this together under the condition that I get to keep it 
completely by myself. Oh, well, that seems fine to me. Does anyone else have a thing they want to? What are we say doing? As a, I think we're. Well, it seems either. like there's this gem that's gonna. Maybe it's gonna help everybody like come out of the spell, and and honestly, that's what I'm the most interested in about the gem, is Could for be. me to take it and rid this town of this plague that the gem is causing. There's no plague so, here, other than Sky, other than Dynamo. That's the plague. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as as Slater starts saying we're going to rid this town of the gym, I just rolled three perception checks, uh -oh. and one of them was a natural 20. Ooh. And so <laughs> suddenly, you, when you say we're going to take this gym and, like, the C melody, suddenly you see that that partly curious look that Dion had is now laser focused on Slater, <laughs> whose back is to Dion. The rest of you see it. You don't even need to make a perception check because it is, like, not hidden at all and mm -hmm. she is now making her way towards you and she has her two friends flanking her like a trio and they mean business. what is it called hey slater I it all. would 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 people be protective of this gym thing that you're talking about oh yeah definitely okay. should not let anyone know excuse me okay I, I, excuse I, I, me mm -hmm. excuse me uh hi sorry to interrupt you what did you just say about the c melody Ooh. I said that compared to the D, E, F, G melody, the C is my favorite of songs. Have you noticed that there's a lot of music on this island? I love it. Yes, music is what we've been talking about the whole time. Music is great. Just yes, music over here. C. La, 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 la. Claw is going to try to... Claw is going to try to like move to the into a shadow or out of the way so that he can cast a spell that has verbal, somatic, and material components called okay, Locate stealth. Object. Okay. Okay, make a stealth check for me. Actually, you know what? We're at 1037, so I'll say you pass it. You're mm -hmm. able to cast that spell. Um, what What are you looking for? Describe or name an object that is familiar to you. I named the C's melody. I said so what happened in the C's melody? What? What happens when you cast that spell? Uh, you sense the direction of the object's location as long as the object is is within a thousand feet of you. If the object is in motion, I know the direction of its motion. The spell can locate okay. a specific object known to you as long as you have seen it up close, or uh, it locates the nearest object of a particular kind, such as the kind of apparel, jewelry, furniture, tool, or weapon. So, uh, okay. and it's not to brag. Came. But I also always know where North is because of my keen mind. So. Always nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm looking, looking for a large gem named the Seas Melody is what I know. Well, you do not find a gem. Okay. But what you do find, and I'm going to let you have this because it's not technically in that description, but I'm going to say it anyway. You are immediately drawn to Silipso, mm. who is dancing yeah. on the dance floor. So you get the sense that it is moving because it is currently dancing. And it's then you necklace. realize that she is dancing in the center of that. Uh -huh. Do Now, I think it's her or it's something she's wearing. Um, I don't think you get strong enough of a sense of that, but you don't think that you don't get the idea that she's wearing a necklace or anything. So she just looks like a young okay. girl dancing in the middle. I also did explain to everybody how there was like this mosaic in the middle of the room um, that everyone was kind of dancing around ritualistically. So right. we probably all have the idea that maybe it's in the center of the room in the mosaic. Maybe. Okay. I'm going to keep this and to myself while these that, three ladies are angry. Yeah. Well, that's, that's fun because they are now very angry. And in fact, one of them uh, raises her hand and you can tell that she is beginning to cast a spell Ooh. and I want everyone to roll initiative. Okay. Oh, Ooh. So what is that Callie bonus? Had you advantage. Get? Advantage. Damn it. Well, Bronte, this looks like we get to crash this wedding after all. Yep. <laughs> I got an eleven. Uh, do, do we have any rerolls, by the way? Later. Uh not in this game, no, no rerolls. Yeah, let me know when you want my number. Okay, one second. I'm just gonna put the put them in there. All right, and let me put you and I'm I'm gonna Where did my people go? Where my people at? Yeah, for real. Um, <laughs> hold on, let me just go ahead and do this real quick. Let's see 
we are getting close to the end and it's late for a lot of people already so i don't want to go too late um i mean i would go for the rest of the night just so it's <laughs> clear you. <laughs> this is extremely fun yeah. if i can remove myself from the game momentarily this is such a fun game yeah riley you're you very good really great. it was really it fun. It's it's like legit most of our games it's true I honestly think it's Riley singing. It like really elevates the entire Next level. game. It like makes it super fun. Mm -hmm. All right, so start Riley off, is... D, what is your initiative? Mine is 13. Okay, all right. Thank you everybody for my singing compliments. I appreciate it. And I wanna say that all of our, both of our guests, you're blending into yes. this so well. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Slater, Slater, what's your initiative? 13. 13, okay. Uh, Danielle, what's your dexterity? Oh, my dexterity? is um 11. okay what's yours Allie? uh my modification modifier just in total just, what's your what's your score it's fine 16. okay so so slater will go before d okay uh claw nine okay nine all right um and then callie i got an 11. what does inspiration do again you can roll one roll with advantage okay never mind but i already had it on this okay. so we're good yeah Okay, mm. and then uh, Brontes? 11. 11, okay, what's your dex? Hey, Brontes, uh, got it. We already, yeah. we already know that Brontes goes first. Okay, sorry, and then Los Angeles. <laughs> I got an 18. There we go. I see how it is. We're just going to be tying all night, are we? Yeah, dex fighter. <laughs> dex fighter versus strength fighter. That's yeah. always the eternal struggle. <laughs> why my standards are not showing up on my chart? Hang on, sorry. Hey, everybody, thank you for the raid. <gasps> yeah. Oh, hey. Hello, Hello wow. Adam Gandalf. For some Ooh. reason, I can't get Lysandros to show up on this chart. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, I, I I accidentally closed my chart earlier when I didn't mean to, and so now I have to like. Oh no! I'm unchartable. Like, rebuild it. My my turn order. Yeah. Inscrutable. I'm just gonna put and a random. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm just gonna put a random character and see if that'll do it, and then I'll just make that. Can I quickly grab a water or? Yeah, yeah. That... Anyone needs to grab okay, a water? Right we'll, like, yeah, we'll you have... first anyway. So you have time. Plenty of time. Cool. Now I can add him. Great. There he is. Cool. All right. And what was what was yours again? Now it all raced again. Um, real quickly. So Brontes is eleven. Kelly was eleven. Uh, Lysander was was twenty one. You said. Uh, I was eighteen. You were eighteen. Okay. Claw was nine. And then Claw was nine. nine. Uh, Slater was um, thirteen point something, and then D was after her with another okay. thirteen. Cool. 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 All right. Perfect. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, let me just go ahead and roll for the night. The, the here. Uh, those of you who are raiding, if you're just joining us, we are raising money for the Trevor Project tonight. So uh, if you want to put some money in for a good cause, uh, we'll, if we hit a certain amount, we'll do songs. And uh, <laughs> that's right. We don't know how much we have. We're raiding you either way, but we don't. Yeah, we don't know how much we have. We are another one hundred and thirty. Yeah, eight, 130, uh, 130 for Strong and another 30 for Claw to paint his face some more. That's right. So there we are. And now we are at the top of the combat order. It's actually going to be uh, the, it's going to be Dion's attack first. Uh oh. And you suddenly like see, like, you realize that she is some sort of like sorceress, some sort of witch, uh -oh. some sort of hag, oh, perhaps. No. Um, and then she is going to. Um, cast a spell. Is he on the mom? Um, yes. Okay, yeah. great, great. Yeah. Mommy All dearest. Right. And the first thing she's going to do is actually cast um, magic missile Ooh. on um, on oh, actually Allie ran away, so I'm going to hold on. I was going to have her attack um, I'm going to have her attack Brontes because he was like talking trash about Sky sure. and the island and stuff like that. So she's going to attack him because why not? Um, so let me just roll that. And she's gonna roll three of those. Okay, so Brontes, you're gonna take you're gonna take nine points of force damage from the magic missile. Okay. All right, ah! and then that's gonna be her turn. Now it's Lysandros' turn. Uh, so Lysandros is gonna go ah! and uh, turn to Slater real quick and go, "Hey, did you figure out which one you think is the real dad?" Gosh, you know, I was really getting the vibe that maybe it was. Uh... Pierce Fontes? I don't know. I kind of screwed up our conversation. Uh, but really quick, Mythkeeper, uh, can I 
what did I gather from my investigation of who the dad might be? Because I feel like I would have um, already done it. You actually get the sense that none of them are the dad. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, no. So, um, but, you know, always afraid to not have my own answer, I say, uh, oh, Pisifonte is, I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name, definitely him. All right, it'll have to do. And I want to try and, like, dive into the crowd and in the midst of it, uh, cast disguise self and make myself look like Pierce Fontes. Okay. And then I want to pop like and be like, wait, uh, I, I don't know. I do a, a better imitation of his voice than that. Or at least I try to. I, mean, <laughs> I don't, so you know, why should you? <laughs> it's like, we don't need violence here. This is uh, supposed to be a joyous occasion. <laughs> and I'll try and go up and like persuade her to stop attacking. <laughs> Okay, um, make a persuasion check. <laughs> a very high DC. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, yeah, with advantage, you look like someone she does care about, but make a high. Okay. And if it's possible, I would definitely be like feeding into the drama of just like, oh, absolutely. We talked earlier. This is similar to the conversation we were having. Oh. It is a, uh, well, it's a 15, and then I have a plus nine, so it's Ooh. 20. It's what? A four. Okay. Um, she is distracted by you for a moment. She has not given up fighting, but at that role, at that level, I'll say that you have distracted. You, I'll say that essentially you did the help action to distract her. So, so any attacks on her will have disadvantage until the start of your next turn. Nice. I'll take it. That's all I wanted. A moment of of well, the next attack. On her. Sure. I'll distract us at every attack, but yeah. We'll have advantage. The next attack on her will have advantage. Yeah. Sweet. Until sort of, yeah. Hmm. All right, uh, now we get to D. And D, as you begin to fight, you feel, you hear the voice in your head of Perforos, your god, <gasps> who is a god of the forge, the god of, of, of battle, of, of, of forging and storytelling and song, and who often gives you powers and stuff based on, like, how well you perform. And he also talks to you uh, and the way he typically does, you, you usually like he's kind of like giving you a gift, like a sword, or kind of like asking you to tell him what's going on. And you hear him go, you just kind of hear him go, hey, kiddo, seems like you're in a bit of a scrape, huh? Yeah, we just came here for vacation. How come everywhere we go, it turns out to be like weird fighting and hacking and slashing? Well, you know why? Because you're the arena queen. And he goes... You can slash, you can <laughs> knife, having the fight of your life. Oh, see that girl, watch that D, dig in the arena queen. You can slash. Yeah. So, I definitely uh, want is, the whole is, version. Yeah. And now you, you have... Um, I'll give you advantage on your attack that isn't that's that's the Lysandros like, will carry on to the next attack and you get advantage on this attack because you're feeling you're basically here's what I'm gonna do instead of giving you advantage, I'm gonna give you a bardic inspiration dice that you can use because oh. you've become inspired by your god. Hey, there you go. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so now I attack, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slash with my sword. Because I like slashing now. And I rolled an eight, but I also get two attacks. So Yeah. It was I actually realized I, I told uh, Slater to go first, there... but I'm already gonna have you go sorry to play the song out. So of course. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I rolled an eight. Well, you also have uh, you can either roll your damage. inspiration dice or if you rolled an eight. You missed, but I'm gonna let you. If you want to roll your D8 for, uh, to see if you make it. If you want to use your inspiration, if you want to use your bardic inspiration, you can. Um, it's I'm gonna use my bardic inspiration. Yeah. Eight on top of your attack. Okay. <laughs> Two. Okay, so that's that's only gonna be an eleven or a ten, so it doesn't hit, unfortunately. But you have a second attack, so go ahead and make that second attack. Okay. Come on, baby. Let's ruin this wedding. Oh, well, this wedding's ruined. <laughs> <laughs> 24. Woo! 
Yeah. All right, and the damage is nine. Ooh, so she takes it. Uh, which one are you attacking? You're attacking Dion, or are you attacking one of the one of the other ones? I'm attacking Dion. Okay, so yeah, she takes that that damage, kind of like rolls back, and she's like, Argh! she like starts cursing a little bit, and she's like, help! And then uh, that's gonna be your turn. <clears throat> um, did you? Do, oh, actually, you have bonus actions. Do you want to use your bonus action? Um, I want to actually cast Bardic Inspiration. I should still have some left. All right. Um, and so for my Bardic Inspiration, D has been on a roller coaster of emotions. She's not usually confronted with the people who um, have been forced to lose to her without knowing it. And so D turns to Brontes and says, you know, you can just leave behind everything that happened in the arena. You're here now. We're saving your best friend. When, isn't this the best time for you to be a, just a total, complete friggin' badass and wipe all of this out? Because I think that you can do that today. And I believe in me and my ability to help you do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Brontes, you got Bardic Inspiration, so you have a D8 that you can add to one of your either attack or, or okay. ability checks in the next 10 minutes. Um, all right, that is your turn. Now it is Slater's turn. And Danielle, if you don't already have inspiration, I'm giving you inspiration. Believe in the me that believes in you. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, uh, Dion is who I'm definitely coming after. And um, you know what? I'm going to go right in the heart. And okay. I'm going to use my rapier. And I'm going to do a little slashing uh, slashing attack here. OK, and you do a sneak attack because like most of your, your allies are engaged with her, so. Great. Um, so I rolled an 11 plus 5. So 16. Uh, that just misses. Ah, OK, Oof. well, I, uh, I'm going to use my inspiration. OK. 18. That hits. Uh, so to go ahead and roll and your And then uh, that is going to be. So let me find my one d eight. Four. So uh, seven, and then I do the sneak attack as well. So one second. Yeah. So three d six. Five. Four. Six. Ten, so wow. seven plus fifteen. The captions just read my my yes 3D6 and it said yes sir. <laughs> uh, we'll yes yeah. sir. My but favorite yeah, kind of thing. Yes sir. 3D6. Three dimensions of pleasure. Wow. <laughs> Did it again. Well, um, yeah. So okay. 22 damage. Wow. Okay. Oh, she took that. She's not happy about that at all. She's, she's very angry about that. Um, okay. That is uh, that is going to be your turn. Um, and then we go on to All Callie. Right. Callie, it's your turn. Uh, Callie's going to, like, because they're at a party, she, like, tried to look nice, so she's going to, like, style, pull the sword out from behind her, kind of bring it out, and be like, all right. Oh, is it Wonder Woman style? Oh, know, yeah. Like, pull, like, totally. Like, down, yep. and then you pull the sword out from behind the ground? I used cool. to have the Wonder Woman nice. crown, so now, now I got to do something to mm -hmm. curb him back to her. All right, so. I just I don't, you don't have I don't your, your anymore. It's anymore. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and nice. I'm gonna. Is there anyone else in this fight on the their side that's with Dion, or is it just Dion? There are. There's Dion and two other. There's one that looks like Christine. Marie, Got it. And okay. One that looks like Julie um, well, I'm gonna engage with Dion since she seems to be like the, the sorcerer of the group, and sorcerers are a pain in my butt. So um, I'm gonna attack her. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead and make your attack. All right. So I'm gonna swing and smash. Um, doot, doot, doot. This dice has been good to me. Um, so on the first one, I got a 14. Um, do you want me to do my attacks at the same time? How do we want to do this now that I have two attacks? Uh, just for, for tonight, for speed, because we're getting close to the end, I'll say just go ahead and do them both now. So one, the 14. No, no, sorry. Um, I, I got 17 plus 7, so that's 24. Sorry. Yeah. yeah that, that does <laughs> it. 24 does it. Yeah. A, a key for Sutherland always And uh, the other much. one was a 20, so... Not a natural 20. Yeah. Okay, um, both those hit. Okay. Yeah. Dirty 20. Yay. 
Um, all right, so. Are you using your slasher technique on them? Of course. Okay, so she is now slashed. Uh, I get to reroll my twos and ones. So on the first one, I do a six plus four, so 10 damage. And then on the second attack, um, I do 11 plus four, so 15, which a uh, total is 25 damage. 25 slashing damage. Okay. Wow. Y'all are brutalizing this 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 hag, <laughs> and y'all are basically uh she's already past hurt and past bloodied at this point. She's not quite to death's door, but she's already looking pretty rough. Uh do you do anything on your bonus I action? I could do a bonus, bonus attack? attack if I want, but I feel like we probably want information out of her, so I'm not going to. And then I'm going to mark her, though. Okay. I'm going to use my unwavering mark. So when I do my second attack, when I bring it back up around, I'm going right to let out my... <laughs> and when I do that, you see the blood that splurts out turn black to know she's been marked. Nice. <clears throat> she's been marked. All right. Now, Brontes, it is your turn. And so a uh, lot's going on in Brontes' head in a very short period of time. Upon hearing uh, this bardic inspiration from D, uh, the person who, you know... Uh, broke his dreams um, and then a combination of that and seeing this thing that may oh no oh no <laughs> uh, what happened? Oh, Sorry, no, we're all coming yeah. back well, no, <laughs> I hear you I hear you all I for some you reason all. that's weird oh okay oh, right. the emotions were too okay. strong all right yes oh yeah there's some echo yeah I'm hearing I'm hearing I'm hearing echoes all right I think we're back all right. Uh, is, is it? My 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 screen says tacos. Um, <laughs> let's try <laughs> me, me, um, you, uh, uh, Dom, Dom, maybe. maybe? Uh, I don't know what's going on. Just, I don't know either. Just keep going. Witchcraft. Okay. Witchcraft. All right. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, anyway, long story short. I don't know where Randy uh, is though. Long story short, uh, <laughs> a cinematic cool uh, character-based moment where uh, he's actually going to draw the... I'm still here. You're not seeing me? Yeah. Can you guys still hear me? Hello? I can, I can hear, hear you. you. Okay, yeah, cool. I can hear you. Yes, yeah, you're good. I can hear you. So yep, you're good. Uh, he's going to uh, pull the pull his mother's whip from the bag. Uh, yeah, he's going yeah. to... can, you, can you not hear me? I, I can see everybody. I can... Uh, I, I, I can't, can't see Riley. Riley. I, 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 just I just see her... Uh... Oi. Oi. She's just a gray box. Yeah, yeah she's, she's like, like uh, a gray spinning. Oh, she's, yeah. she's frozen. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to close she's, out and come back. She's frozen. Okay. She's, she's frozen. Uh, anyway, anyway two tracks, tracks of the whip. whip uh, and and uh, he's going, going after, after, uh, going going after, after Dion. Dion. Uh, so, so hit number, number one, hit number, number two. two. Um, that is that a is 19 and a 22. Whew. Uh, Whew. Those will both hit. Those will both hit. But uh, <laughs> I'm going, going to, to first. I'm going, going to use, use a uh, uh, sweeping, sweeping attack, attack uh, so, so that, that I expend one, one superiority die. So that's a D8, kaboom, uh, and that's seven. Uh, so basically, uh, I'm going to hit Dion with uh, ten slashing damage, and then deal an additional. Uh, Oh gosh, what did I roll before? Um, you rolled, you rolled uh, a 19 and a 22. 22. Yep. Uh, no, it was a uh, 7 on the D8. So there we, yeah, there we go. Uh, 10 slashing damage to Dion, and then 7 slashing damage to uh, Christine Baranski. Uh, and then on my uh, second attack, I'm going to expend another superiority die. Uh, can I expend multiples on the Wait, same what round? Was, what was your actual. Um, attack roll because I was off when that happened. Oh, it was a 19 and a 22. Cool. Yeah. Cool. That's all I needed to know. Uh, no worries. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to expend another superiority die on the second one uh, and I'm going to do another sweeping attack because uh, I can. Yeah. Uh, on Dion or on. Uh, uh, it it, it, it's, it's an attack that basically I do, I do damage, damage to Dion, Dion and then whatever I roll on the superiority die affects the other one that's next to them. That's so cool. Nice. Yeah. That's uh, so cool. Yeah. Uh, so it's three damage to Christine Baranski. Uh, and uh, we're going to do. Um, uh, my gosh. Uh, why is that not showing up? I hate everything. 12 damage to Dion. Uh, and then I'm going to axe and surge and do it all over again. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Whoa. 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 Yeah, right? 
All right. Yeah. Some like mileage out of this whip reveal. I love it. Yep. yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think I think, I think something's taking control of my, my friend's, friend's mom, mom, and, and I, I want to stop, stop it. Um, you get double. Uh, right. Yeah. 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 Uh, Twenty eight. She the was dancing, by the way. She was okay. I didn't hit. Yeah. Wait, what happened to Christine Baranski when you hit her? When when you hit Christine Baranski, she was like, I was in the she was like, I knew I shouldn't trust your angel eyes. All right, continue. Sorry. Uh, 28 and a 24. Um, yeah, those both hit. hit. Uh, and uh, I'm going to use my last two superiority die. Um, Go for it. Uh, I'm just going to roll 2d8 here. It's a, it's a, for you, it's a one shot. Why, why, leave, it on the, why leave it on the table exactly. if you don't have to? Uh, so that's a two and a three uh so five additional damage is going to christine baranski uh and then okay. well, yeah exactly uh and then uh 22 di- slashing damage to dion okay dion is looking real rough she's looking she's now about to hit death's door she's very close to the end of her level of uh of hit points all right and then now we get to claw claw when it's your turn to start attacking um the witches all kind of look at you and then christine the christine baranski one starts to sing to you and she says well i can fight with you honey because i think it's funny does your goddess know that you're out and i can claw at you baby slash you open maybe does your goddess know that you're out and that's <laughs> Boy. her song for you. um so Paint a picture for me in my mind. From where I am, what I would like to do uh-huh. is get to the sea. What was the name of the thing that I was looking at? I want to get to the what I've loved. Melody? Sea's mel- melody. The melody. Sea I want to get to the sea's melody. And it's, it's so it sounds like chat is getting reverb on everybody me. but if, me if, now. If, if you uh, all can refresh, I think just chat is saying it. Your, yeah. Just refresh your Hi. link, except for Riley and Ruben. Hi. Browser. Fortunately, it's my turn. So. Okay. Yeah. No so worries. Ruben, continue what you're, you're doing. Later. Do that. Sorry. Well, paint, help paint a picture for of... me because what I'd like to do is get to the C's melody sure. and get her mm-hmm. away from this chicanery, from the danger, from these. Clearly, okay. these are hags. Ruben knows these. Are... Does Claw know anything about hags? I wouldn't think so. Um, I think you can definitely tell they okay. are magical creatures that are okay. violent. That's what um, you're getting from this. Yeah. So I have 40 feet of movement. Do I have to move through the hag's opportunity space to get to the sea's melody? No, because you were not engaged with them. So if you were to go, I think in the space of what it is, it's a small like party space. I think that like a courtyard, basically, I think you could go around them and not engage them. I think because you weren't already. So I'm going to use my entire movement to get to her. Um, And when I get up to her, does she seem like she'd be on board with, if I was just like, come with me, if you want to live, like if I just was like, we got to get out of here right now, or does she look like she is also a hag? Okay. She doesn't look like a hag. She, she looks like a, like a, like okay. a gorgeous uh, young woman. She looks like she might be able to tell what weather is based on shaking her boobs. Sure. Otherwise, we don't know. That was an Amanda Seyfried reference. Mean I girls. Got it. I got uh, it. it's, a, it's Amanda Seyfried. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what? To be fair, Callie might not have been here yet. We so I'm going to oh, no, like were. go okay. up to her and be like, extend my hand. And hopefully she'll, she'll get the message. It's like, Hey, we need to, we need to go right now. Okay. Roll a percep- right. roll a persuasion check. Roll a, roll a persuasion check. Well, at first one's a two. Going on right now. Uh, so that that's going to be a, a, okay. a, a one to persuade. Okay. She goes, I'm not going anywhere with you. What's happening? What's happening to my mom? Well, it's not, it's, it's not very – it's not great. You should just not look over that way. And actually, I'm going to drop Locate Object, and I'm going to cast Wall of Water between the two – between the, the fighting and then me and uh, the Seas Melody and maybe whoever else is on the dance floor. Okay. Well, I have to say – that when water bursts out of the mosaic in the middle of the dance floor for one half a second, even though it makes no sense in this reality, Meryl Streep yells, it's Aphrodite! 
Okay, Perfect. everyone dances in the water for a second, and then we get back to the in-character stuff happening. Because uh, you literally just made a thing happen. Oh, and then really <laughs> happen this move in this scene. So I'm, uh, I'm glad that, that could happen. So uh, I uh, use a drop of water yeah. to uh, to create a wall of water on the ground at a point within range that's up to thirty feet long, ten feet high, and one foot thick. Or I can make a ring, but I'm going to choose to make okay. a wall. Um, and uh, ra- then there's a bunch of stuff that happens. So let me know if a ranged attack weapon comes through it, or if fire damage comes through it in our direction, and or if cold damage hits it. Uh, other than that, it just it makes a wall of water that is one foot thick and thirty feet wide. And I'm going to like try to shield my body in front of her for okay. the time being. Okay, so the rest of you all see uh, Claw runs around kind of behind you, so he's not engaging with the with the hags, and he runs over. Lots going on, and my yeah. video went away again. Whatever. Uh, so then. Um, she doesn't do it. The, the the wall of water pops up, and you get the sense that she is being protected from the hags as this is happening. Do I have a bonus action? Um, if you have, do you? Yes, uh, I do. What depends on what your bonus action uh, is? Yeah. Starry form. Uh, so okay. I sort of I use one of my wild shapes, and because I am a circle of stars druid, you see that the joints on my skin light up like stars, and I become a constellation, and I take the form of a dragon. And I will choose wow. the draconic starry form. Ooh, neat. Okay, how big is the dragon? My size. Into, it's still my size. I just look like a, like a okay, humanoid, so like size humanoid dragon. Size dragon. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> my dragon, my dragon, my dragon, <laughs> my dragon, my dragon. And so sorry. I will uh, become a dragon to hopefully maintain concentration on this wall of water. Okay. Uh, and then I cast wall of water and that's my turn. <laughs> All right, fantastic. That is your turn. So uh, anyone who's on the other side of that wall of water would have seen Claw turn into a dragon, but y'all currently can't right. see it because there's a big wall of water between you. Um, I'm going to say it's obscuring vision. It's like, a, it's like a flowing geyser, so you don't see through it. All right, now it is Christine Baranski and <laughs> Julie Walters' turn, and they turn, and uh, one of them first looks at Lysandros, um, and even though you have taken the form of... of uh, Pierce Brosnan of uh, of uh, Pierce Cifantes. Uh They look at you, and it looks like maybe perhaps they have the ability to see through yeah. a good disguise like that, or they're able to break through, or their willpower to solve through it. And um, they both in unison. And this was already spoiled in chat by Yanto Seven, who saw this coming a mile away because it has a horn on it. So I agree to that. Uh, they sing to you. There was something in the air that night. Your fears took flight. <laughs> Lysandros. Yeah. They were hoping you would rise and be the one who'd lead <laughs> Lysandros. Though they were fools to count. Oh, so they were fools to count on you. Is there regret? If you had to do the same again, would you, my friend? Probably. Lysandros. So good. If you had to do the same again, would you, my friend? Almost definitely. <laughs> and then they, yeah. And then one of them goes and attacks you with, <laughs> with her claws. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And she rolls Ooh, a natural no. 20. And so uh, that does, uh, Wait, I'm just going to do what with the roll. Actually, somehow so the roll I rolled max see damage. Her though, so, right? um, so I take half yeah. damage. Uncanny dodge. Because of uncanny yeah. dodge, which Ooh, is a new thing dodge. we got and seems okay. crazy powerful. It's very cool. Okay. So it would have been 15 because of our our full, because mm-hmm. it would have been the, the hit of the crits rule. So you would have had you would have had 12 plus 3, so 15. So you take half of 15 to take 7 damage of the claws. Um, and it's just, yeah. Seven slashing damage. And then the other one looks at you and does not have a song because they've already sang and they're kind sure. of like, they've already kind of like spent, spent that. Uh, and then she takes another slash at you as well. And she just hit. She has a 14. And that does 10 slashing damage to you. Oh, boy. I'm down to 22, which is a plenty, actually. So it's not bad. Mm-hmm. 
All right, and then now we come back to the top of the order, which is Dion's turn, and Dion is pretty focused on uh, Callie because Callie's just done a ton of damage to her, and also she has an awareness that if she attacks That's somebody right. else, Callie can do some stuff to her. So she suddenly, like, like you see that she has claws as well, and she's going to take a swipe swipe at you with her claws, and yeah, that the first is. one is a 24, which is going to do 15 slashing damage to you. And then the second one is going to do a 21, which also hits. How much is the first one damage-wise? Damage um, right. 15. So you... Cool. Lovely. Okay. Um, so they're all up, right? Yeah. But I will say that Dion is the one that looks the closest to being a death store. Like, she's the one who's the quickest to be going down soon. Okay. Um, in that case, so is so uh, are, they attacked me. So are they like? Are one of them on me now? The two, the two like coven mates have attacked you now. Yeah. So they're both on you. Okay. So I want to use my bonus action to disengage and just kind of like jump back from them and just jump back a couple of feet okay. with my movement and uh, pull out my sling and just be like, "All right, let's give this thing another try." And uh, I want to launch my sling at the one in front of me. And have it ricochet off and hit. <laughs> oh, great. And hit uh, who? Meryl Streep, right? <laughs> are you trying to hit Dion now, or are you trying to hit both uh, of the two? You know two? what? I'm going to hit both of the two that attacked me. I know yeah. Dion is like the center of things, but okay. this makes more sense to me. Okay. I love it. These are a little bit easier okay. to hit. So, so first attack. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's a 19 plus, uh, yeah, plus 20. That hits. So, yeah. okay. It hits, yeah. No, wait, yeah. nineteen plus thirty nine to hit. I got thirty. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, this is your attack. Attack. amazing, yeah. right? <laughs> I did. Know, I it's did. Plus know six, so it was actually a twenty five total. Um, okay. okay, and I, okay, I assume it hits. It, yeah, they both hit. Um, do I have any reasoning to have a uh, uh, sneak attack on this? Probably not. No, because they are not engaged with any of your. And I will deal the underwhelming. Uh, seven damage to them. Oh, eight actually. Okay, well, let's yes. Okay, they both take eight. They both seem a little bit hurt by that. They're both like, hey, like uh, they're like, oh, okay, I mean, they're offended. Um, they, yeah. Um, and then that is going to be. I used it. Do you have a bonus engaged. action? That's right. Sorry. Uh, okay. D, Once turn. again, I'm going to attack with my sword. I'm going to um, attack Dion. And that is... Don't forget that you have those fun sword flourishes as a swords bard. That's right. That's right. Um, well, for now, I rolled, rolled a 24. It's been, you were, yeah. It's been, yeah. That hits. Uh, I rolled a 24. And the damage is a 14. Wow. And that's for... D. Ooh. D. Yes. D, I would like you yeah. to please describe <gasps> the death of this yeah. hand that you just got your sword. Okay, so I bring my sword up for slashing and I slash right across the throat and some of that black marked blood just starts pouring out as she falls to her knees, clutching her throat, we can see blood coming through her fingers. It's really gross. Uh, it's not the kind of blood that you would think tastes good. It's not prop blood. It's like blood, blood. Um, and she looks up at me. Uh, I'll go ahead and say, uh, with a tear in her eye, and then she collapses dramatically onto the floor. Um, and that's it. All right, so that happens. A few things happen all at once. Oh, no. Suddenly, so she collapses, she falls apart. And then right behind her, you see the other two members of her coven. Now, this was a coven. They were actually benefiting from coven rules during this. Right. Um, however, for the sake of time, because you just beat the big bad, and these are lackeys. So for the sake of time, it's 11.15, when you kill Dion... Suddenly, Christine Baranski and and Julie Walters both also shift down. So you see that they were both kind of, they were all three these hags, 
but one, and they don't look anything like the actresses that are playing them. In fact, it's like they've, they've taken fake forms. They have disguised themselves oh. as these gorgeous, fantastic women. They are actually hags. They are these these creatures. This one was a night hag, and two were sea hags, and they were this like grotesque. Like one suddenly like their I'm hair goes sure long this, and this movie got like, nominated for best makeup, so this makes sense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it did. Um, and then like when they're leader of their coven is defeated suddenly their power drains as well and they don't die but they run away in fear and uh i'm i if if i say this if you want to get an attack opportunity they run away you're welcome to like take dam they take damage they don't kill them but they get away they get i think like standards would just um, be like ah <laughs> and they just go <laughs> yeah um and so then that happens and then uh claw do you continue your wall of water as this goes on um or do you i well do i see them leaving you see them flee away yeah so you see the two, you see the claw two flee away will sing uh you can dance you can jive oh taking the rest of your life <laughs> see that girl watch that scene saving the sea's melody <laughs> and i'll drop a wall of water Okay. As you do, um, suddenly, um, Silipso feels like she's just like broken out of a trance, out of an enchantment. And she's like not quite sure where she is or what's happening. And, and she... She's like, how did I, how did I get here? Through the power of music. So, if so, what's the last thing you remember? I mean, I, I think I remember you. You're my friend, right? You're Brontes. Yeah, we've been friends since we were kids. Have, have we? Yeah. Remember, I was really young, and I was like, I'm going to try to be into girls. And you were like, okay, let's be boyfriend and girlfriend. And then we were like, well, it's not going to work. And then we just were like, be good friends forever. Brontes, as you start saying that, that memory of your memory of this girl fades. And that happened with you and a friend of yours, but it wasn't her. And it's almost like your brain has just ascribed that memory to this person. Because right. when you saw her at the dock, you recognized her and your brain was like, oh, you should know who this is. And you recognize her. But now Had you're chance. starting to remember that this woman, Salipso, has always been here as long as you've known. And she's always been this age. And every year she has a wedding ceremony that culminates in this dance. And what happens when this dance culminates is that these hags bind her yeah. to the island. Yep. Oh my god. And they affect everyone's memory. Yeah. Ew. There has been this long-term enchantment. Yeah. And Claw, because you are Nyxborn, uh -huh. you suddenly realize that this person that you are standing in front of is also Nyxborn. You start to see little oh, okay. bits of stars appear in her clothing, in her hair, and anyone who has any like idea of like religion in this world, like you would know what a Nyxborn is. You've seen them before. Like they're they're these beings that have this divine, godly element to them. And one of the things that can cause a creature to be a Nyxborn is that they are a song brought to life. Mm. And so what has happened here, uh, just for sake of time, is that Selypso was a song that was captured by the hags. And she, oh, we got, we just got uh, raided by Shrub the, Shrub, Shrub the DM. Yeah, thank you very much for the raid. Um, what you've learned and what you, Brontes, what you're starting to remember and what's happening is that in exchange for the ongoing prosperity of the island, this Nyxborn song has been bound to the island and her dreams and her hopes and her joys have been what has caused the air to remain temperate, what has made the water mm -hmm. remain calm around the island. It's what has helped fish uh, swim in a plenty around the island because she has constantly been dreaming mm -hmm. this idyllic life for herself 
on the island, and that is what is happening. And so now um, you have broken her from her cursed reliving. And that is why she could not recall last summer, because every year her memory has been erased mm -hmm. and repeated. And she just lives the same year over and over again as her magic is being mm -hmm. attached to the island on behalf of these three hags who are profiting off of it. Brontes would put a hand on her shoulder and say, this is all very confusing for me. I assume it must be very confusing for you as well. A little, a little bit. I, I thought I, I thought I had a place. I, I don't know where my family actually is. I, I've been, that's, do you think Sky knows? I don't know, but here's the thing. Sky sucks. Uh, <laughs> but what I do know is that you are a very special individual. You've been taken advantage of. Um, I might not be the most well-liked person around here in these parts. Um, but uh, maybe I was meant to come back at this point so that I could make sure an innocent like you isn't taken advantage of anymore. I think that it is important that you stay here or at least continue to come back so that you can continue to bring prosperity here. But I, at the end of the day, it needs to be your choice. What do you want to do? Well, I don't want the people here to suffer because I left, but I also don't want to feel like I have to stay here forever. And you shouldn't. So I think I'll stay long enough for everyone to prepare for what life is normally like here. And then I'll, once people feel okay to, to do that, I'll make my way where I want to go. And if you need someone to show you around, I know my way around Melitus. I, uh, I know my place, I know some, some areas of, uh, Acris. I, I, I don't want to go back there though. I don't want to go back. There. <laughs> I'm never going oh. back there. You shouldn't go. <laughs> okay. I, I might, I might go. I might, it sounds it might be interesting. All right. Well, you can go without me. All See right. the world. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, and then Bronte's, you hear a familiar voice behind you and you, you hear a, a female older voice and it says Bro Brontes. Uh-oh. Turn around. You turn around and you see the face of your mother, mm -hmm. Italia Vidale. And she I I didn't know I didn't know that you were back. I just, when did you arrive? Uh earlier earlier today, Mom. Mm. Uh, and she walks up to you, and before you can say anything else, she just throws her arms around oh. you into a big hug, and she says, I'm so glad you're home. I have missed you. He just says, um, I brought your wit back. And she says, no, you didn't. You brought your own wit back. I just break down into tears and just like, <laughs> just, I imagine her being like a foot shorter than me. And I just kind mm -hmm. of like collapse in on her, just like. <laughs> <laughs> and she's crying too, because just because you're a warrior doesn't mean you can't feel emotions. And, mm -hmm. and she says, Hey, did you learn something from your battles? Yeah. Sounds like a victory to me. And then she hugs you. Mom's the best. And then. You can go off with your do, mom. Do you want to meet the lady that beat me? I, I would very much like to do that. She's that really great. You should come meet her. Come on, let's go. And I want to introduce her to Dean. Yeah. <laughs> she walks. Is Slater also crying because there's no gemstone? <laughs> <laughs> Slater, a humanoid gemstone walks up <laughs> and gives you a hug. No. Oh, wow. That's cool. I pickpocket the human gemstone. <laughs> 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 you get three diamonds. Uh, all right. Um, hello. Are you? She walks up. So, the, so uh, Vitalia walks up to Dee and is like, "Hello. Are you the one who bested my boy?" Um. Yeah, but it wasn't exactly fair. Um. Did you? Well, you should be able to win an unfair fight as well if you're the toughest. So he'll have to work harder next time, I guess. You know Thanks, what? Thanks, mom. 
I will meet him for Should another fight. Should I give you a slap anything. on the back? All right. Well, we can arrange that when you're ready. And uh, yeah, I think Brontes and uh, Vitalia head off and have some catching up to do. But uh, you have returned to the loving embrace of your family who accepts you for who you are and what you've done. Aww. Aww. It was and... nice to meet you, Brontes. Hope to see you again yeah. sometime. Yeah, we'll let's, be on the let's drink for... again sometime, but like happy drinking instead of... We'll be on the island for a little yeah. bit longer. I don't know what happy drinking is, but sure. Maybe <laughs> let's just have some tea. Sure. <laughs> Ooh, tea's good. Tea's good. It's delicious. Tea's good. We love tea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Slater, as a reminder, when we were in that combat, the hags sung to Lysandros about himself as being the the basically the runaway king. Jordan, if you're talking, I'm not hearing you. Like I I'm just seeing you move. I I'm not saying anything right now. Oh, okay. Okay. I saw you waving and moving your mouth, but I didn't hear anything. So. I think I was waving at the people going away or something. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. okay, I have a weird laggy thing it happening. might have been so, a little lag, uh, yeah. Slater, do you want to have any moment with Lysandros before you head out? Of course. Uh, Lysandros, I felt such an instant bond with you, I, and I don't think it's just because uh, we both happen to be rogues and thieves, and we both have horns on our heads, and we both like to gamble, and we both have debt. Um, I mean, those are a so, lot of things, but... I really didn't think I'd be going for so long, but I... Uh, your name sounds so familiar to me, and, and I have memories of, of hearing tale of you. Am I crazy? Uh, normally, I don't admit, th admit this, but... Uh, no, I'm a little bit older than I let on, if it, uh, if that's not clear. Yeah, look, I know those stories of me uh, about supposed to be king, have all this money and stuff. I, I've spent a lot of time kind of like stopping being that, you know? But uh, I don't know. All those legends, all those stories, that stuff gets overblown. Now, all that weight's kind of been lifted off of me. I'm just... Just me, you know? Well, you've made me a richer person. Well, tell you what, I'm sorry we couldn't find this, like, magic gym or whatever, but, you know, I, I travel around a lot, and I, tell, and I pull one of my IOU coins off and grab Aww. out my dagger, and I carve a little picture of a gym into it. And I go, if I ever come by, like, a really good, like, magic gym of some sort, you get it. That's how it goes. I'll save it for you. And I flip her the IOU coin. Hey, you've got yourself a deal. And Salipso realizes, she's like, you know, if my mom is dead, I guess I, my mom is dead. I guess I technically still own this hotel. So if That's you true. want a free night in the inn, you're welcome to. And you're, I'll give you all rooms. And yeah. if you want to sleep in the barn, horse guy, you totally, so, uh, sorry, she wouldn't say horse She's horse not racist. <laughs> if you want to sleep in the barn, centaur friend, you can totally sleep in the barn. So, so I have a thing that perhaps I would like to ask if you would be interested in. Um, in my practice as a religious person, uh, I am able to perform ceremonies. Um, and it seems as if perhaps... Something has happened to you this evening that would qualify as what I would see as a coming-of-age ceremony. Um, perhaps you might be interested in what I can offer you uh, for this party that you have had. For yourself, although now it is maybe not an engagement. Perhaps it is a different kind of party, but I offer my services to you. And I mean, if there's okay, reception, yeah. food, and drink, we could always, you know, take advantage of that. Hey, I'm oh, in. Everyone, have have all the food and drink that you want. It's already here. It's going to go to waste if you don't. But, yeah, I guess we could do that. Okay. Beautiful. So, over so, the next okay. hour, um, I will use 25 silver worth of powdered silver, if I can come across it, and remove this from my can. inventory. Uh, yeah, and I will... Touch one humanoid who is a young adult. Is she a humanoid? Yeah. Okay. For the next 24 hours, when the target makes an ability check, it adds a D4 and adds the number rolled to the ability check. A creature okay. can benefit from this right only once ever. 
That is the coming of age ceremony. And I cast oh, ceremony. Right, Neat. Right. That's, that's a lovely moment. I think it's a good moment to end on. I think that everyone kind of celebrates. The night goes on. We start to pull away. And D, what you don't notice is someone in the crowd who was looking at you kind of curiously, um, who is wearing kind of a decorative robe, kind of like with a cloak hooded up. Someone who's come to a party doesn't want to be recognized. Not like a someone trying to be stealthy, but someone who's like a famous who doesn't want to be seen immediately and is kind of like trying to keep on the down low. Have, maybe has like a little table service or whatever happening somewhere. And he's looking at you curiously. And then one of the men who he's with comes up and whispers and says, Your Highness, I think that it's time we go. This place has gotten a lot of attention on it. Mm -hmm. And he turns at him and looks at him and nods, and they head out. And that is the face of your brother, Jack. Oh. And that is where we are going to end tonight's one-off special uh, Trevor Project wow. charity stream of Dice X Machina. Thank you all so much for indulging me in my multiple bits of singing. Thank you for those of you who sang of your that own. That was amazing. Um, thank you to everybody who donated money to Trevor Project. If we are still at the end, we're still going right now. So if y'all want to just toss in a little bit more right at the end, get us over that, that mark. Yeah, Come on, let's please. do it. We can do it. It's a great cause. I know it's been a long year for everybody and, and funds are tapped, but we just, you know, a lot of people are struggling, I know, but it's a great charity. We're so happy to be part of it and happy to help out with it. But we want to thank you all for everything that you have done for us so far today. Thank you. Um, thank you, too. Uh, let's go ahead and say goodbye to our cast before Dom comes in. Oh, Is I'm that okay, in. Dom, or do you want to come in first? I'm in. Okay. But go ahead. Oh, I please, see you. Please, everybody say, say <laughs> yeah. where, where, you, where people can find you. Let's start with uh, with let's start with our regular cast, and we'll end on our guests. We'll give our guests the final word. Uh, yeah. Let's start. Uh, we went reverse order. We came in on Ruben. Tell us where they can find you and what's going on. Oh, hi everybody. I'm the Internet's Ruben Bressler. You can follow me everywhere at M O X R E U B Y. It's a Magic the Gathering pun because I make magic content. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the hosts of the Magic Mike's podcast. M I C S. That's also a pun, uh, which is Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Pacific. I am the Dungeon Master for the Broken Pact, which returns. February 15th, right here on Saving Throw Show. Uh, hashtag sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. I'm also the uh, Dungeon Master for Tales from Tetheria at youtube.com slash lasercorn with Jovenshire, Lasercorn, Atomic Mari, and Noah Grossman. Uh, and yeah, those are all my things. Great. Let's go over to, speaking of the Broken Pack, and let our cast member of the Broken Pack that will be returning uh, a week from tomorrow, February 15th. Yeah. That is uh, Ashlyn. We'll say hi to Ashlyn. Oh. Hello, everyone. I'm Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Twitter as Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Instagram as RAR. It's Ashlyn. And you can find my voiceover demos at ashlynrose.com. And uh, if you ever want to check out the other stuff I do, you can check out the Command Zone, where we do awesome Magic the Gathering content. Delightful. Now let's go over to someone joining the cast of the Broken Pack a week from tomorrow. We we've had so much fun playing with her this season of Ice Machina. We invited her to join the cast of the Broken Pack. Let's say hello to Danielle. Oh, hello, hello. Uh, why did I say it like that? Um, I'm Danielle Radford. <laughs> um, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Danielle Radford, uh, Instagram Danielle underscore Radford. And if you're looking for things I do, uh, keep watching them on us trailers because I'm one of the many people that makes it happen. Um, I'm one of the writers on that. And we just uh, we like when you like the funny stuff we do. So go check it out. All right. And then our last other cast member for the show, uh, Jordan, say hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jordan Pridgen, and uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pidgeon, and also, uh, of course, at The Broken Pact, which is coming up. I'm also on um, a bunch of other old shows on, or different era shows and saving throws. So you can go back and catch up on those, like wild cards and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and I, I also, I, I help out with uh, Command Zone stuff. So if you like Commander, yeah. come see stuff me and Ashlyn work That's on. Right. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. <laughs> I am Riley Silverman, your host and GM. This is this actually now my watch has ended. I don't have to DM a stream for <laughs> right. I'll take the baton. Don't remind me. 
Oh, I will be jo- I'll be coming back to Broken Pact. Uh, I will be no longer playing Velma Sweets. I'll be playing a new character named mm. Sethia. We will learn more about her a week from tomorrow. Uh, but also, I will be joining the Broken Pact as a producer this season. Right. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, but with that, other than otherwise, you can find me. Actually, I'll go ahead and pro- promote my friend Emily Blake made this really awesome fan created Buffy the Vampire Slayer musical episode. Oh. So it took all the songs from uh, Once More to Feeling, and we all sang multiple songs from the show and and the episode a lot of people submitted themselves filming it so it was was all pieced together from people doing it at home it was the buffy quarantine musical you can find it on 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 uh youtube as a buffy quarantine musical i'm I'll tweet about it again i think it's like tiny url slash once more or something like that we'll figure it out i'll tweet about it uh but i play willow which is very fun <laughs> yeah. it was only with one line because willow because allison hannigan only sang one line in the special and so i demanded that part so, <laughs> so i i i sing more i sung more in this tonight than i sing in the buffy musical that i'm part of but it's still delightful and now let's go to our guests first off uh let's go to kyle hi uh i'm kyle shire you can find me on twitter and instagram at kyle shire uh I don't really have much else to plug. I don't know. I, I produce on Critical Role. That's really fun. Nice. Uh, I love it. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Fun stuff. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm better really just casually things. slipping in that you produce on Critical Role. <laughs> right. right. no like, yeah. We didn't know lots of you say it or not, but you're like, yeah, you know what's up. I just hang, I just hang out and produce Critical Role. I just, so it's, it's, what am I going to do? Like, it's, I don't know. It's, I feel weird. I don't like plugging things. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I mean, like, to be fair, I'm pretty sure the entire audience has heard of Critical Role. So it's not like, it's like, well, how dare you not promote it? I don't like, know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyway. And Allie. We, oh, yeah. Allie. Hi, uh, I'm Allie Gertz. You could find me at Allie Gertz on all the things. I have a Simpsons podcast that is about to come to an end, and our last guest is Matt Groening, which is a huge deal for oh, us. Wow. Um, so you could find us. Uh, our podcast is called Everything's. Oh, it used to be called Everything's Coming Up Simpsons. Now it's called Round Springfield. Um, <laughs> and uh, I've been guesting on the D and D podcast uh, Fear Initiative. Um, and I am a I'm a very nice person. So if you want to engage with me on Twitter, that's the way to do it. And if Fabulous. you want to listen to my music, um, my first album is regrettably called Cosby Sweater. Um, oh. And then the rest of my music is my own name, Allie Gertz. So thanks, guys. <laughs> Can't confirm Allie's a very nice person. Yeah. <laughs> Allie and Kyle, you both were fantastic guests. Yeah, uh, amazing. It's so fun. Have opportunities yeah, to bring guests back in the future. I'll definitely keep both of you in mind. And now let's head over to the man, the myth, the legend himself, Dom. Yay, Dom. 